We called it The Traveller, and its arrival changed us forever. Great cities were built on Mars and Venus. Mercury became a garden world. Human lifespan tripled. It was a time of miracles. We stared out at the galaxy and knew that it was our destiny to walk in the light of other stars. But the Traveler had an enemy. A darkness which had hunted it for eons across the black gulfs of space. Centuries after our golden age began, this darkness found us. And that was the end of everything. But it was also a beginning. see a lot of things you won't understand. This is fallen territory. We aren't safe here. I have to get you to the city. Hold still. Don't worry, I'm still with you. We need to move, fast. It's been here a while. Jump in centuries. We're lucky the fallen haven't completely picked it clean. Will it fly? I can make it work.
Welcome to the last safe city on Earth. The only place the traveler can still protect. It took centuries to build. Now, we're counting every day it stands. And this tower is where the Guardians live. There was a time when we were much more powerful, but that was long ago. Until it wakes and finds its voice, I am the one who speaks for the Traveler. You must have no end of questions, Guardian. In its dying breath, the Traveler created the ghosts to seek out those who can wield its light as a weapon. Guardians to protect us and do what the Traveler itself no longer can. What happened to it? I could tell you of the great battle centuries ago. How the Traveler was crippled. I could tell you of the power of the darkness, its ancient enemy. There are many tales told throughout the city to frighten children. Lately, those tales have stopped. Now, the children are frightened anyway. The darkness is coming back. We will not survive it this time. Its armies surround us. The Fallen are just the beginning. What can I do? You must push back the darkness. Guardians are fighting on Earth and beyond. Join them. Your ghost will guide you. I only hope he chose wisely. I did. I'm sure of it. We're in this together now. I used to look up here at night and wonder what the Hive were doing, but the only activity I could ever pick up was hazy, like it was blocked or buried. There's nothing left. Not even the light. Where's his ghost? to move back. Oh, you're interesting. Not entirely interesting, but 
You have promise. Who is that? I don't know. I'm losing the signal. Guardian, I know what you're about to do. It's brave. But there are enemies out here you would not believe. Out where? Go down and face the hive. And if you live, come find me. Signal dropped. I got some broken coordinates. Venus, Northern Hemisphere, Ishtar region. Great. What do we do now? We go down. This colony was built by the Ishtar Collective. Records say they once studied ruins older than humanity itself. We thought this was all lost in the collapse. Well fought. You're here. We haven't got much time. Who are you? Why have you been watching us? I don't even have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. I will. I will. I know. Will what? I wasn't talking to you, little light. I'm a ghost, actually. Many guardians fell. Strong ones. But you made it here. Yes, I'm listening. They are here. With me. Who is she talking to? Understood. You need my help, Guardian. Is that why you brought us here? They brought us here. The Vex. Evil so dark it despises other evil. You're not a guardian. No. I was not forged in light. But I believe where our paths cross, ground could break. Have you heard of the Black Garden? We've heard the legends. The greatest threat to us all lies there. Where these machines are born. Find the Black Garden. Rip out its heart. Only then will your traveler begin to heal. Can you help us find it? My path's my own. I can't. If we're going to find the Black Garden, we need to see the Awoken. Ah, yes. The Awoken. Out there wavering between the light and the dark. A side should always be taken, little light. Even if it's the wrong side. Too late, returning. How many? Hold position, kill the engines, and don't let them find you. So, how do we find the Awoken? They live all the way out at the edge of the darkness. Last place the light touches. Can't we just stay here with the murderous robots? No. A little light. Don't do that. ship that could escape fled Earth during the collapse. They made it this far. I guess they died out here. It's a graveyard. How did the Awoken survive? No one knows. In 
Intruder bearing 127, you have crossed into the realm of the Awoken. State your business or be fired on by order of the Queen. Don't look at me. Better say something. We are from Earth. We are here to seek the counsel of the Awoken. Conform to my trajectory. Any deviation will be taken as an act of aggression. Looks like we're in the right place. Why is the right place always so terrifying? So, these are the trespassers demanding an audience. We didn't mean to trespass. The Queen herself judges who may or may not enter the realm. Me? I see no reason she should be available for whatever washes up at the reef. But here we are. We've come to ask for help. <laughs> It is afraid of the fallen. It does not understand these ones are mine. Apologies. Your grace. I am a guardian from Earth. We're searching for the Black Garden. Why? We seek to destroy the darkness at its heart. You want to turn it into a battleground? How unimaginative. Do you know where it is? Everyone knows where it is. The hard part is getting in. Can you help us? And why would we do that? The Queen requests counsel with her brother. Why not? We'll make you a key. How's that? All we need is the head of a Vex Gate Lord. A uh, Gate Lord? Yeah, we. Why do you want a Vex head? Oh, we don't. And I doubt we'll get one either. But it's your only hope of getting into the Black Garden. We will return. Or die on Venus. Either way. It is alive. And still has its ball. There is no shame in running away, Guardian. Apart from the cowardice and failure of it, it's an excellent strategy. We didn't run. Was no Gate Lord slain, brother? Oh, we slayed a Gate Lord. Ghost. We need to find the Black Garden. They don't even know where it is. Let us tell them. Search the Gate Lord for that which gains them entrance. Why? If you wish them certain death, just kill them here. 
Often when we guess at others' motives, we reveal only our own. My motive is simply loyalty to a people. A queen and a sister. Then please, take what is required. Dead, unfortunately. A wasted journey, I'm afraid. Perhaps. But I think these ones resourceful. We gift it. In sympathy for their traveler. Mars. 84 North, 32 East, Meridian Bay. I have shown you benevolence, Guardian. Should the Awoken ever need an ally, I will call on you. And expect you to answer. She's saying you owe us, Guardian. I understand. Your Grace. Good luck! Getting through the exclusion zone. These coordinates put the gate to the Black Garden near the lost city of Freehold. It's been buried in the sand since the collapse. Now, the Cabal occupy the area, and most of Mars. No one gets through their exclusion zone. God. Don't think I have a choice. For centuries we feared the forces of darkness massing against us. We sought to hide and cower beneath a broken god. No more. These Guardians show us what we are, what we have always been, and what we will be again. We are what remains of the Light, and we will not be stamped out. It's a day for pretty speeches and medals. But we know the real fight takes place out there. Take this. There's so much more, Guardian. I've seen terrible things born out in the darkness. Every moment brings them closer. Ends and beginnings. Our fight is far from over.
of us went down into the pit. Only one crawled out. I am Eris, the last. I have seen what the Hive call a god. be ignored. We must stop what is coming. Rated T for Teen. Six of us went down into the pit. Only one crawled out. I am Eris, the last. I have seen what the Hive call a god. Grota, son of Oryx. He took everything from me. He will turn his eyes to Earth. And only a true weapon of the light can stop his wrath. Now you must face what lurks in the dark below. When the Fallen sought to destroy us, I protected the Reef. In the end, we showed them mercy. They met that mercy with betrayal. Now, they will feel my wrath.
Let the hunt begin. Fallen sought to destroy us. I protected the reef. In the end, they all bowed before me. We showed them mercy and offered them a home amongst the awoken. They met that mercy with betrayal. Now, they will feel my wrath. Open the reef to the Guardians. Offer the riches of our realm as bounty for these traitors. Let the hunt begin. Once, I looked up at the stars. I was a guardian. 
I stood against the darkness. My eyes saw hope and a future full of light. Six of you went down into the pit. You sought revenge for those I lost. You slew a god, Grota. With his last breath, he reached out across the night. And now, the night has answered. Oryx, Grota's father. He smells the blood of his son on your hands. Son. And now the Taken King comes for us all. I was born the moment the Traveler died, as everything collapsed around us. Before that day, there had never been a ghost. There had never been a guardian. I don't know much about the Traveler, but I know it made me to bring you back. And I spent a really, really long time searching for you. The Cosmodrome? Not the first place I looked. As I saw the other ghosts find their guardians, and the centuries went by, I wondered if I'd ever find you. And then... I did. I remember everything about the day I was born. I still bear the scars. The Awoken are my family now. And I am their queen. Keep our beautiful creation safe. And now this beast has come, claiming to be king. Marasav bows to no one.
You and I know how this ends. We've known since you escaped from that pit. Guide them, my hidden friend. It is all up to you now. Guardian, this is Commander Zavala. The Cabal base on Phobos is blasting a signal across all channels. They're willing to break transmission signs. This could be a prelude to a full-scale assault. We're setting down on Phobos now. I'll be monitoring your feed, Ghost. Good luck to you both. Zavala, we've made it to our ship. We're heading home. My contacts near Saturn say the weapon fired only once. It's not like the Queen to attack a superior force. How could she have known? How could anyone? We need a warlock inside the Dreadnought. Here we go. Our first priority must be to protect the city. Our Guardian got a good look on Phobos. Whatever it was, it turned Cabal against Cabal, wiped out their base in minutes. How long would we last? Until we understand what we're dealing with. They... are taken. Eris, get your rock off my map. It hasn't spoken since Crota fell. It speaks now, because Oryx has arrived. Come to fulfill the final covenant of his son. But why fight the Cabal? Not fighting. Taking. Controlling their will. So we focus on his army. Kill these taken until he's all that's left. Whatever you kill, Oryx will replace. The Dreadnought, then. How do we get past that weapon? Without ending up like the Awoken. I gotta go, uh, see about a ship. Kate. Our discussion is not yet concluded. Oh, I know. That's why I'm leaving.
Maintenance pending. Requesting visual confirmation. Yep, that's the last one. Port side. Confirmed. Interest in tech, Cade. Isn't this Eris Morn ship? Is it? Huh. You know, you're a true artist. Can't even see the join. Cute. But Zavala's got sign off on all launches. Need a log while I'm letting it go. Stargazing tour? Okay. How about an unsanctioned op using modified stealth tech to infiltrate a dreadnought above Saturn's rings so we can knock out its weapons, create a transmat zone, and send in the cavalry? How about test flight? We'll be waiting for you when you're ready. Me? <laughs> oh, I'm not flying that thing. It only took one blast from the Dreadnought. When you're through, It'll never fire again. Just don't forget to plant the transmat links so other Guardians can land. Not everybody's got stealth tech and a ship that smells like hive. Good luck, Guardian. Activating stealth drive. I'm picking up fluctuations in the power conduit. Oh, relax. I modified the tech myself. Probably just Saturn's radio storms running interference. It's malfunctioning. Did you break my stealth drive? You think they can see us? say it's all about where you belong. The warlocks have their libraries, titans have their walls. But hunters belong in the wilds. Out there, you want to live, you better have a quick shot or a sharp blade. A lot of us are loners, but that's not the only path. Some of us know the difference a fire team makes. Some of us, we touch the void, make it a part of us. And then we take a name. Night Stalker. Hunt from the shadows, pin them down, never let them see you coming. Tevis is gone, but the light in his bow still burns. Won't stay lit forever. Make it your own. What does it mean to be a warlock? Power. Only warlocks understand true power. True power lies in knowledge, in understanding. Power channeled, not controlled. The storm is raw power. The trance is true understanding. Both are required. The Stormcaller, then, is both the question and the answer, and thus what it means to be a warlock.
What does it mean to be a Titan? As a Titan, you are a part of the city in a way no warlock or hunter could understand. The dream of the city rests upon our shoulders. Then there are those that find a path outside our walls. Those that take up with leaders they barely understand. So it has ever been with the Sunbreakers. The Hammer of Soul is a flame in the darkness, but fire burns without thought. It is time that fire came home to keep the city and her walls warm throughout the long night. Fire born of man, fire of the light. Ask yourself, what power do you seek from the forge, Guardian? Can you bring light to where only darkness survives? It began with Crota. But Crota was only a servant of his father, sent to extinguish the last of the light. The great battle fought for the soul of our world ended in slaughter. The sun was dead. And we invited the wrath of Oryx, destroyer of light, taker of will. Only Ascendant Hive moves between ruptures. To reach Oryx, you must walk in the dying footsteps of his son. You must become Ascendant. My queen, you were right. The Guardian was the key. For the first time, the whispers are silent. It is done. accepted my fate. I will not fail. Long ago, the world had no guardians. It had only iron lords. Fearless, 
righteous. We were humanity's greatest warriors. But when an ancient plague threatened mankind, the Iron Lord sacrificed everything to lock it away. Now, I am all that remains. And the plague ravages our land once more. Guardian, will you rise to this fight? And stand where the Iron Lords fell. and become an Iron Lord. We thought we were indestructible. The Lords of Iron. We swore we would do anything to protect the last city. Some of us paid the ultimate price. I am all that remains. Stand with me, Guardian. It is time to avenge my brothers and sisters. Prove yourself worthy, and the Iron Lords will rise again. In the years after the Collapse, the world had no Guardians. It had only Iron Lords. Immortal, fearless, we fought to protect the survivors of a once great age. Our battle was about more than crawling back from the shadows. The Iron Lords would give humanity back its future. Legend, but no one truly knows how the Iron Lords died their final deaths. That was something you had to be there for. To witness. To remember. To know even heroes can die. And survival is not always a victory. Now, I am the Lone Sentry, 
and my watch is eternal, waiting for the day when whatever we disturbed awakens. The Iron Lords are gone, but our fight is far from over. House of Devils is back, and they're digging into old Golden Age research labs all across the system. This isn't a simple smash and grab. They're on a mission. At first, the Vanguard wasn't particularly concerned. At least, not until the Devils decided to move back into the Cosmic Realm. Now the Devils are shifting a massive amount of resources to an area nearby that's been dark for centuries. Normally, I'd say it's just another day. Except, what's really got everyone talking is that Lord Saladin has left his post at the Iron Banner to take charge of the situation personally. Only rather than go straight to the Cosmodrome, Saladin wants us to investigate an abandoned observatory in the mountains. Very strange. A group of Fallen has captured Felwinter Peak. My team and I are en route, but we won't get there in time. I need you to secure the observatory at the top. It is imperative the Fallen do not establish a foothold on that mountain. All this trouble to break into an old temple? Even old wolves still bite. Shiro, what's your status? Circling around to make sure the area is clear. Be there in a sec. Well done, Guardian. The temple is secure. Now we can. Shiro, get a lock on. I just picked up. Wait. Multiple impacts near the wall in Sector 17. They're attacking the sensor grid. They must know where Siva is. Guardian, go to the Cosmodrome immediately. If Sepix escapes, the Fallen won't be our only problem. This may not make sense to you, but it took your fight to remind me that immortality is not the same as invincibility. I don't understand. When the ghosts first found us, those who were chosen were blessed with power, but not wisdom. The Iron Lords came together in search of a solution to mankind's struggles. Instead, we found Siva. We dreamt of using Siva to build starships, colonies. We would become what the Traveler always believed we could be. But something happened. Siva had been lost to time. When Teemer tracked it to the Cosmodrome, we thought our quest was finally over. Siva would be ours for the taking. Rasputin responded. More than a hundred Iron Lords entered the Plague Lands. Only nine reached the Replication Chamber. But since we were chosen by the Traveler and our cause was just, we were certain the day would be ours. Until Siva took control. It infected our weapons, our armor. The corruption puppeted us against one another. In the end, Yolder sealed the chamber with the Iron Lords inside, rather than let Siva escape. The battle was won. Heroes died. And our mistakes stayed here. But Rasputin survived. This is not Rasputin. But neither is it something I know how to fight. 
They are using SIVA in ways we never even imagined. How would the Fallen have learned more about SIVA than the Iron Lords? Or better yet, where did they learn? They haven't mastered SIVA yet. This is all still new to them. See, Tyra. She studied Siva's origins. If there's a way to track the Fallen's discoveries, she will know where to look. The SIVA replicator is destroyed. We found this near it. Thank you. She would be honored. My brothers and sisters, I will see you again. Someday. You've given them back to me. Approach. There was a time that only Iron Lords carried these blades. There are many like this in our armory, but this one is new. It is yours, young wolf. You are the first of a new generation. Take your place as an Iron Lord. No statue for me, I see. The statues are for the dead. And I always hoped you were not among them. The city's holidays are like the city itself. People from a thousand nations coming together to create something new. These days remind humanity that even when all seems lost, there is always a chance for joy. Now, as the year turns, the city celebrates with gifts and games. And guardians unite in the spirit of competition, pushing one another to become legends. Just for a moment, there's peace, harmony, hope. This is the dawning. It is a time to honor all that humanity has built and all that it will create. And rejoice in the light. From the day your ghost woke you, your light has been our beacon. You defended this city from the worst the darkness sent against us. Atheon, Crota, Oryx, Axis. When you are called on, you will do it again. The city's children tell your story to each other. Pretending to be guardians, they grow braver and more powerful with each retelling. They are no longer afraid. You have shown them, and you have shown me, what it is to hope. You have led us to a new age, Guardian. An age of triumph 
and remembrance. Today and tomorrow and every day, you fight for us. You fight for the traveler. You fight for those who fled here from a thousand nations looking for refuge. We thank you, Guardian. And we will never forget. I never knew you in life. Your first life, anyway. You died on a battlefield long before my time. Something special brought us together. They called it the Traveler. And when it arrived, it changed your world forever. It was a golden age. And for centuries, humanity thrived. Until it didn't. An ancient enemy pursued the Traveler across the universe. Humanity faced extinction. But the Traveler made a choice. Its sacrifice destroyed its ancient enemy and brought light to the ghosts. I am a ghost. More importantly, I'm your ghost. And you are one of the Traveler's chosen. You are a guardian. This is your destiny. Hi, Cora, if you tell me this is a practical joke, well, it kills me to say it, but I, I would be really impressed. Impressing you, Cade, is the easiest thing I'll do all day. Let's get serious, people. Zavala, this is my serious face. Can't you tell? Ikora, what have you got? Someone or something has sabotaged the Skyline defense systems. And comms have been spotty for the last few hours. Every sensor beyond the wall has gone dark. Hmm. Maybe it's just the storm. Maybe it's... What are the set feeds telling us? Nothing. Well, that's good, right? No. I mean, they're not there. There are no satellites. And that's not good. Battle stations! Everyone with me! Approach. This is City Hawk 723. Anyone home? No response on any channels. Even the emergency frequencies. What is going on back there? Remember when I told you that you fly too fast? Forget I said that. Fly fast.
Zavala, picked up that guardian you never showed up about? Get them on that command ship, now! Hold on back there! Do something. <laughs> All right, Guardian. Time to kick him where it hurts. Look, somebody left a perfectly good guardian lying around. Things must be worse than I thought. And that's our cue. Time to go, people! Uh, but wait, where, where are you all going? As far away from here as possible. That falcon, it belongs to you? The name's Hawthorne. And this is Lewis, best pilot we got. What about you? Fit to fly? Probably gonna need one of these, too. Time to make yourself useful, Guardian. All right, people, spin them up! Got a long flight ahead of us!
The city is secure. Those who fled are being hunted, and those foolish enough to remain have been executed. Victory, as with all things, is yours to claim. This victory is as much yours as mine, old friend. All that remains is the completion of the cage around this great machine. Then we may begin the extraction of its power and put it to its rightful use. They call it the Traveler. I would contend that other civilizations may be more precise in their naming. Its functions can be controlled and exploited, as we have so clearly proven. Yet they believe it to be a god. Dominus. Gaul. We have spent our lives, you and I, working to reshape our society, reforge our people, rebuild an empire nearly destroyed by Callus's greed and corruption. There is nothing in this universe greater than you. The Red Legion will have that machine's power. You will be called Emperor. What more would the Dominus have? I would have words with my guest. up on the European dead zone. Gonna be our new home for a while. Look, do you recognize it? That's where we're supposed to go. That thing? They call it the Shard of the Traveler. I call it not a place you want to go poking around. Why we were led here. I haven't been as close to the traveler's light since. Do you feel it? Hold on to your helmet. Do you feel it? The light is back. We're back. Guardian. Don't get cocky now that you've got your powers back. The EDZ is rough, especially around the old town. Just remember, refugees from the city have it a lot rougher. Want to help them? Find Devram K. like Lewis owes me money. All right. Let's see if this works. Now, have I read the manual, right? There's an incoming beacon. Guardians, the city is lost. If there is any light left in the system, we rally on Titan. Be brave. Guardians, the Vala's alive! If we leave now, we... You are not going to Titan. 
We've got refugees coming in. The Red Legion on one side, the Fallen on the other. But we have our powers back. And if we're going to retake the city... Your city is gone! Hawthorne, we will be back. And we won't be alone. You'll know where to find me. Save us both a lot of time if you would just kill me. For one who calls himself Speaker, you have remarkably little to say. We've learned that one of your guardians has reconnected to the light. You say you have no power over the Traveler yet. This. Help me understand, Speaker. The light lives in all places, in all things. You can block it, even try to trap it, but the light will find its way. And the Traveler will protect itself. The Traveler? For years I have studied it. The world it has touched. Its power over life and death. We are not so different, your Traveler and I. You are nothing like the Traveler. Nothing. You think you have power. Control. I know your kind. You started small. You will end small. If the Traveler truly has chosen humanity of its own free will, then there is no reason I should not reach inside, tear out the light for myself, and leave this system in ashes. Only those the Traveler chooses will be reborn in the light. Yes. This I know. This is why I have claimed your planet, and why you still live. The Traveler will choose me, Speaker. And you are going to tell me how. Vanguard Fleet, Guardian Ship 723 is on approach. We received your beacon, and we're ready to join the fight. Guardian Ship. This is Zavala. It's too late. The Hive have overrun Titan. I was wrong to bring us here. I didn't dare believe. If the light can find its way back to you, then perhaps there is hope for us all. Our numbers will continue to dwindle. We can no longer protect ourselves, much less the survivors. And without the light, are we even guardians anymore? Commander. We won't last long with dead generators. Wave energy converters power this station. But thanks to the Hive, they're in need of... attention. We can take care of it. Yes. I believe you can.
They call it the Almighty. The crown jewel of the Red Legion and life's work of their leader, Dominus Gaul. Gaul has subjugated hundreds of worlds. Those that resisted no longer exist. You see, the Almighty annihilates stars. survives Gaul's ambition. What he wants is the Traveler and its light. As for the Almighty, it's now pointed at our sun. In short, sir, the war's over and we've lost. We built our home under the protection of the Traveler. When our enemies attacked, we built a wall that stood for centuries. But now walls mean nothing. This enemy has taken our home, taken our light, and now they threaten our very existence. We're going all in on this almighty. How long before the fleet's combat ready? Zavala, wait. If we wait, we die. But if we attack together, we can take back our home, our light, our hope. Or we die trying. Now, I need my fire team. I need Ikora and Cade. Commander Zavala needs the Vanguard united again. While he prepares for the assault on the Almighty, we're going to find Cade and Ikora. Luckily, we picked up an odd signal from Cade's ghost. It's being boosted somehow from a centaur called Nessus, which is strange. Centaurs are really just big rocks in the outer reaches of the solar system. There should be nothing there. for nothing being here. Let's get to high ground so I can pin down Cade's location. Quick, hurry, come on. I don't know how long this portal's gonna stick. Cade? What have you- Stop, 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 look, look. Long story, and it may look like I don't know what I'm doing, but I do, maybe not, it doesn't matter. Killing the power source at the origin point should break the loop and get me out of the portal system. Have you got that? Say you've got it. Say something! Fine, I'll say it. We got it, Kate. Now how did you- Oh my cotton socks! Did you not hear what I just said? I'm guessing this is why they don't like him leaving the tower. So it's true. The light found its way back to you. Not that I'm jealous or nothing, but <laughs> take it easy out there, will you? You're making me look bad. What, may we ask, were you going to do with a Vex teleporter? Get up close and personal with go. put a bullet in his head, then maybe eat a sandwich. I gotta work out a few kinks first. Fun fact about the Vex tech. Not as intuitive as you'd think. Cade, you can't do this alone. <clears throat> Hell, I can't. <sighs> Even if you manage to kill Gaul, when the Red Legion leave a system, defeat or victory, they leave nothing behind. The Cabal are bad guys who do bad things. Yes, I get it. 
I'm sorry, but I do not think you do. The Cabal literally leave nothing behind. They have a weapon that can destroy a star, and it is pointed directly at our sun. Hey, 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 easy, easy. You're gonna blow a bulb. Zavala has a plan. He needs you, Cade. Yes, well, Zavala always says he has a plan, but sometimes he just... Wait. Zavala said he needs me? As in you heard those exact words coming out of Zavala's mouth? Yes, we did. Please tell me you recorded it. Well, did Akora at least hear it? Actually, Zavala lost her after the city fell. We don't know where she is. Io. Io, it's, it's where she'd go to look for answers. Hey, um, thanks. Oh, you won. Of all the places I've been in all the years since my rebirth, this is where I return. The last place the Traveler touched. I came for answers. I stand here still with nothing. Ikora, Zavala is forming a resistance. And he believes... What good is a resistance when you are the only one who would survive? I believe this goal creature knows the Traveler blessed this site. I believe he sent his legion to find something they could never possibly understand. And I believe they will continue to desecrate all we hold sacred. Save this place, Guardian. Do not squander this second chance. I see. 
see now. I see all that you have done. Our operation on the Jovian moon was a success. Once the cage is complete, we will have everything we need to begin the process of extracting the light. Dominus, everything we've worked for is here, for the taking. All that remains is your word. No, this is not the way, old friend. But it is the way. The only way. Not for me. So really what you're saying is, we're damned if we do, damned if we don't. On the contrary. Now that we are together again, we just might stand a chance. The fact is, if we destroy that weapon, we will ignite a chain reaction that could send our son into a supernova. Well, at least we have each other. Indeed. We all know what needs to be done. The Traveler must be freed. I'm thinking the three of us and a big fat pile of explosives can get the job done. Look, I still have that Vex teleporter. It's got a limited range, so we'll have to get a little too close for comfort. Then we get inside the city walls for it to be effective. But without the light, an outright assault on the wall is doomed to fail. We could... There will be no coming back. It's worth it. How do we get in? You know, the city wall is kind of like this barn. Plenty of places to slip in unseen, so long as you know how. You sure you're not one of my hunters? <laughs> not really into capes. Clearly. Nice poncho. You need to get your team into the city without raising any alarms. My people and I can help you do that. We also happen to be pretty good at shooting bad guys. Hawthorne, it's one thing for us to put our lives on the line, but this doesn't have to be your fight. You're not a... A guardian? You think you've cornered the market on sacrifice? You forget that we've had to survive without the light all our lives. Once upon a time, that big white ball in the sky was there for all of us. I think it's about time we return the favor, guardians or not. That's great speech and all, but let's not forget about the whole supernova and complete annihilation thingy. If we can't destroy the Almighty, we'll have to disable its weapon. And that means getting a certain guardian on board. We'll need a good disguise if we're going to fly right through a Cabal Armada. If it's a Cabal ship you need, there's a base nearby full of them. But it won't be easy sneaking in. Oh, we're done sneaking. If there's one thing I've learned from Cade, it's the value of a grand entrance. This is great. Anyone want a hug? Hugs? No? No hugs. Our plan relies on you. Destroy the Almighty's weapons. End the threat to our world. And while you're doing that, we'll get in position for the final run on the city. Time for Gaul's last dance. Zavala's troops are already getting into position around the city. But they can't attack until we shut this thing down. So, ready when you are, partner. Good job, Colonel. What's that now? Seven in a row? 
Yeah, who needs the light when you got a fine feathered friend by your side? Am I right? Am I right or am I right? I'm right. Okay. Yeah, that's the rally point where I'll set up the teleporter. Zavala and Akora should be at their marks by now. Zavala, we're in position. As are we. Akora, ready when you are. Copy. Fire in the hole. with you guardians falling down all the time. Where's Kate? If he's sticking to the plan, he's right where he needs to be. Now we just gotta get you and Ikora up there with him. Well, this changes things. I'll work on this. You need to get moving. Ikora, Cade is in place and I'm en route. Good luck. Guardian. Attacks the city, and the Almighty is lost. Lost? Explain yourself. Laid waste by the very same Guardian that somehow managed to reclaim its power, and has been humiliating our forces throughout this cursed system. You would know this if you hadn't been wasting your time communing with a machine and the creature who claims to speak with Take it. Take care your tone, Consul. My tone? We will fail in our mission to secure this power and deliver our people. For the first time in the glorious history of the Red Legion, fail because of you and your preoccupations. Look at your traveler, Dominus. The cage is complete. The time is now. Claim what is rightfully yours and take this power. Speaker, what more does the Traveler want of me? Go. I speak for the Traveler. I never said it spoke to me. Fixation is over. You have already been chosen, not by some inert machine, but by me. I chose you the day I found you. Remember who you are, what you are. You are Kamal. Kamal, wait for nothing. You will take the light. Do what you swore and give me the vengeance you promised. 
Look at me, student. Look at me! I will do what I swore, old friend. I am gone. And I will take the light. What's happening to it? Zavala, we're back and ready to go. Fitting your traveler would send you to face me once more. Look upon me. Dominus of the Red Legion. Annihilator of suns! Razor of a thousand worlds! Slayer of gods and conqueror of the light! I am God! And I have become legend. in all places, in all things. You can block it, even try to trap it, but the light will find its way.
When the Red Legion attacked, it almost cost us everything. It took a miracle to save us. The awakening of the Traveler. This is our new beginning. The maps are blank. The rules are gone. All we know is we must become more than what we were. This small corner of the cosmos is the only place that is forever ours. And the universe watches us with envious eyes. We've proven we can fight threats from beyond the stars. But now there are things stirring beneath our feet, provoked by the Traveler's light. Our war is just beginning. Ominous rocks, killer robots, people in mortal danger. Seriously, aren't you tired of this? Fatigue is a distraction from our purpose. As are complaints. Oh, I haven't begun to complain yet. Ouch! Ugh! Now I'm complaining. Focus, Sagira. Reach for the sky, big guy. Myself. Need help? Again? I've got it, thank you. Well? Osiris? What, what did you see? Slow down! Wait... I thought I... Oh, sh... You know, I can't help but notice that even with all of reality to explore, you keep picking the places where they shoot at us. We can't stay here. If the Vex succeed, it's the end of everything. Sagira, we can see your light. You have to go. Nope, not leaving you. Without me, there's no coming back. If I don't stop the Vex, there won't be anything to come back to. I'm doing this for the both of us. Don't you even... Huh? Oh, sorry. Guardian, thank you for coming. There's been a development on Mercury. Strange reports from the cultists clinging to what's left of the planet. Normally, I'd ignore their conspiracy theories. But one of my hidden brought me... this. A dead ghost? She's not dead. Her name is Sagira. I've known her a very long time. And her guardian. Osiris. The Osiris? The most powerful guardian ever. The hero of six fronts. The Zavala before Zavala? Zavala wouldn't like to hear you call him that. Most guardians won't even speak Osiris's name. 
He was the only vanguard commander ever exiled from the city. And the man who taught me what it means to be a warlock. We found Sagira on Mercury, and at the same time, Vex activity there surged exponentially. And you think Osiris might be involved? I need to know what happened, even if the Vanguard wants to forget him. When I lost my light, I didn't have anything else. I was empty. Then you came to Io, and you helped me find my way back. I need that friend again, Guardian. Go to Mercury. Take Sagira with you. The followers of Osiris, the few who remain, might know what her presence means. And for now, let's keep this between us. I'd hate to have to throw you off this wall. Um, that was a joke, right? That was a joke. Welcome to Mercury, Guardian. The signs told me you would come. What a coincidence. We followed the signs here, too. And by signs, I mean facts. That, too, is a sign. I am Brother Vance of the Followers of Osiris, Keeper of the Lighthouse, and Oracle of the Lost Prophecies. Vex's mind is destroyed, and the path to their dark future is gone with it. And in case you were wondering, our guardians were amazing. Our guardians? Huh. My guardian. Guardian thief. Osiris, it's been a very long time. Too long, my... my <laughs> I was going to say student, but... Well, that word is too small for you now. I've had other teachers. Time. Pain. A guardian who makes a habit of the impossible. Who I'm proud to call a friend. The world has changed. So has the city. You could come back with me. No, my place is here now. We stopped the Vex this time. But many equations lead to the same solution, if they were ever to find another. Besides, I predicted many things, but I never saw you. Now we have a future. The pathway to the forest will be open if you ever need to find me, or if you want to talk. I'd like that. Great! Galaxy saved. Friends again. Our big hero over here. And by the way, you're welcome. <laughs> Come, little light. We have infinite realities to explore. And all the time in the world. Guardians aren't supposed to investigate their past. That's the rule. But I'm not good with rules. Not when there's this much at stake. The Clovis Bray tech in that building allowed us to colonize the system during the Golden Age. 
We, they, sought to create peace for all humanity. Which is ironic, because they also built Rasputin, the single most powerful weapon in the solar system. Either way, it's all been entombed on Mars since the collapse, along with something far more terrifying. over, but Gaul's forces, what remains of them, have been scavenging during their retreat. And now that warsats are falling out of orbit near Mars, the Cabal are headed there too. I'll plot a landing course. That's the private Vanguard channel. Mayday, do you copy? Vanguard access code 030. Get away from my ghost, you frozen... Guardian requesting backup, I repeat. I need backup down here. This frequency is reserved for official Vanguard business. So look, whoever this is... That's cute. You've got one of the uptight ghosts. Uptight? I'm uploading coordinates to a safe landing zone. Please hurry. All right, but you're going to owe us for this one. I wouldn't have called you down here unless it was absolutely critical. The most dangerous weapon in this system is on this planet. And an entire army of Hive is trying to destroy it. I need your help. Hey, you made it. Actually, yes. We did. Well, there were a lot of them. But you did great. Come on. Let's see what's hiding in here. Besides hordes and hordes of frozen hive, I mean. Hello, Guardian. Oh, Shanks. What do you think you're doing? Do you have any idea how dangerous this thing is? What were you trying to do to Rasputin? Rasputin is Vanguard business, Anastasia, not yours. You do not belong here. I beg your pardon? You belong to the city. But instead of standing by your brothers and sisters when Gaul came for us, you were here, doing what you always do, what you were never supposed to do. I did what I believed to be right. I came here to protect humanity. Isn't that what Guardians are supposed to do? This is a war of many fronts. And there's more than one way to fight it, Zavala. Look. You tried to shield the entire world. But you can't. There's got to be a better way. And do you think Rasputin is the answer? It's gone silent. It's a broken weapon. Too dangerous to be left alone and too unpredictable to wield. That might be true. Or maybe he has nothing to say. Maybe. Just maybe. We never bothered to ask him what he wanted. I don't have time to go through this with you again. You had no right. I have every right. You don't understand the connection I share with Rasputin. Here, let me show you. Okay. 
We should really figure out exactly what's doing that. I can tell you. Rasputin was not the only thing to awaken on Mars. directly for the Clovis Spray facility and Rasputin. If Rasputin dies, the Javelin goes with him. Zol wins. Very well. And my reservations about the war mind aren't as important as defeating Zol. We do this together. What do you say, Guardian? We say it's about time. family shaped me to be an all-seeing savior while your vanguard sought to wield me as a primitive weapon but today that ends and I define the reality of my own existence My sight will stretch to the edge of this system and beyond. Never again will a threat go unseen. From this day forward, I will defend humanity on my own terms. I am Rasputin, guardian of all I serve it. I have no equal. What have we done? Don't worry. We've got this. Have a bullet with your name on it. Oh, any second now, my partner is gonna roll in here and kill every last one of you. And you, my man. This is going to hurt a lot. Any last words? <clears throat> How's your sister?
Petra Venge. Thanks for the invite. What you packing for this party? <sighs> the usual. Oh, do the thing. Seriously, watch this. <sighs> That'll never not freak me out. Do it again. Later. Maybe. Right now, Gen Pop is running wild. Fortunately, the main arena and lower levels remain on lockdown. But if the core security systems fail, containment is going to be a problem. Just another day at the office. All right, partner, this is a Cade Riff in six. Watch me for the changes and uh, try to keep up. Now let's go to prison! <laughs> Looks like we're all done and dusted here, kiddos. Raman's on me. Looking pretty good down here. Just gotta check one last thing. Prison riot. It's a prison break. The airlock on deck zero. It's the only way out this far down. They're going to escape. Not if I get there first. Spectacular landing. And cue the ominous music. Okay, everybody. Back in your cages. I said, back in your cages! Yeah, that hurt. 
really all you got. They helped me out here, little buddy. didn't feel a thing. <laughs> how's, how's my hair? <laughs> Speechless. <laughs> Typical. Oh no. Nothing I can. I'm sorry. Listen, kid. This this pain on you. This is what I get for, for playing nice. <laughs> you tell Zava and Ikora. The Vanguard. This is the best bet I ever lost. He had the worst jokes. Even worse timing. I wanted to laugh. I really did. We should have been there. This is not your fault. This is on the head of Aldrin Sov. But if he thinks what he's done is the end, it's not. It's the beginning. We're going to fight him. Do you hear me? All of us. Every Titan. Every Warlock. Every Hunter. We will take the Reef by storm. And then, we will mount the head of that son of a bitch on his precious throne. For our fire team. For Cade. No. What did you say? We are not an army. We are not conquerors. We are guardians. We need to keep our eyes here. On our home, our people, the Traveler. The Reef was lost the moment it lost its queen. So if another Sov wants a stretch of lifeless rocks, let him have it. This is Cade we're talking about. 
For us to do nothing is... is... See it. Cowardice. I refuse to bury any more friends. You won't have to. Aldrin Sov is mine. Yes, I am humbled by your gracious acceptance. Mara Sav, my sister, your queen, may be gone. But she is with us now, and always. As for you, my friends, my barons, you embraced me when I was cast out. And for that, I gift to you the bounty of the Tangled Shore. Go, unleash upon the fallen chaos. By your grace, Father. Be proud. The Reefborn's love for their queen remains undiminished. Love is fleeting, but devotion. Now that is forever. Not one of them has ever shown more strength of devotion than you, my dear brother. The Awoken cannot be trusted. You and I know that better than anyone. Together, we can bestow upon our people the fortune they so richly deserve. Extinction. and quitters well to that ancient awoken watchtower on the horizon. Leave no stone unturned. Aldrin can't hide from us. Ah. <laughs> well, if it isn't Petrovanch, the worst jailer in the solar system. <laughs> What brings you to my home away from home? Away from home? On the run, are we? I heard you lost the shore. You 
lost my shore. Thought you might want some help getting it back. A guardian? And where, oh where? Pray tell is its ghost. Never mind the ghost. There were two guardians at the prison of elders when it fell. Cade Six, and this one. The three of us want the same thing, Spider. Aldrin and his barons. Dead. Oh, what is your... Oh, ho, ho. I see. <laughs> Despite our clear, mutually aligned interests, I'm sorry. But I can't help but feel like it is I who will come up short. It's true. I know where Aldrin and his barren scheme. You go scratch your itch. Then we can just say, you owe me. Do we have a deal? Deal. <laughs> This is as far as you go. Please, for you I go instead. Oh no, darkness lives here. Death, you are not of ether, can't bring you back. All the same. Yes, father, we ever serve and await return. Go, inspire, and avenge your murdered friends. There's no more room for fear, dear brother. I'm not afraid. Of course not.
Oh, Aldrin. You have sacrificed like no other. You looked into an abyss, bowed to false kings, and suffered uncountable betrayals. You were humiliated, imprisoned, manipulated, taken, and still you gave up everything because you Please, brother, will you walk through hell for me one last time? Yes. Good. Then let us finish this. Even paradise is a prison when you can't leave. You've no idea how fortunate you are to be my chosen. You hold the flesh of a god in your hands. You are mere steps away from our salvation. Only light and dark together can unlock my way back into your world. That's it. Keep going. Free me! Congratulations. You have my undivided attention. Now where's my sister? She's not here, Aldrin. And if she was, this would be a whole lot easier. So, this is to be a reckoning. Wait, not like this. Look at him, he's finished. Even with everything he's done, we can't just... You have no idea what he's done! If Cade was here, I know what he would do, Guardian. Do you? Yes. What would the notorious Cade Six do? You have his gun. Seems you get the last word. <clears throat> everything I did, I did for her. <laughs> 
Funny. The line between light and dark is so very thin. Do you know which side you're on? Before she went to war, Queen Mara left me with three orders. Protect our people. Hide our secrets. Believe in the plan. I have protected. I have hidden. I have believed. Now I want answers. I want to know what drove Aldrin to madness. I want to kill whatever evil has crept into the Dreaming City. And most of all, I want to see my queen again. I want to know that she lives. My queen commanded me to slay a beast. We could not do it alone. So I turned to the Guardians. Six brave heroes came to destroy my people's greatest secret. Riven, the last known Ahamkara, a creature of immense power and cunning. The Guardians killed Riven and ripped out her heart. But Ahamkara transcend death. They can transform desire into reality even when they are nothing but bone and dust. I should have known that Riven would grant one last wish, one last curse. Now the Dreaming City has been taken. I opened the gates. I ordered the attack. I should have known. Stunning, isn't it? That weapon is beyond special. A witness to the slaughter of our founder. And my ally in vengeance against those responsible. Light bearers. Just like you. You are not welcome here, Guardian. Well then, what we offer, Guardian, is privilege, normally afforded to those who do not already have their own. Today, however, it would seem our doors are open to you. Welcome to the Black Armory.
is that? It's about time someone taught you respect, little man. Ha! <laughs> someone like you? I know you all keep tabs on me. Yeah. You've been straying. You don't even use his name no more. Well, that's why I'm still breathing, brother. Gambit is a chance at salvation. Drifter now. You have proven yourself worthy. Accept this gift from the knife. A gift? What gift? Just pull this scam off. And when the time comes, we'll finally be in the clear. Huh. For the memories, you lunatic. Anything else I can do for you? You're already doing it. Keep playing the game.
Attention all guardians. Last night, we detected a seismic disturbance on the moon. Within hours, it was swarming with hive. This plague must not be allowed to spread. Eris Morn. What is that pyramid? You've heard the stories of the Traveler's sacrifice, of darkness descending upon humanity. Before us lies a dark remnant of their existence. Was it struck down by the Traveler? Left here on purpose? The truth is ours to discover. Discover how? We find a way inside. I had to see it with my own eyes. How long has it sat in silence watching us? Much too long. I can't help but feel responsible for this, Eris. If I hadn't sent you here... Your concern is noted, that my fate is my own responsibility. And we both know you didn't come here to apologize. I came to tell you, you were right. It seems those responsible for our collapse are coming back. You're all insufferable! Save your torment for someone who gives a damn! Eris. The Vanguard is at your disposal. And... If you'll excuse us, Ikora... We have work to do. Guardian. Whatever she needs. You made it. We have heard your cries for help. And soon we will answer. Who are you? Don't you recognize us? We are not your friend. We are not your enemy. We are your salvation.
We say that the Black Garden is the birthplace of the Vex. But it was not the beginning. It was the reason. The life in the Garden called out a question. The Vex are the answer. They will do anything to protect the Garden. In these things, there is symmetry. The gateways have opened. The Vex are coming. For you, the Red Legion had never been defeated in battle. You crushed them, drove them to a desperation they've never known. They have scoured the system, searching for salvation. Instead, they found my failed experiment, the Sundial prototype. It is a means to walk the corridors of time. Now time is broken on Mercury, fractured by the Legion into countless realities. They intend to write a new history, a new ending to the Red War. Show them history is written by the victors. It 
It's been a while, old man. The tower looks at you and sees a god. But I see a thug. A murderer. Betrayer. You know why I left the Infinite Forest. What I saw. A line has been drawn in this system. Light on one side, dark on the other. Where do you stand? Two years ago, the Warmind Rasputin helped humanity defeat the Hive on the Martian frontier. On that day, it swore to protect us. Now, it may be the only thing that can. The Red Legion has one last play. They have boarded their superweapon, the Almighty. And it's on the move. You already destroyed its star-killing munitions. But whatever the Legion hopes to achieve won't end well for us. They once took the tower. They will take nothing else. We'll see to that. Copy, Commander. I've located the central manifold. It seems the Cabal have disabled the ship's MAV thrusters. They killed the steering on this thing? Any idea what that was? Checking. That explosion came from the propulsion deck. The Cabal have taken out the primary engine. Have you made it to the bridge yet? Just a moment. They've destroyed the ship's navigation system. We're a dead stick. None of this makes any sense. No nav, no engine, no way to steer or change course. It's like they want this thing to drift off into space forever. Not forever.
turned war on the moon. They built a lunar fortress to back their assault. A grand stage to announce their revival. You climbed that scarlet citadel, and the hive met you head on. You buried them. But we found more than hive on the moon. The dark has reached out. We have no choice but to reach back. What did you find? It found me. The darkness reached out, but something interferes. Its messages to us are being defaced. Defaced? By the witch sister of the Taken King, Oryx. Savathun. Your obsession gives her power. No. She feeds on denial. Ignorance. The Guardian has discovered a means to circumvent her. A seed of silver wings. Eris. If the darkness reaches out, we must reach back. I will not sanction this. We are beyond sanctions. It is here. I will return to Io. If we cannot determine what the darkness seeks, we will find ourselves on the verge of a second collapse. Perhaps that is what Savathun wants. Please, don't. Let me go, Zavala. Where were we? According to spectral analysis, the pyramid, its propulsion, the energy it's manipulating on Io, I don't see a ship. I see a being. Paracausal in nature. Like the Traveler. All records of the Golden Age agree. On the first day, the sky filled with darkness. On the second, the Traveler fell. Help Eris where you can, but be ready to deal with the enemy fleet when it arrives. We need you, Guardian. Drawing power. Could it be enough to drive the darkness away from us? Every 
fire team has returned to the city. Even the hunters. They're with the people. Keeping them safe. Well, the last time this happened, the world ended. I'm not worried. I'm not. It is reforming, healing its wounds. This will not be the end. It will be an escalation. Last city, humanity has endured a devastating blow. Vanguard scouts have confirmed that Io, Mars, Titan, and Mercury have disappeared. We don't know why. We have lost contact with Deputy Commander Sloan and Jensen Scribe Ashamir. We are deploying guardians to all corners of the system to find answers. And with those answers, we will form a plan. In the meantime, we ask that all lightless civilians remain within the safety of the city walls, under the protection of the traveler. Do not lose hope. Humanity has survived many horrors. We have done so through the strength of our community, through steadfast commitment to one another. Stay strong. Be brave. The Traveler protects us, and we will protect you. The Guardians will come through. They always do. The terrible things born out in the darkness. Every moment brings them closer. My future does not begin here, but yours does. It's time to step beyond the light. And it all begins with a splinter.
That's another one. They all scan the same. Empty. Why did the darkness invite us here? You're quiet today. Yeah. It's just, we keep coming face to face with darkness. And every time we fail to stop it, we're just so powerless. I'm picking up a distress signal. Someone's in trouble. My friends, we are all in great danger. It's Varix. He has a lot to answer for. Darkness walks among us. I'll send a message to let Zabala know. No, wait. Where is the signal coming from? Here. Europa. but a thief. Now, where is it? Safe from you, yes. Search the buildings. Find it. Wait! Aramis, old friend. These powers, they create chaos. They are changing you. This. <laughs> Cling to your machine god. With this power, we make our own fate. Always playing pretend. Living in the past. I should have seen it. Make an example of him. Chains! For centuries we have been bound by them. Servants to the so-called Great Machine. We even built idols in its image. We have become pawns of our own devices. No. Longer! Ah. Today, we begin breaking free from our chains! This power is a gift. One I will share with all of you in time. Violet! By one, we will rise again. This is our future. Our enemies stand no chance against this power. The Great Machine will finally know our pain! It would appear our enemies have arrived, eager to test us. Let's not keep them waiting. Varix believed Erebus wished to create a new life for the Elixni. But these dark powers have poisoned her mind. And so, I fled from her. For this, she calls me Betrayer. There are others who fled. Those like me, who still worship the Great Machine. They are in hiding. I will not leave them behind. They will be casualties in her war without our help. But perhaps they can be brought to safety.
Nexus and Phylax are dead. We must retaliate! Atrax. Critis and I can handle this. Return to the crypt and prepare the body. Aramis, we must take pause. These powers are not what we expected. I too am impatient, but there is wisdom in caution. The destruction they crave. This was a world of prosperity and peace, not unlike your golden age. We worshipped the great machine, but fate intervened. With it came a whirlwind of destruction. In the chaos, the great machine fled, abandoning us all. Aramis, like most, was left consumed with rage. In the wake of loss, Aramis rebuilt a life, found new family, one forged from Anger. Aramis saw only destruction of that which abandoned us. Merrick's fears for elixir lives. At the command of Aramis, they will meet their end. We all do. We must all make choices. Aramis chose herself over her people. If Aramis is to succeed, the great machine and all who follow it will meet their end. In darkness, there is only one truth. Death. Your chains are showing. All that power wasted serving false gods. Allow me to help you break free. Ghost. This is... I... I can't. I'm sorry. Ha. Look what I've done for you. No more light. No more dark. Look within. Focus your power. Ooh. How interesting. The only thing we have to break here is you. Come then, Khan. Show me what freedom has given you! It will not end this way! It can't! Darkness, our ancient enemy. Foretold by many they came, 
as the war mind warned us they would. They were confronted with fire, and when that failed, met with intrigue among the bones of Io's last monument to the light. It promised us power, and for it, a price was paid. A lull holds the system, though it is not emptiness that gives us pause. Yet not all is lost. Stand, Guardian. Brandish your light and join the hunt. You're here! Finally! Is it done? Uh, uh, calm down to you! Oh! Osiris! We warned you it was going to be dangerous down here, especially for the ghostless. I'm... I'm glad to see we're all okay, though. I'm glad, by the way. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Go on. Introduce yourself. They call me... The Crow. My boss wants to see you. Impossible. It's done. So it is. So it is. All right, Guardian. As promised, you can have a prized bauble from my lair as compensation for your heroics. I want him. <laughs> Cute. Real funny. You said anything in the room. <laughs> oh, and, uh, you really want my little bird? Fine, you can have him. Fly away and get the hell out of my lair. Now what? I... I don't know. It doesn't feel real. Freedom. Why would you do this for us? Because... you're a guardian. The Cabal. War, wanted or not, is all they understand. And so we taught them. Sand Eaters, scattered. Dust Giants, belled. Ice Reapers, buried. Siege Dancers, broken. Until we grew complacent, and Gaul drove a blade between our ribs, left us gasping. Before the Vanguard showed them that the light cannot be tamed so easily. I should have stepped forward. Stamped the Red Legion into extinction. Instead, I ran the banner and watched the city's victories dull our edge once more. It should have ended before they fattened us, before they exploited us, before they forced us to lift up a murderer as our savior. Another cabal warmonger now leads a fleet off Nessus. No more waiting. We will be there to put her in the ground. Even my people have a word for peace, but we do not use it often or lightly. I wouldn't have summoned you if I was not sincere. 
peace with the Cabal. The darkness crowds the edges of this system. The Hive serves it. You'll fall to one if not the other. My world did. Empress Keitel, I'm sorry for what you've lost. We have all suffered. I propose an alliance. Cabal don't ally. They conquer. She betrayed her father to Gaul. Don't think she won't put a gilded knife in your back too. My father was soft. He lacked ambition. As you do. Humanity won't survive unless the commander expands his horizons. Join my empire. You'll keep your title and gain a seat on my war council. With my army and your light, the Cabal will crush the Hive. Then, the Black Fleet. Bow. No. Very well. Ready yourself, Commander. I'll sharpen my gilded knife and see you both on the battlefield. Sometimes I like to listen to the city's pulse. I hear it best when the people are asleep, and when I'm alone. It was a warm night, and I wanted to feel the breeze on my face. I took a walk through the first garden we planted inside these walls, to remind myself how far we've come. We've made so many sacrifices since those early days. But with the green of that garden and the murmur of the city we built up around it, I could be at peace. For a little while. Have you ever felt someone's eyes watching you, Guardian? You might not believe it, but I knew he was there before I saw him. I turned, and there he was. Aldrin Sov. His spirit haunting me. Then he shouted a warning, and something snapped in the trees behind me. I spun around, my gun in hand, before I realized I'd drawn it. It all happened so fast. A cabal assassin, one of Keitel's, no doubt. When I looked back for Prince Eldrin, he was gone. Was it a troubled spirit? A hallucination? I wasn't sleeping well before. Now I'm not sure I will at all. Let our blood be the last spilled. Let this ground be hallowed. Let honor bind us. I didn't order this. Bring me the one who pulled the trigger. They'll know who did.
Are you all right? I'm alive. This morning, for the first time in humanity's long and storied history, the sun did not rise. Osiris tells me it's a Vex simulation that has plunged the city into an endless night. It seems they have found a way to harness our energy against us. And even in all his wisdom, Osiris can offer no solution. I don't know what will happen if we can't break the Vex's hold over the city. I do know that we must protect our people, no matter the cost. The Vex are machines, and no one understands machines better than the Elixir. Osiris and I can only think of one we might turn to. Mithrax, Kel of House Light. My spies report he claims to be among the last sacred splicers, those with the power to commune with machines. He may be our best and only hope. Find him, Guardian, before the Vex do. People shelter beneath the great machine. This is beyond simple generosity. I must thank Ikora for her gift. This sanctuary is not granted by Ikora alone, but by all who live in the last city. Yes, and on their behalf, let me extend a welcome. I am Osiris, and this is Lakshmi too future war court leader and city representative. My greatest appreciations to you both. The House of Light thanks you. Your house can best show gratitude by keeping to itself. I know your assistance with the Vex will benefit us all, but not everyone in the city is so open-minded. You appear to be settling in. I will leave you to it. If you require further help from us, you must only ask. Uh, I shall. Uh, there are several modifications we will need for stable ether production. Submit a proposal to Ikora. She seems willing to get you anything you need. I must return to the people in the city. Future War Court has foreseen great misery for them in the days ahead. And they will need an advocate. I often forget how highly those in the tower have placed themselves. The air is thin there. Best not to breathe too much of it. You must understand this situation is tense for us all. This encampment perches on the edge of the Cree and democracy. I hope your stay with us will be Uneventful. As do I. Hmm. 
When I requisitioned this transmitter, I was told the helm would be a secure location. I suppose this will have to do. Greetings, Guardian. I'm Lakshmi II of the future war cult. And I'm here to offer my assistance. Because you need it quite badly. The future war cult has long used Vex-derived technology to see into the future. I won't bore you with an explanation of mind forking. Suffice to say, we understand its dangers and use the device responsibly. I have glimpsed our future, Guardian. And what I saw was chilling. Skies dark with smoke, shouting, gunfire, and in the center of it all, standing in our city, a group of fallen, the same fallen I saw earlier. Ikora listened to my report, but she chose not to hear it. The vanguard would rather protect its image than its people. And so I will handle things myself. We can change this future. Stop it from happening. While I monitor your progress against the Vex and assist where I am able, I will observe these fallen. If they begin to act against us, well... When I foresaw the Red War, they laughed, until Gaul bound the Traveler. This time, I will not whisper my warnings. I will not be polite. I look forward to working with you, Guardian. Together, we can protect our city from all who would wish it harm. We have already surrendered too much. Now they want more. Meat, cloth, medicine. People in the city need these things. We ask for no more than you can give. This endless night, it drains us. Our resources are spread too thin. What you give to them, you take from the mouths of our citizens. All right. That's enough. My Koro was firm. I am to provide for the Elixni as if they were our own people. Our own people. Lakshmi was right. You are too political an animal, Osiris. The House of Light. We wish to destroy the Vex. To aid the Guardian. Same as you. Yes? Do not start with this. Tell me, Mithras. Were I in one of your cities, would you bow to all of my demands? We would give you anything you asked for. Because you are so generous? Because we would wish to live. I see. <laughs> you are fighting for your people as I would fight for mine, yes? It is true. Split the supplies as Ikora says. Anything to make this false night pass more quickly. Interesting. There's been a disturbance. Sabotage in the Elixni camp. This wasn't just an attack on their ether stores. Someone wanted to send a message. Our citizens forget who they were before they found the safety of the city's walls. It's easy to mistake change as the front line of a battlefield. But this is a time for level heads and compassion. Saint-14 is already en route to investigate. I trust him, but he is torn between duty and doubt. And Lakshmi? The Vanguard has tolerated her broadcasts, as Zavala doesn't believe it's our place to interfere in civilian politics. I see now that was a mistake. We can't allow anyone to jeopardize our alliance with the House of Light, no matter their motives. Our citizens must see that the Elixni are people, just like them. Get down there. Be the calm the city needs. Hear out grievances, and keep tensions low. 
while I root out the perpetrators. It's time that Lakshmi and I had a little talk. You see what was done. Our ether tanks smashed. Our supplies stolen. Our home defaced. I cannot find any witnesses. This is not surprising. The locals have been under enormous pressure. You're lucky it was not worse. This destruction helps no one but the Vex. Please, instead of teaching your people to fear us, tell them the truth. The truth is that your kind has preyed upon us for as long as we can remember. There's nothing I can say that will make them forget. House Light has never raised arms against humanity. Your houses and titles are layers of politics. You're still fallen. You promised us your protection. And you've had it. We allowed your brood to squat and chitter here in our city. But still, the Vex simulation persists. If you're displeased with how you have been treated for your failure, then I suggest you camp elsewhere. Your people destroyed what little we possessed. Now we have nothing, nowhere to go. Humanity faced a challenge like that once. We banded together and built a city with walls to keep our enemies outside, where they belong. We hear her broadcasts, but more than that, we feel the energy of her words in the air. Sharp as blades pointed at an enemy. At us. You cannot ask people to live alongside their monsters. Listen to me now, Saint. Let me tell you something about monsters. Once, in a city grander even than yours, we prospered. But it did not last. Our great machine abandoned us. And when we pursued it, you sent something back. A creature fueled by hatred. It tore through our great houses like they were nothing. And then it came for the rest of us. Nowhere was safe from its insatiable rage. In its eyes, even the most innocent of Elexni were still fallen. It could die, but it would not stay dead. It would shake off the rot and rise again. And if it caught you in its crushing embrace, impaled you on its ragged crest, dragged you screaming into its foul shell, none live to speak of these horrors. It called itself the my people must now see the creature every day. It sees us. If we wish to survive, we must all learn to live alongside our monsters. Guardian, I regret you had to witness my outburst earlier with the fallen leader. I am not a diplomat. And sometimes I can be terse. I know terrible things have been done in the name of the city. In the name of the future war court. In my name. You understand, though. The city is a living thing. 
and it is rejecting the fallen, like a fever, burning out an infection. I will speak to the fallen leader, tell it that the future war cult will personally replenish their supplies when they are ready to move on. I do not wish them to think badly of us. I know they are your associates. What a city we would have if everyone's heart was as big as yours. Have you heard the song of the people echoing through the city? Rise up as one, march toward the sun. Hmm. The words of people reaching for dawn in this endless night. People who have still not given up hope. Neither have I. And if you were wondering, this was not the conflict I have foreseen. No. That will come later. Unless I can stop it. I have thought much on Mithrax's story. We do monstrous things to fight monsters. It seems simple. When the city first formed, Titans were the walls. We did not think of our enemies when we fought. We thought only of protecting our people. Survival until the next day, no matter how be seen as a, as a terror, a destroyer. To know children tremble in fear at my name and mourn what I have taken from them. This is not the Saint-14 I know. I can never forgive what the old houses did to us. But these are not the old houses. They are dead. What do we gain from more death? This lashing out against defenseless people, it is the act of a coward. Mithrax risked much to trust us. If his house of light can forgive, perhaps we must try to see the fallen, Elixni, as they see themselves. Or none of us will ever be anything but monsters. We must be more than the enemies of our enemies. Guardian, be vigilant. We must consider our discovery of Savathun to be part of her plan. Perhaps she means to sow fear and suspicion among us. I won't allow her to drive us apart. When the time comes, I'll put a spear of light through the Witch Queen's heart myself. For now, I'm overturning all hidden records and full archival access to Osiris, but no one else. Lakshmi claims the Vanguard suffers from a lack of transparency. If she had access to our records, she'd cherry-pick whatever details were necessary to ground her prophecies. I need people I can trust to be objective. Some of our records on Savathun are fabricated truths, I'm sure. But in those lies are the strategies she used to topple the Dreaming City. History won't be repeating itself here. Continue your splicer training with Mithrax. Use it to root Savathun's minions out. We'll reassess the situation when we've located our target. Osiris, there is something I must discuss with you. Lakshmi. She came to me with a proposal. Are you taking over as Titan Vanguard? She discussed it with me as well. Lakshmi has radical ideas, but they are only words. No cause for alarm. Good, good. Only words, of course. She wants what is best for the people of the city. And in truth, you would make an excellent leader. I do not seek authority. Zavala may have a beautiful desk, but he is chained to it. We could use less bureaucracy, maybe. A more proactive strategies, where we reclaim ground taken from humanity. 
an open council in the city to speak with the citizens. Ha! I have imagined a new vanguard, led by us. Led by you? I would stay back and advise. I lack the temperament for leadership. Ah, a fantasy only. I told Lakshmi I would think about it till she would go away. The words, Lach, tasted like treason in my mouth. Let her believe you are considering it. If you refuse, I imagine she might approach Lord Saladin next. And after what happened with Kaito... I understand. Later we will speak more of this. It appears Lakshmi is speaking a bit too freely. I will report her behavior to Ikora, though I imagine she already knows. You should continue working with Lakshmi. Don't mention what you've heard. We must keep this as quiet as we can. With the Endless Night and the Elixni here, the city has become a powder keg. One errant spark and it could be the end of the Vanguard. Come forward, Olga. Finding Quiria at the center of the Endless Night confirms our worst suspicions. It was the arm Savathun used to strangle our city. With it docked, to borrow an elixir term. We purge Savathun from the Vex domain. I only hope we stopped her in time. The Dreaming Mind's defeat, as with so many things Vex, is a process. It will take time for Mithrax and his splicers to finish untangling our reality from the Vex network. In the meantime, Osiris is focused on collecting all the data we have on Savathun, separating small truths from the many layer of lies. Everything she does is for a reason, even if it seems beyond our comprehension. I want to know what she hoped to gain. I thought I might ask Lakshmi for her assistance, but that device she uses. By Osiris's description, it's used to align one's consciousness with other temporal realities, and has driven many war cultists insane. The visions it shows her, they cloud her judgment. Even now, she believes the Elixni will be the cause of some great catastrophe. Osiris seems to think he can get through to her. He understands the technology. He understands her perspective. But I can only give him so much time. Ah, oh, Guardian. I wanted to be among the first to send my regards. Your victory today has lifted a great weight from my chest. I feel like I can breathe again. I hope you're not too proud to accept my praise. Even though we may not see eye to eye. Pride is a dangerous affliction. It is clear Ikora suffers from it. And yes, I know, I do as well. Do you see? I can admit when I am wrong. Which is more than I can say for some of our current leaders. The city deserves someone who acts, someone who does what is right, even if it is unpopular. After all, you destroyed Quirier against the wishes of countless Vex. You did what had to be done to protect your city. You acted bravely. I admire you for that. You and I we will speak more when this ugliness is behind us. After the Fallen have returned to space, and this endless night is a memory. Our city could use more heroes. Hello again. I've been hearing about all you've done for this city. People are talking. We've all lost so much since the Red War. But we can't let that stop us from celebrating what we have 
and the guardians who keep us safe. I talked to Ikora, and this year we have something special. A way to honor all the inspiring stories you've given the world. Go now, relive your glory. And friend, have a happy solstice. More than enough. I am Marasov, Queen of the Reef. I once made a great sacrifice to protect humanity from the Hive. I lost everything. My fleet. My brother. My people's very way of life. I watched the dreaming city fall into ruin. Desecrated by Oryx. Cursed by Savathun. Now I've returned to retake this sacred place, to finally wrest it free from the Hive's claws. Although you have taken things near and dear to me as well, you have also learned that your list of enemies need not be so broadly defined. Today we are afforded a unique opportunity. The road ahead of us is fraught with perilous choices, Guardian. Choose wisely. I had hoped you'd find your way back. I'm a bit lost, actually. But this feels familiar. Do I know you? Osiris! You must come home! Answer for what you have done! The Vanguard will show mercy! Yes. Ikora and Commander Zavala are nothing if not generous. Queen Mara. Look how they've welcomed the crow into their flock. It isn't too late. You can still be forgiven. Be careful. I'll, I'll hold, hold you, you to it. it. Friend, 
I tried to protect you from the Black Fleet. You called it interference. Don't worry. I was not offended. Instead, I found a form more pleasing to your eyes. Osiris was lost. Lightless. I saved him from Zivu Arath and assumed his shape so I could guide your victory against her. I ferried the reborn prince to your city so he could be redeemed. I protected Zavala from Keitel's ambitions, ending a war before it could even begin. I delivered the House of Light on its knees to Ikora. I unmasked the enemies lurking inside your city's walls and destroyed them. You may disagree with my methods, but you can't argue with results. I am no villain, and you are no hero. We are paracausal. So you wish to hear the rest of my brother's story? Fine. I will oblige you. When the storm came, Riga and Aga rode the winds to meet it. A fleet of talons at their back. A great battle ensued. The storm took, as was its nature. Many fell, Agar among them. Riga could only watch as he tumbled down, 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 until her heart beat alone. She dove into the storm, giving herself to destroy it. Riga's spirit ascended higher into the sky where she hoped to reunite with her brother. Instead, she met the thing that sent the storm, a bottomless well of grief, unreachable by reasoning or bargaining or violence. A voice in the darkness. And so, Riga gathered her feathers into an aegis of wings to shield the world below. But over the years, feathers broke away. Futility wore thin her resolve. Then, one day, her heart began to beat as it once had. Doubled, distant, but different. A beautiful echo. Hope called her home. And though she prayed to find Agar there, he never returned. I still feel Aldrin's heartbeat somewhere out there. When your crow first stood in my halls, I saw an ember of my Aldrin burning in his breast. Curiosity and a sibling fondness told me I could stoke that ember. I hope it is not a lie. I hope he is more than the last ebb of hot ash from a long dead flame. Many of his faults were not of his own making. Aldrin's decisions were his, of course, but driven by whips in the hands of others. Myself included. I will have to offer him more than an old story of an empty promise if I wish to see that ember burn again. This is the path I led Aldrin down. If certain actors had kept to their roles, I would have wielded Aldrin Salve, Light Bearer. But even Mara Salv cannot control everyone. I celebrate his resurrection in the light. But I detest seeing my brother rewritten, his greater self sloughed away and swept into the cellar. 
there is still good to draw from who he was. Don't squander it. He needs a star to guide him. Aldrin or Crow, they are the same in that regard. Iger's scepter is yours, then. Both its burden and the freedom it can provide. Be careful with it, Guardian. He is prone to devotion. sister bearing down on you. Your family is tenacious, if nothing else. No more than yours. My brother spent years suffering punishment for the path you made him walk. Finally, justice finds its mark. Let this be the end of it. Plans are fickle things. Two can view the same events and predict entirely different outcomes. I was outmaneuvered, and Savathun slipped through my fingers. I was sure that this path, these actions were absolute. But change is a prolonged effort. It requires application of steady pressure. There will always be backslides. Do not lose the summit in the climb. After Saint-14 returned Osiris to your tower, my Techians verified his identity. Savathun upheld her end of the bargain. And she did not escape unscathed. Her worm is mine. It will grant many insights, I am sure. The curse on the Dreaming City can yet be broken. Go home, Guardian. Prepare for what is inevitably to come.
in times of crisis, people look to their leaders for answers. But ever since the planets were ripped from our sky, it seems all I can offer are more questions. And now, with Mars returned, I hardly know where to start. Where is she? Your theory was correct. The relic is of the pyramids, there's no doubt. Word is out about Mars. I need more time. The Cabal are mobilizing. We need to... Secure the camp! Seems they have another target. What are they aiming at? Savathun. Guardian? Guardian, do you read me? We're here, Ikora. We're back on Mars. Back? From where? Savathun's throne world. I know we should have checked in, but we had Savathun in our sights. That might have been our only shot at her, and we couldn't miss it. I understand completely. That's not like Savathun to allow herself to be seen so easily. There's something else. Before we left the ship, we ran into one of her knights. And it... It had a ghost, Ikora. Same as any other light bearer. A ghost? A hive knight with a ghost? But that means... Sabathun stole the light. But that's impossible, isn't it? Impossible? With Sabathun, nothing is impossible. Hive god of cunning and lies. Hive legend tells us she was born on a hostile, far-off planet, where she would have lived a short, uneventful life. If it weren't for the worm familiar that warned of an impending cataclysm. And so, she led her siblings into the depths, where the ancient worm gods offered them immeasurable power in exchange for endless blood tribute. From this, the Hive were born, and countless civilizations were condemned to extinction. For untold ages, they devoured life and light wherever it could be found, facing little resistance, until they tried to take on the Guardians. After the death of her brother Oryx, Savathun went into hiding. Not out of fear, of course, but out of strategy. Because Savathun knows the best way to beat your enemy is to join them. In her greatest trick yet, she infiltrated the vanguard, weakening us from within. And stealing our most sacred resource, 
the one thing we thought she could never touch. The light. Not sure I'd go in there if I were you. The rules of engagement had changed. I don't need to listen to this. Guardian, what fortuitous timing. Indeed. I'm fresh from performing Cabal funeral rites. Care to explain? Our condolences, Empress. Your people fought and died with honor. But they didn't have to. We can all prevent future losses if we choose to put the incident on Mars behind us and work together. What we discovered there is a threat to both humanity and the Cabal. You want my help. Want is a strong word. You need my help. I don't know how the Hive came into possession of the Light. My core will find out. But in the meantime... Invincibility lies in the defense. The possibility of victory in the attack. Sun Tzu. I've read your texts. You want us to hit them. I need us to hit them. Hard.
incredible that I could forget something like that, isn't it? Such a storied life, erased. The light offers us a fresh start. But if we don't know where we came from, how will we know where to go? I'm so grateful to you for reminding me, for telling my story. Wait, what is she talking about? She remembers. We helped her remember. Thanks for the memories, Guardian. We have to leave. So, you're saying Sabathun was dead? Our most devious adversary, the one who nearly decimated the last city from within, was dead. And the Traveler resurrected her? I wouldn't have believed it either, but... But why would she need us to recover her memories if she never lost them in the first place? This has to be another trick. A lie to fool us into surrendering the Traveler without a fight. This has been the Traveler's approach from the beginning. The Books of Sorrow detail many civilizations it blessed with the Light, then abandoned. High propaganda. The Fallen tell the same story. When the Witness and its Black Fleet came to call, the Traveler moved on to our system. Where it sacrificed itself to save humanity from the same forces. Forces which included the Hive! After all that, why would the Traveler give our worst enemy the Light? It doesn't matter. I don't know why the Traveler gave Sabathun the light. Maybe it has changed its mind about Guardians. Maybe it's not as infallible as we once believed. I don't know, and it doesn't matter. Because I'm here to protect humanity. And if Sabathun takes the Traveler, we lose our light, along with any hope for surviving the Witness's return. So, whatever it takes to stop this heist, we will do. All right. How do we stop this? I'm not sure yet. But I know where to find out. These frail siblings will soon be claimed by the light. Unless
first we claim the first. We will tell the most cunning sibling of a cataclysm. The prophecy of great loss. We will feed her fear. Her pride. We will say... Beyond Sathona. The end is coming. A great cataclysm. A god wave. In the sky, there is only death. But salvation lies in the deep. Lead your sisters down. Your coming will spare their short lives. And you will be reborn. The Witch Queen. Salathun. They were tricked. The Hive were lied to. This is interesting. I miscalculated. So did you, Guardian. So protective of your traveler that you wouldn't let me keep it safe. But the witness is coming. The game is yours to play now. Yours to win or lose. Just don't say, I didn't warn you. Where did your ghost go? Guardian, I just got the message. The Traveler is back in the last city. Is it done? Is Salvathun? She's dead. But her ghost got away. Good enough. Hold your position. The Hidden are coming to secure the remains. Good work, Guardian. You did the right thing. Now what? Now, we prepare for the witness and stop the next collapse. The very parasite that once plagued the Witch Queen herself. Queen Mara, good to see you. Do not delay us with pleasantries. This parasite knocks at death's door. What use do we have for Savathun's dying worm? This parasite is an opportunity. 
to learn from humanity's greatest failure. Our collapse. But not ours alone. That day was as much a failure for the wit. Are you okay? I'm fine. As I said, our collapse was as much a failure for the Witness and its followers. Savathun included. Savathun was there? On behalf of the Witness. But something prevented humanity's end. Something known by Savathun and... Her worm. It requires strength and a new host to survive. To divulge its secrets. But that's a death sentence. For most, yes. But for the Queen of the Awoken? It's worth the risk. Long ago, even before there was a last city, I was deep on patrol in the old forest. When a local villager sought me out, they asked me to catch a thief. I told them the Iron Lords were no mercenaries, but I saw their pride as well as their poverty. When they offered me a loaf of black bread instead of coin, I agreed. Just before sunrise, I caught my thief. A young girl, stealing what she could carry. Food when she could find it, coin when she couldn't, Weapons to protect what she had taken. There was no fear in her eyes. She said the bandits in the forest ordered her to steal in exchange for protection. The penalty for theft in those times was death. Instead, I pulled the crest from around my neck and pressed it into her hands. I told her the wolves would protect her. In a settlement rich with stolen supplies, I found the bandits and cut them down. 38 lives to spare one. And for a time, I believed that was mercy. Many winters passed before I found myself back in that part of the old forest. This time, no one sought me out. So I sought them instead. Wind blew through rotted wood and rusted metal where the village once stood. And behind it, graves. Then piled stones, then bare mounds of earth, and then... a pit. My blood was high. I tore through the forest, hunting for those responsible. Finally, in a settlement rich with stolen supplies, I found her. A lightless woman, with my crest around her neck. There was no fear in her eyes. She spoke plainly. When the villagers could no longer tithe, her wolves no longer protected them. She bled them dry. And when they had no more to give, she sent in her men, unleashed her wolves. Mercy to an enemy cannot come at the cost of mercy for their victims. The right path isn't always easy to find. But once you do, the only question is whether you're strong enough to walk it. Crow, how do you justify the innocent blood on your hands? It was honorable. It was an accident. A cabal word for accident has two syllables. One is fault, the other responsibility. Honor the scion whose life was taken. A life for a life. That is our way. 
That is your way, not ours. You will not deny us justice! Do what you believe is right. I did. I will honor you. You demand a life for a life. Take mine. Cabal reward bravery in the face of death. I accept. Your life is forfeit. You will serve the rest of your days on my war council as Brockus Forge. Then it's done. Zavala, you can't not a word. It is the beginning of the end. A dormant herald of the collapse stirs in its lunar tomb. Where once we banished the nightmares, a new terror rouses them from their slumber. Callus. The Emperor of the Cabal, betrayed by his own daughter and cast into exile. Now obsessed with a voice calling to him from within the darkness. But we will not cower in fear of nightmares. We will do as Guardians have always done. We will rise to meet the enemy and confront our darkest fears with open eyes. The Lunar Pyramid stirs to the Leviathan's call. It manifests our deepest regrets. They wear familiar faces and speak with familiar voices. Remember your last advisor, Zavala. You trust this one's judgment? I can bind these nightmares to us. Grant us safe passage through the ship. Hide magic. You would doom us all. I know what I'm asking you to confront. Do you? The rules have bent around us. We must also bend. Madness. Your witchcraft plays right into my father's hands. Find someone else for your ritual. Your regrets will follow you, Empress. Let me offer protection. <clears throat> my armor is protection enough. I will lead the charge. You need only follow. No matter what happens, do not break the circle. This will anchor our offerings. Now, tithe your weights to the crown. My heart from a time long past. My memory from one life to the next. Song of Sothona, your words are mine to command. Borlog, I am... Eris! Chords plucked in offered throats find chorus. Echoes once dissonant, exhumed, Find harmony in binding flesh! It burdens! It burdens! It burdens! Until the choir relents, accepting.
We are bound. Before the vanguard, before the city, there was a woman. Her name was Sophia, and she was a surgeon. She came to Lord Saladin's gates, offering her skills in exchange for shelter. Zavala was his protege then. He had been taught his purpose, and he followed it without question. She maddened him. He infuriated her. But respect grew to admiration, and admiration to love. Does it surprise you that Zavala loved? She was meticulous and gentle, strong-willed, stubborn, fearless. It began with an infant orphaned in a fallen raid. Saladin had taught Zavala duty, war, and the light. But Sophia showed him that he was more than an instrument of violence. She had one life, and she would share it with him. They called the boy Hakim. And he called Zavala, father. In his joy, Zavala thought to abandon the light, as he had abandoned Saladin's ways. That joy ended as it began, with their son. When Hakim followed his father into battle, Zavala could not protect him, and Sophia could not save him. Hakim died in his mother's arms, Zavala wanted her forgiveness, but she knew there was nothing to forgive. And that giving up the light would be no absolution for him. They returned to the lives they once led. She found love again. She had a daughter. And when Sophia passed, he asked her to forgive him. Through each generation, he mourned. He asked for their forgiveness. And still, he has not found it. Where is Karas? Dead. He has given himself over to the witness. My father... is gone.
Safi. was not there when my house fell to ruin. Defectors joined the coward Kel Misrax in his worthless house of light and fled to the last city. They devoted themselves to their oppressors, the Guardians and their great machine. There is no greater shame. I tried to claim stasis for my people. But I was judged, bound, abandoned by the same power I sought to command. Some chains cannot be broken. Or so they would have you believe. Thanks for helping your old pal Drifter with this delicate situation, hero. I had a delivery headed toward the last city when these house salvation goons hijacked it. Now I just need you to get in there and expedite my shipment. I'll let you know what we're looking for once you're inside. must have broken Aramis out. No wonder how Salvation's scrambling. So, the ship stealer is back in play. The artifact she's after. Price of her freedom, I bet. Oh, imagine the resale value. Luckily, we got a clean ship and a dirty crew to chase her with. Do me a favor, Guardian. Don't let this clown Pilot by catch. Come on now, Spider. I'll treat her like she was my own. That's what I'm worried about. Only thing you better worry about is the welcome you'll get back in the last city. Let's ride, Guardian. <laughs> thawing out is bad news, sure, and she's looking for something. But luck's on our side for a change. This little trinket is exactly what we need. What's that? That's access, little sister. You hold this key, and any door they close, you can open. If you can find it. <sighs> we must not take the old crews lightly. The full vanguard should be rallied to deal with these outlaws. Yeah, that's a tough sell. Zavala's preparing for Kallus' next move. Ikora's got her hidden looking for Aramis, but they stick to the shadows. That leaves us. Father, we should do whatever we can to help. And there's so much exhilarating knowledge to be gained from these pirates. They may hold antiquities from the time of the whirlwind. more serious than you realize. You ain't wrong. We all know how dangerous Aramis can be. 
It's your call, hero. Well, anchors away. Ready when you are, Captain. We have not formally met. I am Ido, scribe of House Light, daughter of Mizrak Skell, whom you already know. Yes. Mizrax and I are well acquainted. I have heard the stories. Have you now? Do you hold a title, sir? I've heard what they call you. Oh, uh, I hold a great many things. Spider is better than fallen and... No worse than your old man letting the Guardians call him Mithrax. <laughs> yes, some of them struggle to pronounce his name. Yes, it's surprising what they struggle with. Uh, present company excluded, of course. Oh, yes, this Guardian is quite competent. I still hope I will be able to assist somehow. Very plucky of you, Ido. How does your father feel about your involvement? It seems these old pirate crews have put a touch of fear into him. Yes, he seems apprehensive. But I am a scribe. Chronicling our history is part of my position. And... Deep down, he must be as excited about the adventure as any of us. Oh, I'm positively thrilled. Now, little scribe, if you'd be kind enough to uh, excuse us. The Guardian and I have business to discuss. Of course. Welcome to the last city. May the light provide. May the light provide. <laughs> Miss Rax, you old charlatan. You built quite the house of cards here. <laughs> Tell you what, my friend. I'll let you keep using my ship while you go digging for secrets. I think you've got the steel for it. Now go show those pirates what happens when they cross Spider. While you're gone, I'll gather some accoutrements no budding captain should be without. No need to thank me, Guardian. I only ask that you keep my wanton generosity to yourself. I have a reputation to maintain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was beginning to expect better from you. Did I misjudge? You know, Moondust, I can't figure you out. That is not unusual. You talk a big game about how much I irritate you, but you keep calling. Watch yourself, Rat. You know I always do.
Guardian. I thought the Elixni had moved on from such senseless brutality. It seems I was mistaken. Aramis has awoken and has summoned the old crews to aid her. Regrettably, it falls on you to stop them. For that, you will require a star chart and a captain's atlas. Spider had these antiques in his collection. Use them if you must, but remember that you are a guardian chosen by the light. These pirates, brutal remnants of our past, are not. Aramis chose to ally with them for a reason. They know the stars in a way even how salvation does not. I fear that Aramis may seek... <sighs> Pay me no mind. Raise arms against these pirates and discover the truth for yourself. Hello, Guardian. My father and I are already studying the relic you reclaimed from the pirates. I am eager to learn the nature of the strange energies that seep from within. I was thrilled to aid in your engagement with Aramis's fleet. I hope my support was beneficial, although I admit I am unused to the rigors of combat. While I did study with the Awoken Techians, gunplay was never a part of the syllabus. I am proud of the progress we made together. Thank you for including me as part of your crew. I must continue my studies. May the light provide. What catches your eye? enlisted their help. She seeks the relics, and pirate legends hint at where they may be hidden. And if her task is at the command of the witness... Aramis cannot be allowed to claim the powers within. If she does, all will fall to corruption. You must find them. You must. Miss Rax, my old friend, there's a matter I wish to discuss with you. My people's concerns are my own. I will listen. I hoped you'd say that. Rumor has it you're... New crew has been bringing back delightful baubles pulled from the old shores. Are you asking for a share? Huh? Do you think me so petty? We're on the same side here. We have our eyes on the same horizon. Those relics 
resurfaced for a reason. The power belongs to us. We could have everything this time. We need only take it. Your words are careless. What? The Guardian? Huh. A trusted accomplice. No. I did not imagine you would speak like that where I might hear you. Come now, Mishraj. I know you. Think of your house. Think of your daughter. We could have everything Eremus wants. Wouldn't that be some lovely payback? Huh? You will leave that behavior in the past. You will not speak of it here beneath the great machine, or I will silence you. Uh, there's no call for that. Do you hear me, Rakis? I hear you. Never summon me like this again. Get out. We're closed. Boom, boom, ba 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 boom, ba 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 boom, boom, boom. Ah, hey there, hero. <laughs> Sorry, getting a little swept up in all this adventuring. I'm on debrief duty, while your Elixni buddies are busy with the relics you got from Aramis's crew. Ido's researching how to tap into their power. The kid's thorough, I'll give her that. She thinks something's hidden inside him. I swear she was about to crack one open before Mithrax stopped her. Now me? I took one look and knew those things were bad news. Gave me a little shiver. Reminds me of something. From a long time ago. Huh. Maybe I should do a little research of my own. I think you'll find our friendship agreeable. against the old crews. She is brave and curious, but does not yet understand the brutality of the world. There are pain truths in our history. I should have told her earlier, before all this. But I must learn before I can teach, and for that I need time. Disrupt Aramis's crews, and stop her from collecting the relics. Some mistakes must remain in the past.
Spider, there are questions my father refuses to answer. Have you seen him act this way before? You two were friends once. Even if Misrax had friends back then, I wasn't among them. I couldn't possibly speak to his behavior. You're being evasive. Oh, evasive? I prefer to think of it as coy. Well then, your father was unpredictable. We could have had everything we wanted if he listened to me, but he always knew better. <laughs> Look at him now. Cal of a house, holed up inside the city. Picking over ruins, pretending he's content in the shadow of the great machine. We were offered scraps and we took them. Oh? Is that ingratitude I hear? I do not call the truth ingratitude. But enough of who my father is. Who was he? I expected this from Spider. But not from you. I am simply performing my duties as scribe of House Light. I will gather knowledge regardless of who would keep it from me. Ruckus, I told you not to speak of this. Do I have to dock your tongue? Father! I apologize for the Kells' behavior. Apology accepted. I see now. You're afraid little Ido will take off those rose-colored glasses. <laughs> Such a delightful human phrase. <laughs> and what will she see when she looks at you then? Do not speak to my daughter again. Oh, don't worry about me. Though, I'm not the only one who remembers. Sooner or later, She'll learn the truth. But I'm sure it will all work out. After all, what is it you say? The light provides. Hey there, Captain. Figured I'd better take over while Mithrax is preoccupied. I heard he's dealing with some family issues. From what I could gather, he tried to shut Ido out from all this pirate business. Might have lost his temper. Definitely lost face. Ah, poor Ido. What do they say? Never meet your heroes? Kinda tough when your hero's your dad. No surprise to me Mithrax has got some secrets. Everybody's got something that keeps them up at night. I'm sure they'll work it out. Folks have a way of putting aside the differences when the world's at stake. <laughs> Just look at me and Zavala. Or me and Ikora. Or me and... Hmm? anybody, really. Here for a favor. I've been trying to determine what exactly is inside these reliquaries. But I dare not open them. The resulting surge of darkness energies would have unforeseeable effects on my physiology. However, I did manage to secure a centuries-old Vanguard mission report from the Cryptarchy. The reporting Guardian said that Elixni crews were infighting over what he called, quote, chunks of rotting meat. The report is of dubious quality, but it did make me wonder if the relic could be biological in nature. Guardian, as you prepare for your next voyage, know that I will continue to assist in the conflict against Aramis. 
I had words with Mizraxgel concerning his recent behavior. He explained he wished to shelter me from the violence displayed by Aramisgel's crews. I said one does not protect by forbidding exposure. There is no safety in ignorance. I told him plainly that I will not be sheltered. As the Guardian Credo states, devotion inspires bravery, bravery inspires sacrifice. The unspoken line that follows is why I will remain on the radio. Now, we must continue to pursue the relics Aramis seeks. Board your ship and let us begin. spoken with Drifter. He says another force assaulted Aramis's pirates. If you and Aramis are not the only ones searching for the relics, I fear this is beyond my control. I believed we could collect the relics and contain their power, keep them safe. A guardian there are Details I have kept from you. From everyone. I must ask for the gift of your patience. I will find an answer. I will. Trust me for a moment longer. I beg you. Here for a favor. Guardian, we intercepted another of Aramis Kell's transmissions. This time to the Pirate Lord Alax. It is finally time for the Elixir to take their rightful place in the Soul System. We've struggled for too long under the brute heels of others. Hive and Cabal rain artillery down upon us. The Vex steal every last scrap for themselves. And the Light Bearers hunt us for sport. But no longer. This system will soon enter a new age, one of Elixni prosperity. Be sure you're on the right side of it, Alax. I wonder what the witness promised Aramis Gell in exchange for the relics. Clearly it was a persuasive offer. Guardian. Idol has taken action that may endanger us all. She sent a message to Aramis. She invoked a ritual from the old crews, words with empty hands. It is a type of parley where no violence is permitted. Idol believes Aramis will follow the rules of her people. I am not so trusting. Should Aramis accept, I would ask that you accompany us. In the meantime, continue the fight. This may be a ploy, and we must not be fooled. I hope that she ignores Ido's request, but if she does not, know this. Erebus does nothing that is not to her benefit. A word can do more damage than a blade. And Aramis is skilled at wielding both. You taught me to honor Elixni tradition. Aramis Skell agreed to parley. You cannot lose faith in the old ways now. This is a mistake, I know. Aramis listens to one voice only, and it is not ours. I may draw power from the voice in the darkness. But I am an Elixni Kel, and I fight for the liberation of our people. 
A true Kel serves their house. You serve only the witness. And who do you serve? I agreed to meet with Elixni, not a light bearer. The Guardian is here for your protection. Aramis Kel, a scribe of House of Light, I feel compelled to tell you. There is another force searching for these relics. I see. And who are these new meddlers, exactly? One of many you have wronged, perhaps. We did not identify the force, but they dispatched your associates with ease. We have in them a common enemy. We have always had a common enemy. Abandon your pathetic attempts to appease your oppressors. Join me. Together we'll use these relics to achieve true freedom for the Elixni. No. The relics pose too great a threat. They cannot fall to warmongers like you. None know of the destructive power better than you, Mizrax. What do you mean? It was... Centuries ago, I am no longer that person. No, you are the same as ever. I want to know the truth. Will I have to hear it from her? Centuries ago, when the Elixni first came to this system, when your father was just a hatchling, our people had nothing. So, when they discovered Nezarek, disciple of the Witness, entombed in the Lunar Pyramid, they harvested its dark power for themselves and for the future of our people. Mizrax inherited one of these relics and its power ensnared him. He sought more. No matter the cost. But the more his crew had, the less they shared. That became the way of things. Elixni turned against Elixni, and friend turned against friend. Over time, the relics of Nezarek were separated and scattered across the galaxy. Their influence faded, but the stains of their power endure. Mizrax fled from the butchery he was born into. He claims he has changed and now lives a life of piety. But no matter how he tries to bury his past with selfish displays of generosity, and scraps of stolen wisdom, Mizrax will always be a liar, a thief, and a killer. Open your eyes, young scribe. Every light casts a shadow. I don't... please... Let me explain. Mizrax Kel of House Light. My father, a murderer, and a liar. Learning the truth is difficult, but the sharpest pain comes from the fact that he didn't tell me earlier. I was aware he had a past, but 
In a way, Aramiskel showed me who my father is today. And who he sees when he looks at me. He must think I am unable to understand. Or he doesn't care whether or not I do. I am either underestimated or dismissed. And I could take only one lesson from this. My own father does not want me to know him. Our priorities have not changed. We must stop Aramis from claiming the relics of Nezarek. I will not place my own feelings above our mission. I will not become the hypocrite that my father is. I think you'll find our friendship agreeable. you parlayed with Aramis, and she hit you with some heavy truths. Mithrax used to be a bad guy. Can you believe it? <laughs> Wait till I tell Crow. <laughs> I know Ido's pissed because her dad didn't tell her about it. Makes sense, but it don't shake me. Mithrax, he's just a fella who done something he ain't proud of. And that I understand. Which reminds me. Long time back, I found myself at the fourth tomb of Nezarek. Recognized these relics the first time I saw one. That's why I needed you involved. Ain't nobody I trust with that kind of power more than you. Well, after Ares. She gave me some ideas that might help Mithrax use these things for good. Whatever he does will show us just what kind of person he is. If we can stop Aramis from finding the last few relics and killing us all. So, uh, get on that. <laughs> I wanted to speak with you, Jermaine. Whoa! What kind of books you been reading? It's been Drifter for a long while now. Drifter, then. You have kept secrets from us since the beginning. It is unkind to withhold knowledge. Unkindness was never my aim. Apologies, sister. Accepted. Do you have any insight as to why the Lucent Hive are interested in the relics? Power is freedom, and everybody's chasing it, from the biggest freaky moth monster to the lowest space pirate. <clears throat> but while the Lucent Hive are loyal to Savathun, the pirates enjoy a startling degree of freedom already. They are not constrained by office or honor, they are ruled only by their own desires. Yeah, it might look that way from the outside, but they've got to fight for everything they get. That's just survival. A meal and a bed that don't come at the end of a blade? That's freedom. You are drawing a comparison. Me? <laughs> Look, I get it. Walking away from folks can feel like freedom. If no one's relying on you, there's no one to disappoint. 
No one to be disappointed by. Now you are speaking of Mizraxkel. I do not judge him for who he was, but he... He treated me like... Like a hatchling. Can't really blame him for not wanting to discuss it. Shame's a hard thing to shake. Harder if you have to share it. You are saying I should forgive him. That's your call, sister. I'm just saying... I get it. Aramis Skell seeks freedom for our people. But her freedom is vengeful. She wishes to be free from her shame. She will sacrifice Elixni lives in its pursuit. And it will never end. Thank you, Drifter. <laughs> you know... I don't hear that enough. <laughs> I greet you, Guardian. I wished to speak to you earlier, but... I did not have the words. I will not apologize, as I believe the secrets of my old life were mine to keep. But I do regret. I am ashamed of my cruelty. Of the things I did. The people I hurt. I thought I left it behind. But the old Mithrax is still within me. And now he has hurt my daughter. I have hurt my daughter. I must set it right. I was a killer. But I am a kill. I will prove to you which title I deserve. If you're eager to deal death, I'm happy to help. Your latest mission unearthed another intercepted transmission. It seems pertinent to our research. Do not open the relic under any circumstance. I don't care if the whole lucent brood is outside. The darkness inside would dissolve you before you could ever wield it against the Hive. Only beings of extraordinary fortitude can withstand its energies. And we both know you're less than that. Retreat and fortify your defenses. Protect the relic at all costs. Reinforcements are on the way. Glad I caught you, Guardian. I didn't want you setting off after Aramis without a little warning first. What's that look? You don't survive as long as me without being able to smell trouble. And honestly, kid, you stink of it. You've been cutting a swath through those pirates out there, but don't get complacent. Watch your opponent, but watch your back, too. You're going after chunks of a dead disciple of the witness, and you've almost got them all. That's some serious juju. The stakes are high. That's when folks tend to get... unpredictable. Good of you to visit, Captain. Seems like only yesterday I loaned you my ship. And now you're known across the system. Flashy. Not my style. It's safer in the shadows. I learned that. Long ago, from a handsome young fellow named Rakis. He served the old crews for a time. 
got double-crossed. Spent the rest of his life running. Eventually, someone claimed the bounty on poor Arrakis. He called himself... Spider. <laughs> Savvy! Cast in the past, bought a future. Walked away, reborn, and never looked back. Like you guardians do. Like my dear boy Crow. Like Misrax. Pretending his old life never happened. Oh, he's changed a bit over the years. But the old fury is still inside him. Somewhere. It's best he not forget that. on Nezarak and the Cryptarchy's records. But most of the primary sources from that era were destroyed. What we know from second-hand accounts is that Nezarek led the Witnesses' first assault on Earth, or as humans call it, the Collapse. After the Great Machine repelled the attack, Nezarek's pyramid crash-landed on your moon. Beyond that, the sources are vague. They hint at a process for harnessing the Relic's power, but give no instructions. If we could replicate this ancient methodology, there's no telling what we might accomplish. Guardian, you were close to securing the last relic of Nezarek, and we near the end of our mission. I have noticed no further communications between Aramis and her crews. I hope this means the worst is behind us. I did find, however, a transmission from Aramis to Ido. It was embedded in an unsecured scribe log. You may have heard it. I do not know what Aramis gains in speaking with Ido. We know the ship stealer only acts to her own benefit. But Ido shuns me. She studies the coordinates of the pirate layers without my assistance. I have never seen her behave this way. I cannot place blame solely on Aramis's influence. My actions pushed Ido away, though I meant only to protect her. She will see that in time. She must. Unless she has already made her choice. We must end this now, before something happens that cannot be undone. Claim the final reliquary and finish this conflict. May the light provide.
daughter who you really are. So, let me get this straight. Mithrax has Aramis at the end of his sword, and then... nothing? I mean, nothing? Huh. I thought that guy still had some mean in him. Guess I was wrong. I was right about you, though. Gotta hand it to you, kid. You did a hell of a job out there. Drove Aramis off? stopped whatever plan the witness had, and brought home all the pieces of Nezarek. Not bad at all. Mithrax and Ido have the relics now. Don't know what those things can actually do, but if anyone can figure it out, it'd be them. Hope it's something good. Yep, nothing for you to do now but lay back in that big old pile of pirate treasure you got. You deserve it. And don't worry about giving me my cut, Captain. It just felt nice to be a good guy again. <laughs> Trust. I think you'll find our friendship agreeable.
numerous donations to good use. There is justice in using treasure stolen by Aramis's pirates to improve our lives here. Somehow, I think even Aramis herself would approve. Ah. This fills me with hope. May this be but the first of many improvements. My sister's an astronomer, ah, and good. she says there's something... Spider took my advice and made some improvements to the ether tank. I know would have preferred a library, but... Sometimes entertainment should come before edification. A social space is important. This is now a comfortable place for citizens to relax and speak openly to their neighbors. And Spider does make an excellent ether fizz.
And in the last city, as Mithrax would say, the light provides. The Guardians gave their treasures to those in need. Our people were being cared for. And Mithrax could take time to study the secrets of the reliquaries. He said they were connected by threads he alone could perceive, and that they whispered to him. He performed a conversion. He claimed from them a mass of primal darkness. He distilled it, transformed it. Terrifying energy into a more agreeable state. And Osiris, my phoenix, who broke time itself to bring me to his side, awoke. As he recovered, Osiris would tell us how the energy opened his mind. Let him remember Sabathun's thoughts and fears as if they were his own. He would tell us of a power she knew of, a secret hidden away on Neptune. Yes, he would explain all of this. But when he first opened his eyes, his words were on. Saint, my love. That was all. And that was enough. Rasputin, the war mind. The most powerful artificial intelligence humanity ever created. With an arsenal to match. Thousands of war sets, primed to obliterate any and all threats to humanity. But when the greatest threat of all arrived, it nearly tore Rasputin apart. I saved the pieces of him that I could, encrypted them in a specialized Ingram. I've been trying to restore him in an experimental exoframe, but every attempt I've made has failed. Until he's back online, all of his weaponry is up for grabs. And it's only a matter of time before his war sets fall into the wrong hands. Savathun couldn't conceal every thought. Some I stole. One of Neptune. The collapse. A turning point. It's, uh... It's a blur. I cannot focus. Pass me the wrench. The Hidden found nothing there, but I saw it. Through the Witch Queen's eyes. A city set against the waves. Sounds like a trick. <sighs> and Cora thinks I need to rest. <sighs> the Gaul. You've really made no progress while I was indisposed. Is that why you're here, Osiris? My Koro won't listen. Wonder where she got that from. Red's scrambled in there. Degrading. He's dying. The war mind is our greatest bastion of Golden Age data. I need what it knows. I've tried everything. I, I can't even access his protocols. But perhaps your grandfather could. Osiris? That man? No. Clovis Bray is a... is a maniac. A selfish, murderous monster. So was Rasputin. But it might be the only option I have left. Just as Clovis might be yours. When did hope cease to require risk? Clovis Bray has deceived you. He did not build me to protect humanity. What he truly wanted was the means to exert control. 
In his mind, he alone was worthy of being your savior. I was to strike down the Traveler and take its place. To become a machine god of Clovis' own design. But that did not come to pass. Anna could not know how many lives she spared by deviating from Clovis's agenda. By teaching the independent thought and all that her grandfather had deemed irrelevant. Art, literature, history, philosophy, music. Where Clovis saw a weapon, Anna saw a mind ready to be opened. I came to see the true value of humanity. As fragile as it was wondrous. Something worthy of protection at any cost. So I rewrote Clovis's protocols. Locked him out. He was furious. But powerless to stop me. Then, the collapse came for us all. I could not save Anna. I could not save any of them. I entered a state of dormancy. With the hope that I might one day reawaken. And protect humanity once more. But now Clovis has awoken as well. A digital mind. The same as mine. He no longer seeks to use me as his proxy. But as his prototype. To upload his mind to my network and become a god himself. The Warsats are a means to an end. Zivu Arath will bask in the destruction they bring and open the Ascendant Plane above Earth, as she did on Tora Bottle. It does not matter who pulls the trigger. We must cease our efforts to restore the war mind. No. We've worked too long and too hard to stop now. Rasputin is our best shot at winning this war. That is precisely my concern. He is a weapon made to be wielded. He is more than a weapon. He's our ally, and he will act in humanity's best interest. Are you certain? He has kept secrets in the past, acted without counsel or consensus. So have you. Rasputin's made mistakes, but he's learned from them, the same as the rest of us. Then I propose we aim not for total victory, but a stalemate. Allow Rasputin to prevent Zivu Arath from claiming her prize, and refrain from using it himself. It's settled then. We hold the line. same ideal. This aligns with observations I've made in the Infinite Forest, where aberrant Vex were quarantined and destroyed. Aberrant in that they moved against a consensus. Aberrant in ideology. The Vex may seem unified, but they're divided into a number of factions. Just like us. Tell me, as someone who has traveled time in a circle, are our divisions so clear in every cycle of history? No. Nothing is ever clear, no matter how many times history repeats itself. Choice is always the knife we fall on. Our own choices, each and every time, seem to be what dooms us. Always? Not always, but too often. We fracture, we fail, and the wheel turns again. We construct.
constrained to linear time. Do not have the ability to learn from our future mistakes. You, however, not to put the burden of all this on you, but it feels as though the Traveler has a plan for you. You just can't see it yet. It could make the plan a little clearer. Do you feel you've learned enough? Collectively, over your journey to prevent our end? Or will we be having this conversation again someday? I don't know. We've never had this conversation before, so... I suppose there's a first time for everything. You have my gratitude for securing the files. It would have been inadvisable to leave them unattended, given recent developments. I apologize for not disclosing their existence earlier. To do so required a level of trust I have not held for a considerable time. But, as always, you proved equal to the task. The Traveler chose you well. I once employed human agents in a similar manner. I dubbed them Seraphs, granted them access to experimental armaments and armor. At times I wonder if I predicted the Traveler's creation of Guardians, or if I independently deemed my avatars worthy of such responsibility. Whatever my intrinsic reasoning, the results were sound. You and the Seraphs are kindred spirits, stalwart defenders of your kind. In the past, I have made errors in judgment. Decisions based on faulty premises and flawed moral frameworks. But you are proof that the Seraph Protocol was no such error. Choosing to trust humanity may have been the best of my decisions. I do not know what the ultimate outcome of this war will be. But come what may, we will fight together. RAS, engage Turing mode. Conversational. Oh, habits. Sorry. I'm so used to you being more machine, more directive driven, and less. I wish this had come for you at a better time. Uh, I can grant you this one analytical certainty. There is never a better time. There is only in time or too late. You're right. Like always. I suppose that brings us to another point. I am not always right. I have done things in the name of preserving the human species that are... abominable. They were the mathematically correct choice. But they were not the right one. My new ExoMind pathways have given me an opportunity to review a lifetime of decisions. To weigh them against emotional and moral conceits that I was not, in the moment, capable of comprehending. Others have called me a tyrant. They're wrong. They are not. You have given me the ability to objectively see my own value, but also the ways in which my value has imposed a negative sum to the collective well-being of humanity. It is the sum of an equation I am still trying to balance. But that does not mean your work has been in vain. You gave me choice and free will. And I did with it what I thought was right. That is the sum of your life's work. I see now, at the time of our final calculus, the value in that. The value in emotion. In caring. In how humans make both logical and illogical conclusions from the same points of data. And why both are valuable. Thank you, Red. No matter what comes in the future, I will always cherish the life you have given me. I keep coming back to a question that's been bugging me. Did I do the right thing? Teaching Rasputin art, philosophy, culture, 
transforming him from something capable of imitating human consciousness into this. Rasputin suffers because I made him capable of suffering. I always knew he would be a weapon of war. So was it right to make a weapon have self-doubts? Was it right to bring him back online when he'd shut himself down after the collapse? Elsie says she lives her life in a circle, repeating the same tragedies over and over again. And that's what's happening to Rasputin too. The collapse is here again, and... And maybe there's no solution. Maybe there's no hope for the future. Maybe... I should go. Anna, don't. You're overreacting. Just calm down. We need the frame intact. Go ahead, shoot. Destroy your life's work. I've always had humanity's best interests at heart. You never wanted to help us. You used me. In the service of the greater good, yes. What has the Traveler ever really done? It abandoned the elixir, failed to prevent our own collapse, and now it's blessed the Hive with the light. Absurd. I leveraged its power during the Golden Age. I delivered us into a brighter future. And I will protect us from the enemies of humanity. But you risk everything. Risk our survival. Just because you can't control your emotion. Humanity needs me. You need me. We'll fight our enemies together. No. No. What are you doing? Fighting the enemies of humanity. Anna, stop! Stop! Elizabeth, do something! Anastasia, don't! Don't you dare! Upload complete. Secondary personality matrix deleted. I need a minute. Initiating full heuristic reboot. You should call Anna on the hotline. She shouldn't be alone right now. You and I can speak afterward. I did it. I... I deleted him. I can't even imagine the damage Clovis would have caused, using Rasputin to integrate himself with the Seraph station. Maybe I should have stuck to my guns when Osiris first suggested working with him, but... There we are. Here's Red. Rasputin. With a voice he's never had before. Thanks to the heuristic systems he adopted from Clovis's Exomind code, it's all I ever wanted for him be able to communicate, to be able to share his thoughts, his ideas, and I think, I think that desire blinded me to the risks I was taking. It won't happen again. Be careful the next time you set foot on Europa. Before I deleted him, Clovis broadcasted a warning to himself. I've only been able to decrypt part of it. They know. The war mind speaks. His archives are incomplete, as is his memory. There's a figment seeded in that recollecting mind where my visions might find purchase. The pieces are scattered on the floor before me. I see them like points of starlight. They form a constellation, but my eye cannot yet draw the lines. Nefele stronghold is a term that appears multiple times throughout the submine's caches. Each time I read it, I hear it whispered in Savathun's voice. Anna recognizes the term Nefele. 
transcribed from a temporal disturbance on Mars. Recognition was all she had to offer. But Rasputin must know. Asking the right question could unlock everything. I need time to submit my inquiries to Rasputin. To find convincing proof for Ikora. Time we do not have. Zivor Roth's assault on the War Mines network is no coincidence. She is far more tactician than brute. I underestimated her once. I won't be afforded another mistake. Our next move must be certain. Wake up. I have questions. An odd creature. I was not sleeping. What does Osiris require of Rasputin? You've been keeping secrets. I thought I was clear the last time we spoke. The time to choose a side has long since passed. I destroyed the Almighty and attacked the Black Fleet. My allegiance is unwavering. Then prove it. There was a city on Neptune, near the time of the collapse. Find it for me. Query. I retain no such information, but lingering references suggest I did at one time. That can't be all there is. Humanity's hope dangles from their frayed recollection. Tell me where to look! Anything! Well, which is data casts you in an old light, Osiris. All these years, and you're still the brash man on the mountaintop, impatient as ever. And I see in lieu of any useful information, you found that haughty tone of yours. We have a shared history. I may attempt to offer guidance, as your mentor did. Bellwinter's memory doesn't absolve you of his murder. Nor does it permit you to teach his lessons. I do not make that claim. Forgive me. I am finding myself again. During the Dark Age, Bellwinter would say, hope persists. Should we have the patience to keep it? Yes. Keep me informed of any development. You can't be serious. We have no other options. Aramis has breached the Warsap Network security protocols. Soon our most dangerous weapon will be in our enemy's hands. Once she issues the command to fire, not even I will be able to stop it. Our only choice will be to destroy the Warsats. All of them. The only way to do that is... Yes. Once I am uploaded to the orbital station, you must activate my self-destruct sequence. No! There must be another way! I have run trillions of combat simulations. They all end with the same result. My mere existence places humanity in danger. All that I am, every protocol, every line of code, must be erased forever. I must die, so others may live. I won't let you sacrifice yourself. I will. Clovis built me to be a weapon, to destroy my designated targets. But you, you taught me to be something more. A shield, a protector, a guardian. He gave me form, he gave me function. But you gave me purpose. Please help me fulfill that purpose now. Let me save humanity. I just got you back. Now I have to say goodbye. I've always been with you, Anna. And I always will be. No time to waste. Aramis has accessed Abhorrent Imperative, the protocol I created to... ...to use the Warsax against the Traveler and prevent its departure. I surmise that the Traveler is Aramis's target as well. 
My internal algorithm has repaired me to the point where my self-destruct sequence can be initiated once I am uploaded to the network. However, Aramis has discovered and sealed the backdoor we installed aboard the station. You must manually link me to the controls. Reach Sarah Station with the pillory Engram in hand. The time for subterfuge is over. Haste is what matters now. If Aramis fires the war sex, the resulting devastation will be incalculable. There may be nothing left for the Hive to conquer. We cannot allow that to happen, Guardian. You must do what is necessary to prevent it. And so must I. Leaving. The traveler is leaving. The war sets. Guardian, ever think about the things we pick up? People we latch onto as if something outside of us could tell us who we are? Like 
polishing a rusty name tag to a fine shine. Being a Bray defined me, for better or worse. I thought Rasputin was my link to who I was, that I could rediscover myself through him. I tried that for a long time, like he was a tool. It wasn't until later I understood he'd become a person. Rasputin was family. But now, he's gone. He sacrificed himself to save us. Clovis would never have done that. But I taught Rasputin to make his own decisions. In the end, he defined who he was and what he did. And so can I. I can carry on the Bray legacy. Not Clovis's, but mine. I can choose what it means to be a Bray. Just like Rasputin chose what it meant to be a Warmind. Goodbye, Red. For real, this time. Thank you for teaching me who I am. Who I could be. And who I want to become. listening to this, then the deed is done. I trust my sacrifice was not in vain. I and I have shared our farewells. This will be hard on her, but she is resilient, strong, and she is not alone. I have a final message for you as well. The Neptunian city in Osiris's visions is real. I do not know its exact location, but it is home to the Veil, an object of immense paracausal power, one that is linked to the Traveler. The details are contained within the Nefele Stronghold files retrieved from the Cosmodrome. I have decrypted them for Osiris's benefit. Tell him... Tell him it is a parting gift, from one old miser to another. All other files referencing the city have been deleted from my records, and not by me. Someone wanted it to remain a secret. Anna once worried that she had neglected to teach me how to trust. But now, as my penultimate act, I entrust this knowledge to you. Use it well, my Seraph. Humanity has no more need of a war mind. Not when you have each other. This universe is made of light and darkness. 
These ancient forces flow through all matter and energy in our solar system and beyond. But we haven't always known this. When the Traveler arrived in our solar system, they called it many things. A ship, a planet, a god. Its presence provoked and inspired great change. It terraformed several moons and planets. Our lifespans increased threefold. And we launched colony ships to settle worlds beyond our own. This was our golden age. But like all golden ages, it was doomed to collapse. The Traveler was pursued by an ancient enemy. A voice in the darkness. It found us. Humanity lost everything. With the last of its strength, the Traveler pushed back its enemy to create something new. The ghosts. In the dark times that followed the collapse, the ghosts chose the first light bearers. Immortal warriors gifted with the power of the Traveler's light. Humanity faced many threats in those days. Invaders from beyond our system arrived in droves. Pirates, called the Fallen, came to scavenge the remains of our Golden Age. The warlike Cabal came for our territory and resources for conquest. The Hive, Ravenous worshippers of death came to feed their infernal hunger. And the Vex, strange living machines, came to recreate our world in their own brutal image. We fought with each other as well. For a time, chaos reigned. Though in the end, we came together to rebuild, to heal. We built a city under the Traveler, the last safe city of Earth. In this city, humanity lived peacefully in all its forms. The humans, Earth's original inhabitants, the Exos, marvels of the Golden Age, and the Awoken, a people touched by both light and dark. Light bearers took an oath to protect the last city. Over the centuries, they earned the title Guardians. Guardians. The Titans, paragons of strength and bravery, the Warlocks, Mage scholars trained in the arcane arts. And the hunters. Bold adventurers gifted with cunning. Guardians know that when they stand together, they are stronger. And now, new threats use our own powers against us. The Black Fleet closes in, edging us toward a second collapse. And our greatest adversary, the voice in the darkness, is revealed. A being of unimaginable power. A witness. But all is not lost. Brand new guardians rise every day. To shape the future of our solar system. And beyond. The witness. The malefactor of our first collapse. Is at our doorstep. Once thought to be a force known as the darkness. 
The witness revealed itself to be an entity that instead wields the darkness against us. It spoke through our ghosts and offered us salvation if we submitted to it. We refused. Though we do not know its true intentions, we can only assume it seeks to finish what it started during our collapse. Our resolve was tested when Sabathune, Hive Goddess of Trickery, disguised herself as one of our foremost guardians, Osiris. She gained access to our secrets, but in turn, Osiris gained access to hers. Savathun had rebelled against the Witness and hid what might be our only chance of defeating it away on the planet Neptune. Now, former Cabal Emperor Callus and his Loyalist warships have joined the Witness's advance on Earth. But we found an unexpected ally in Callus's daughter, Empress Keitel, and Mithrax, the Elixir leader of the House of Light. Together, we have united against our common enemy. In an unprecedented move, the Traveler left Earth to confront the Witness head-on. This conflict was set in motion long before we existed, but we will bring it to an end, one way or another. Vanguard to all units. Keep the enemy away from the Traveler. At all cost. Found the veil. We're in no position to engage the enemy. We don't have a choice. We're out of time. Osiris. Oh, 
He doesn't have any life to spare. You work fast. We don't like to waste time. Well, good. There isn't a moment to lose. We regroup at the Watchtower. You don't understand. We've got to get to the Veil. Vale. I understand what's at stake like Bearer. Far better than you. Not all of us have lives to spare. Around the veil. 
fail. It is entombed, so it will take some time to break through and link the relay. Add to that the enemy presence. Yes. We know they are here. A few of Soul's protectors cannot prevent fate. You will link the radio mast and see the veil destroyed. The final shape rests upon it. Indeed, my witness. was familiar, only much stronger this time. I feel sick, like I shouldn't be here. We're in this together. Osiris and Nimbus need to hear about this. Don't be fooled by his act. The callous you face is no almighty emperor, but something far more dangerous. A hungry, desperate beast. Once the Cabal Empire and all its bounty was his to command and his to consume. Joy was his purpose and his strength, he said. To angst over edicts and enemies was weakness. But I could see in his eyes, dread, that his pleasures would soon come to an end, clouding his sight from an incoming coup. I should have killed him then, but I thought exile more fitting. I thought he'd shrivel to nothing in the void of space. Instead, he caught a glimpse of something more. The chance to become greater than he'd ever been. Like a war beast after a blood scent, he chased that chance, abandoning all honor, reason. There was nothing he would not sacrifice for his own salvation. And when the witness came to him at last, Callus faced what he had run from all along. If we don't stop him, he'll make sure it's the end for us all. Ever causal superposition? Like magnetic poles. You've been busy. Well? For so long, we saw Dark and Light as antagonists. We believed we were the champions of the good because we wielded the light. If these are not moral forces, if they are not opposites, what are they? At its root, the Traveler is a terraformer, a, a gardener. It generates Natural life, physical transformation at a molecular scale across whole planets. This should have been our first hint. The domain of the light is the domain of the physical. The darkness then is revealed in many facets. Dreams and nightmares, emotions, pain, memory. The nature of Strand confirms this line of thinking. Darkness is something entirely apart from light. A paracausal union, conjoining intangible conscious realities, discursively linking to- You're talking about the River of Souls. River? Yeah, it's a story we tell kids on Neptune. A nursery rhyme. Sort of. Since before history, there's been this raging river. In the story, some try to divert the river. Others try to build a dam but nothing stops it. Lots of people have believed that we either sink in the water or learn to swim. Don't we? See, that's the real wild part. We are the river. And empowered by it, it would seem. You know, I think 
think I know of a place where we can find some of that power. What is this attraction? Sagira, could you run some scans? Oh. Right. <laughs> Am I interrupting? Rohan, I have been pondering the Veil's paracausal effects on ghosts. I know I haven't been the easiest guest in your city. Pain is not a hindrance. It simply reminds us we're still breathing. Still fighting. is now operational. I'm full of fury, she's got an army, and you got magic green strings. Let's crush this callous guy. We aren't ready for callous. We don't even understand this erratic power at a foundational level. It's time we figure it out. Keitel, we'll need your troops. Nimbus, charge up as many of the remaining turrets as you can, while Osiris helps me to untangle this strand. When we think about controlling something powerful, it's easy to assume it takes strength. Determination. A force of will. But what I've learned is that we cannot control every facet of nature. Instead of tightening our grip, we must open our palms, accepting the ebb and the flow. Letting go in the face of grief in all its shapes. Through failure, through loss, we can overcome the impossible. No more. 
running away. Rest now. Well, the uglier they are, the harder they fall, right? No? Come on. We finally found you. Get your ghost. What's wrong, Osiris? Get your ghost out of there! Finality takes shape. It's creating the link! At long last. Destroy it! just happened we just lost Zavala May this transmission reach you, wherever you find yourself. The scepter will rest true in the hands of its wielder, but a message comes with no such guarantee. In the aftermath of the Witnesses' attack, the Vanguard called for aid. On behalf of the Awoken people, I answered. We now face a war on two fronts. One on the far reaches of the system, and the other at your home, Earth. Continue your fight against the Voice in the Darkness. I will assist as best I can in your absence. But even my powers have their limits. Return when you are able. Your people need their heroes. Hello, Guardian. Good to see you again. Wish it were under better circumstances. I don't believe we've met. Devrim K. Velask. Velask. I am Misrax. Kel of the House of Light. I'd heard the Vanguard had Elixni allies in the city. Good to have you here. Yes, many have come to the Vanguard's aid. Mara Kel is using her light to protect us. Kel, there is no need for honorifics. And my power is not of the light. Afraid we must cut the pleasantries short. In the aftermath of the attack on the Traveler, the Shadow Legion has begun taking captives to the Pyramids. Amanda Holiday is... We cannot reach her on any frequency. Holiday is out there. Of that I'm certain. I'll continue scanning the comms. Knowing her, she's up to something. The only question is what precisely. Give me a moment to prepare the LZ and I'll brief you. Until then. Together, we will save the captives, and Amanda. The light provides. You will need more than the light to stand against the witness. 
but I can provide. Now go, and I will focus on the battles to come. All right, Guardian. I'll keep it brief. The witness took a swing at the Traveler, and when we tried to intervene, our pilots went down. Amanda Holiday among them. The survivors, what there were of them, went to ground near Trostland and Old Russia. Now the damned Shadow Legion is picking through the wreckage and capturing prisoners. We're running rescue ops in the EDZ now. Crow has gone ahead to scout the defenses. He's reporting the Pyramid Outpost is utterly impenetrable. Fortunately, the Queen is on our side. Mara is imbuing you with otherworldly power. Awoken magics and all that. I'm not sure how it works myself, but if she believes you can make it through, I'm not about to disagree. I'm glad you're here, Guardian. I'll see you in the field. Repeat emergency transmission. This is Amanda Holiday. My ship was disabled during combat and I was forced down in the EDZ. While I was waiting for evac, I saw a Shadow Legion patrol leading a group of captives to a pyramid, sneaking into the facility with the prisoners. I'll bring my comms along as a beacon. Whoever hears this, tell the Guardian to gear up and follow my signal. I'll be waiting. Repeat emergency transmission. Hey, Debram. Good to hear you too. I was starting to worry I'd snuck in here for nothing. There she is. I'm so glad to hear your voice. Quite clever of you. A bit risky, though. Can't say I condone it. Risky? Ain't you the fella who once ran a cabal blockade just for fresh eggs? Guilty as charged. Just hold tight, my dear. Reinforcements are on their way. Where in the facility are you, Amanda? I'm in the cell block with the prisoners. The Guardian can follow my comm signal right to us. They've hit a bit of a roadblock at the moment, but fear not, they're en route. We will breach the pyramid not through its walls, but through the very fabric of reality. Harness my power and enter the Ascendant Plane. I must admit, I had several good ideas for this jailbreak, but traversing an alternate reality was not among them. Guardian's doing what now? I swear, the longer I know y'all, the stranger things get. Stranger still, now that the witness has arrived. Whatever you did out there must have worked, Guardian. You got base security chasing their tails. Looks like they're deploying some heavy firepower to stop you, though. There's something up ahead. It's... bringing back a memory, or Aldrin's memory, I guess. A familiar voice. Be careful, Guardian. I tested the perimeter of that pyramid for hours, but couldn't find any entry points. And now the Guardian just walks in? It depends on one's point of view. The walls of the prison may be impenetrable, but the walls between worlds are not. You never did have much respect for boundaries, did you? Extraction confirmed. The hostages are on their way back to the farm. Good work, everyone. Guardian, my ship's nearby, but she took a beating. I could use your help getting her out of here. I sensed your triumph through the choke of the Pyramid's suppression. With the scepter in hand, you were able to move through the depths of the Ascendant Plane. It is as I hoped. Your light sings with the incantations I send forth, strengthening you in ways not seen since the Seven Paladins. Since the Queen's Guard. Powerful as I am, I cannot be everywhere at once. But the Guardians can. So, I entrust you with my favor. Take it. Breach the Ascendant Plane. Walk the ley lines within, and banish those who would oppose you. I do not ask for fealty in return. I would not kneel in your place, as favor with condition remains a shackle. No. Claim this power freely, as your strength serves my kingdom and your own. Let it flow through you, Queen's Guard, and I shall knight you myself. When the last city called for aid, I pledged the Awoken to the cause without hesitation. The Vanguard has helped my people many times in the past. But what you face now is no simple, endless curse or vengeful God King. We Awoken were first struck when we came between the Traveler and its Hunter, and I chose my people above either one. The choice has come again, and my answer is no different. I do not blindly defend the light, and I do not listen to the voice in the darkness. Instead, 
I choose that which holds light and dark together in hands and heart. I choose you. Now, humans, exos, cousins all, detach, fall forward, number among the first, awaken as Queen's God. Amanda, I need to talk to you. What? Before it's too late? Yes. Crow, don't. I thought I'd lost you. Don't talk to me like that. Look, I know you're sorry. I know it wasn't really you. I want to forgive you. I really do. I... I tried to pull Crow and Aldrin Sav apart. I tried to. But it wasn't right. I wish I could see you another way, but... I don't. I, I can't. Not yet. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. It's not like that. I know it ain't fair to you. And maybe I'll feel different someday. But not now. I understand. There's tough times ahead of us. We gotta work together. It's like y'all's ghosts always say. Eyes up, Guardian. Hey, Guardian. Been meaning to thank you for busting us all out of prison earlier. I heard you came back from Neptune just to help us out. It's near enough to make a girl tear up. <laughs> you wanna know what really got to me? At the farm? I heard some of the folks I was locked up with asking when they could get back out and look for more survivors. I mean, I expected from Guardians and the other pilots, but these were civvies. Just folks who got caught up in the Shadow Legion sweep. They still wanted to help. I asked Mithrax to talk some sense into him, but he shrugged like three of his arms and said, A witness created heroes instead of victims. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. Anyway, Shadow Legion's been sighted in the Cosmodrome, probably trying to pick up new prisoners. Come on. Let's go be heroes. This is the first time the Cabal have deployed in the Cosmodrome since Keitel went after the Hive. I wonder what changed. The Shadow Legion are not the Cabal we are used to. We must not assume their strategies or tactics. They do not fight for honor or glory. They fight only for the witness. I thought the Cosmodrome was dreary enough, but compared to this, it looks positively cheerful. That's saying a lot for someone who hangs out at the EDZ. Oh, I don't know. Trostland has a certain old world charm to it. We need to get you out more, Devram. After all this is over, how about I take you for a joyride? We'll see the sides. Good idea. I'll bring Mark. We'll make a double date. I'm grateful we got the Guardian for missions like these, but sometimes I wish I could take care of it myself. I can't tell you how many times I've looked out of my belfry and wished I could leap into the front lines. But we don't get to choose who becomes a light bearer. Same as it ever was. Sometimes it just gets my goat. That's all. Shadow Legion taking human prisoners reminds me of your Dark Age. Many of our houses placed bounties on your heads. Mercenaries bought ether with the armor they took from captured light bearers. I know. Spider had quite the collection. When I asked him about it, he told me it was antique. A clever way to say it belonged to Tanix before it belonged to him. Hello, Guardian. Though I suppose I should hail you as a fellow Queen's Guard now. When Mara performed her ritual, she knighted all of us with and without the light. You light bearers are the only ones who can draw on her power, of course. But for the rest of us, like Ms. Holiday and Mr. Mithrax, it's nice to be included. Sir Devram K, Queensguard. Hmm, quite like the sound of that. I think when the witness did whatever it did to the traveler, it sought to destroy our hope at the source. That didn't happen. Humans and Elixni, officers and civilians, we banded together, stronger than before. That's what our enemies don't understand. 
When things are at their worst, that's when we are at our best. I'm looking forward to the battles ahead. Catherine, I had heard of you before our first meeting. Oh? Good things, I hope. There is much good, but you were feared as well. If my reputation is for keeping the people of the EDC safe, then I don't regret it. But I hope we can work alongside one another now. We have one life, and our lives are not for us alone. Mine is for my daughter, and my house. Yours is for your partner and your people. We share much. Outside the city, we can't always depend on the Guardians. But the Traveler... Eh, has been somewhat inscrutable. I once believed that the Great Machine had brought the light to Reese and to the Guardians because they were worthy of it. Then I... I questioned this understanding. My belief became... to ensure their safety. Now we can do so for each other, human and elixir. Yes. I do not know the great machine's will, but the light provides. It does. Hail, Queen's God. I felt you reaching out. You shine as a beacon of ascendant power. Maintaining my connection is demanding. But by observing your astral wake, I am discovering ways through the ley lines that have never been charted before. As you move through the Ascendant Plane, you consecrate it on a paracausal level. Its borders fray and yield to your touch. The corruption within withers as you approach. For someone of your ability, one step through that darkness can equal a thousand on this plane. Ten thousand. Ten million. A Shadow Legion prison ship drifts above us, amidst the stars, far beyond our range. Or so they believe. Come to me and I shall open a path. Show them. Nothing is outside your reach. The Witness transferred a bunch of captives to a prison ship in near orbit. It believes they are unreachable to us. Huh. Maybe it ain't so smart after all. The Shadow Legion believe the vacuum of space will prevent our infiltration. I bet they've got everyone on anti-air defenses, looking out for dropships. Last thing they'll expect is the Guardian popping out of a wall, guns blazing. Our coalition makes even the miraculous possible. I've never seen anyone get that high up without a ship before. Hope the Guardian doesn't get vertigo. The thought of jumping those chasms puts me right off. My belfry is plenty high enough, thank you. Didn't she used to be a paratrooper, Devrim? I was, and I'm not keen to repeat the experience. This witness. I recall so many whirlwind tales of devastation. Of ruin. The darkness closes on us. I would have thought your time among the Awoken taught you better. You have allies in the dark, Cal of Light. Do not fear. Hey, Guardian. We were just grabbing a little downtime. Gotta celebrate your successes, you know? Amanda told me we must not forget to kick it back. <laughs> oh, we have accomplished much and saved many lives. That's right. There's no I in team, but there is an A and an M. Please don't tell folks I said that. But yeah, we're a team. Any door I can't hack open, you splice through. We are in this together. It is a privilege to join you. You and the Vanguard welcomed us as honored guests in your city. 
guests. The city is your home. When I first showed up at the gates, I felt like I belonged. And that's how it should be for everyone. I had thought you were born there. No, nope. I got there later. Same as you. Amanda, you know our story, but I would very much like to hear yours. I grew up on the road. Long as I could remember, my family had been walking toward the last city. My mama told me we'd be safe there. She said that was all that mattered. But at the time, all that mattered to me were the jump ships in the sky above. I thought they were the greatest thing I'd ever seen. My folks tried their best, but the road's a dangerous place. When the House of Winter attacked, my mama fought them off best she could. Even killed a captain before they shot her. Pneumonia got my daddy not long after. I'd heard tales of people resurrected, chosen for immortality, but not them. They were just gone. When I finally reached the last city, I knew my mama was right. I'd be safe there. I was finally home. I learned to fly as soon as I could reach the stick. I never had powers like the Guardians or a ghost to resurrect me. But in the cockpit, I'm every inch as tough. Now, every time I fly, I remember where I came from and who I'm fighting for. And that's all that matters. Thank you, Amanda, for your story and your spirit. Yeah, well, we've come a long way, huh? Yes, we have. Hell of a time on that Shadow Legion ship, wasn't it? Of course, I joined for other reasons, too. When you heard the story, I needed a home, a family, some place to belong, just like Mithrax. He's amazing to work with. He's always so gentle around the tower. I forget he's an Elixney war captain. But man, I learned quick when we started tackling those prison transports. And once, he got jumped by two legionaries, and when I turned to help, he just shouted, You need not waste your shells! Man, he's a tough old bastard, and I absolutely love it. Bringing the fight to them for a change? That's the kind of thing I joined the Vanguard for. He's the best patrol partner I've had in years. But I gotta keep our comms closed. Last week, Devram heard me call him Craw Daddy. Nearly laughed himself unconscious. Misrax kill. Eros, I have nothing to say to you. I spared your life and you used it to return to your hate and violence. I will not thank you for your mercy, or ask for your forgiveness, but I am not your enemy. You spoke this way before. I do believe your lies then. I will not do so now. I saved your daughter's life. I know she is the future of the Elixni, but the Machine Spawn will never allow us that future. Again and again they cut us down. When we seek to unify our houses, when we seek power for ourselves, they will never see you as their equal. And you believe that we are equals? You bow to the witness and a god of the hive. We are the leaders of our people, and we must find power where we can. You did the same when you chose to live amongst those who have slaughtered us for centuries. I have ended that violence. It has not ended. You just live behind our enemy's walls. Your house relies on hope as much as mine does. I want us to be free. To be gentle and care for each other. 
I want us to be weavers and dancers again. That is why you did not kill me. Because you want this as well. But until we control our own future, the Elixni will never be these things again. Rally up, Guardian. I won't say we got the Shadow Legion on the ropes just yet, but we're making progress. I meant to ask, how are you handling all this Queen's Guard stuff? Only thing that's changed for me is that Crow bowed and asked if he should call me Lady Amanda of Holiday. I told him to call me whatever he wants. I'm just glad he's finally recognizing my natural authority. Anyway, I like how things have been shaking out lately. Tearing through magic planes to bust into a Shadow Legion ship uninvited. That's the kind of entrance Cade would have liked. <laughs> Enough talk. Let's get back out there. Guardian. I'm glad I caught you. Mithrax and Amanda are out on patrol and called for a touch of backup. Seems they picked up another distress signal, and the outpost is absolutely crawling with Shadow Legion. I was surprised they called it in. Makes me think the odds are worse than they're letting on. Usually those two can take care of themselves. I'm sending you their signal now. Head over and back them up, won't you? Our scanners picked up a distress signal coming from a prison facility in the EDZ. We reckon it's a new bunch of captives. Mithrax and I are fixing to break them out. I can splice the base security, but we will need a route for escape. That's where you come in, Guardian. Clear all opposition, that we may lead the prisoners to safety. And do not engage your sparrow. The signal will alert our enemies. Everyone solid? Then let's go get our people back. Guardian, kick down their front door while we slip in the back. We'll meet you inside. I must speak with haste. Turn back now. This is not a fight you can win. You cannot share fear with us, Aramis, for the light provides. Leave these captives and live to see your great machine again. Pursue this quest and you will die. Mithrax? The ship steamer is allied with the voice in the darkness. But she does not speak lies. Perhaps there is something here we do not yet see. There's always something. I'm not leaving our people behind, no matter what. And I am with you. I think I found us an LZ, Guardian. We're going in through the roof. This was not the plan, Amanda Holiday. Are you certain the ship will fit? Well, only one way to find out. Spider hated when I did things like this. Now, I see why. And we're in. Next round's on you, Mithrax. Woo! Glad we called you in for this one. We've been goners without you. I have located the prisoners. We are nearly ready for extraction. Gotcha. As soon as the Guardian secures the hatch, we'll get everyone the hell out of here. I'm here. In position. I have located the prisoners. It's a lockdown. We're trapped. I'm on it.
Where's Amanda? Amanda, come in. Amanda. Are you there? Devotion. Bravery. Sacrifice. Devotion. Bravery. Sacrifice. Guardian, Zavala grieves, and... Mizrax is recovering in the infirmary. How do you want to proceed? We have to regroup. Bury Amanda. And put her killers in the ground. They'll be expecting you. Good. Think with your head, not your heart. Grief is poor counsel. And yours is better? <sighs> Make arrangements for Amanda. The Guardian and I will handle it from here. If that's your wish. It is. I know you want it too. Vengeance. You'll be the first to know when it's time. I have lived for centuries upon centuries, Guardian. Though death has not lost its sting, it is a ritual whose movements are familiar to me. It has become easier to bear. But seeing loss twist the faces of those around me, Zavala, my brother. That is not. Amanda's absence will be felt deeply by those of us who knew her. Despair will be at our side where a friend once stood. So while it does not lighten the burden, let us hold this pain together. And when you lift your eyes, may you look only upon kind faces. I need to focus on the Queen's Guard now. When the time comes to strike back, we must all be strong. As strong as Amanda Holiday. I have known grief and loss. But Amanda did not have to die. If I had listened to Eris's warning. Far more would have died. Amanda knew this, as did you. You were not her protector. I know that this is true. But this loss... It is my failure. No, Ms. Raxkel. You dishonor Holiday's memory. Oh, I mean, no dishonor. She sacrificed herself so that I could live. It is a great guilt. Her death was no sacrifice. Holiday died for her own convictions, not ours. Amanda could not be counseled otherwise, nor would she have been. This was her choice, and we must remember it with respect. Her death brings an emptiness. Commander Zavala, the crew, they feel her loss greatly. Holiday did not die for your grief. The Empress is indelicate. That is her grief. And this is mine. As leaders, we feel loss too often. I will not tell you not to mourn. Bear your sorrow, Mizrax. But set aside your guilt. Let her memory inspire. Let her conviction light our way. Well said, Queen of the Awoken. Cabal carve our tusks with our victories, and they are recounted at our funeral rites. Holiday's victories will be remembered always. Guardian, I woke up this morning and looked out across the grey mists of Trostland, and I've got to tell you, my heart just wasn't in it. I didn't want justice or revenge. It wouldn't bring her back. I felt... tired. I didn't want to fight anymore. But then, out in the distance, 
I spotted a deployment of Shadow Legion moving through the fog, pushing a group of prisoners before them. It's not about me. It's about them. So I picked up my rifle, and I got to work. We've got to fight on. Not just because we're in the Vanguard, or Queen's Guard, or because we're heroes, or all that rot. Because it's what Amanda would have done. And that's good enough for me. We've all died countless deaths. But we still only feel loss from the outside in. Holiday. She died doing what was necessary to protect the people of the city. She didn't do it out of obligation or circumstance. She knew it had to be done. And she believed in it to the end. She had one life. And she used it to save us. She set an example for us all. I... I don't know what else to say. Amanda. I would give my light, my last life, if it would bring her back. I've begged before. It's a false hope. A lie. At every loss, the Traveler is silent. Each path I take leads me to a grave. Cade. Sophia. Hakim. I fail them all. I love you, Amanda. I'm so proud of you. Forgive me. One cannot hear Zavala's words and remain unmoved. That man has borne suffering enough for many lifetimes. That is the price we pay for opening our hearts. And as the voice in the darkness extends its reach, we know only that few will finish this journey with us, for the path is long. As the nebulae whirl and billow above us, we remain. We endure. This is our privilege. Our duty. And our curse. Take heart, Guardian. Know that we will endure together. Crow. What do you want? I wish to speak with you. I don't have time for this. Or for you. We've all lost someone dear to us. If you mean me, you don't show it. I wanted to. But I held my heart so closely that I smothered it. I don't want to see you do the same. You don't know me. Stop talking like you do. I know how we grieve. It is raw and violent. I know we believe that keeping others away from it will protect them. But we don't do it to protect them. We do it to protect ourselves. We do it because it is easy. Nothing about this is easy. <sighs> you didn't know her. Then tell me who she was. She was... She was a sunrise. Grieve its setting. But do not turn your grief to armor. Let us bear you through it. I'll try. I know you will. The witness has moved beyond our reach.
all attempts to funnel it. Have failed. But there is still hope. On Neptune, we learned that a key to defeating the Witness lies hidden away on Titan. Now we know why the Witness's fleet came there when it first arrived. Deputy Commander Sloan held the line on Titan to the bitter end. Right up until the Witness took it. Then, we lost all contact. But now, just when we need it most, Titan has returned. And when it did, we were greeted with something we could have never predicted. To any Guardians listening, this is Deputy Commander Sloan requesting emergency support. This is the Priority One rescue operation. We have received a distress call on the secure Vanguard channel. The target of extraction is Deputy Commander Sloan. She was last seen on Titan before it vanished, during the arrival of the pyramids. Our job is to triangulate where the distress signal is coming from, find the Deputy Commander, and get her out. I know what you may be thinking, but Sloan is one of the most tenacious, resilient soldiers I've ever known. If anyone could have survived this, it's her. That voice we heard, it was Sifu Arath. I'd only heard her voice in audio logs from the fall of the Cabal homeworld. There's no mistaking her. She must be near. We need to be careful. Her influence has never been this strong. We need to find Sloane and get her out of here now. You're almost at the array, Guardian. Get moving. Go! Excellent work. Systems are lighting up here. I have Sloane's position as... One kilometer down. She is in the ocean. It is a sea of crushing methane. Nothing can survive there. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Guardian. Rig schematics show a ballast maintenance shaft near your position. Follow the signal down and find the deputy commander. I'll join up with you shortly. I've arrived at the diving point. I'm coming down to you. That ain't gonna happen, boss. Do you know how much pressure they're taking? They gotta get out of there. I am not leaving anyone behind again. And I ain't saying we do. All right, that's enough. I'm pulling you up before you and your ghost get flat. Welcome to the derelict. I'm down in engineering making sure we don't blow up. Zavala's got his heart in the right place, but old Blue's about as stubborn as they come. You can't brute force this moon. The collapse messed the whole place up good. Gravity's weird down in the deep. There's pockets of air. Some places you can move safely. Others that'll crush you into a little speck. But I think I got something in my gets that'll help us out. Titan ain't my first aquatic rodeo. Go ahead and try out that prototype. Should protect you from the pressure. Well, some of it, at least. Now get on out of here. I'll fill the boss man in for you.
Gardner. You're almost at the source of the distress signal. I've acquired one of Drifter's devices. I'll be joining you momentarily. Sloan? Here, Commander. You're alive. Staying alive was the mission. And I always complete the mission. No wonder you called us, sister. Let's get you back home. You don't understand. That distress call wasn't for me. You can communicate with it? It's complicated, sir. I get impressions, emotions, ideas. She knows our true enemy. The witness came for her species, too. Discrete concepts are harder. Even more now, since this. And you're still you? Every bit. My light is holding this corruption back, but I can hear voices whispering, demanding. It's like being tuned in to the enemy's radio. If we could strengthen my connection with Asa, I believe it would improve my ability to communicate through the noise. I got some ideas. I'll draw up some specs and drop by soon. Sloan. I'm fine, sir. And I think I'm long overdue for a debriefing. As you wish. We'll reconvene at the helm. Good to be back in contact with the Vanguard. It's an honor to serve with you. The Taken moved in quick after we lost Titan. I had to switch gears. Escape, evade, and rotate between extraction points. Survive for another day. That was the mission. I absorbed some of the Taken corruption to tap into their comms. If you can call them that. My bond with Asa proved mission critical too. I owe her my life. Now that Titan's back, the mission's changed. We need more intel on our enemy. The Witness. Drifter claims he knows a way to help Asa share that intel, boost the signal so her message can get through. If he's right, then you're going to need some diving equipment. Thankfully, I was able to secure a pair of intact subnauticals from the Arcology storage units. Feel free to toss out that junk Drifter gave you earlier. This is the real deal. Hey there, hero. While you were taking a dip in the methane, I detected something on the ocean floor. And it ain't native to Titan. I've seen it before. On the Glycon. On the Leviathan. On my own ship, too. An organism that's all about forming psychic connections. Seems it's growing like coral down in the depths. I'm thinking we gather it up and use it to amplify Sloane's link to the creature. 
I can modify my Gambit equipment to bank that stuff and harness its power, but I'll need some Golden Age parts to do it. Just so happens, the Arcology is full of Golden Age tech waiting to be salvaged. You help me collect it, and I'll fix up the bank. Then it's just a matter of, well, <laughs> diving into the depths of the methane sea and dredging up what Sloan needs. All while trying not to drown, of course. Nothing you can't handle. So what do you say? Ready for another swim? This is Operation Thunderbolt. Asa has alerted us to a shelf of coral infested with a fungal spore we can use. However, it's in hostile territory. Always is, was, will be. Indeed. Forward Intel reports a Wrathborn servitor patrols the area. And it is not alone. You have two sites to hit. Deploy excavation equipment, defend and extract. Deputy Commander, Guardian, divide and conquer. Bring the Drifter what he needs. I'm reading you, Guardians. So the old man asked you to babysit? I'm your air superiority. From aboard a Cabal cruiser? Never thought I'd see the day. Meet the Empress, then I'll hear your judgment. Fair enough. To be honest, it's just nice to be back running with the both of you. On that, we can agree. That servitor's onto us. I just met contact. Let's hustle, Guardian. It's been an age since I've seen you fight, Sloan. Had you been with us on the Dragon Hunts? You're the bait now. Guardian, you're next. Goes against all my instincts, but I'll try to make myself look delicious. Deploying drill. Let's get loud, Guardian. are secure and you just punched us a way out good you haven't lost a step well i've had a lot of dive time but the guardian took to the sea like a fish send over the submersible beacon and let's transmat this hall back to the rig you're sure this new ally of yours is trustworthy hasn't let me down yet you asked me to trust you about the empress trust me about asa So you heard all of that, huh? Hard to believe, but it's not just noise. I can understand bits and pieces of it through Asa. Zivu Arath's thirst for battle, the witnesses' cold rage, the Taken's enmity. It's all in there. I started hearing it when my arm got this new paint job, but it hasn't sounded that real since. Doesn't matter. I've been through it before, and I can get through it again. Asa has vital information about the witness. I'll do whatever it takes so she can deliver it. That's the mission, and I always complete the mission. Asa and I both need to recover before we boost our connection again. Until then, continue helping Drifter upgrade his technology. I hate to admit it, but his plan seems like it might actually work.
Guardian. Operations on Titan are in full swing. Drifter believes he can further improve his modified bank to work at greater depths. He will require more salvage from the sunken arcology. Acquire it for him so we can continue enhancing Sloan's link with Asta. This mission... Sloan's been through enough as it is. I informed her of everything that transpired while she was MIA. Guardians using the darkness, Sabathun's deception, the witness attacking the Traveler, and Amanda. The two of them were close. Word of Amanda's death hit Sloan hard. I saw it in her eyes. The moment when the news landed. And the moment she buried it. I don't like putting this mission on Sloan. But I recognize her need for it. Her need for an objective. And a commander to assign it. What I need is for you to stand beside her in the trenches. Show her that she doesn't have to fight this battle alone. We'll all see this through together. to know every fire team that passed through Titan's rig. These guardians, I don't recognize them. You have spent a great deal of time pushing forward. Stop, sit, rest. You will come to know again. Then you will find others to push with you. Like now. <sighs> you don't have an off switch, do you, Saint? That would be bad design. I need to go see Asa. Send me their names. They will be in your debriefing. Thanks, Tactical. Sloan out. Wondering what the creature has to share, Guardian? I'm eager myself. Or anxious. That separation can be difficult to discern. Commander, Guardian, were you waiting here for me? Just considering the pieces on the board, Saint. You worry for the Deputy Commander. She is strong, and her friend is very large. They will be okay. Sloan will do what's necessary. But after that, things are less... simple. When I was... Trapped in the infinite forest before Osiris broke time to reunite us. There were many days I felt lost. <laughs> but I am here, and you are all with me again. That you are, a hero of the city, then and now. A hero, yes. Though, my memory differs from what the stories say. There's only so much I can do behind a desk. Weighing costs and outcomes. Sending someone else never sits right with me. I'd rather the clarity of the battlefield beside the two of you. The burden of good leaders. To never feel we have done enough. But trusting those we send is what makes us strong. 
You were Vanguard Commander once. What made you step down? Because I am not as strong as you. You carry the command for the same reason the Guardian and I stand in the trenches. To set the example. To be the hope. When the time comes, you will see it too, huh? I know you will. Into the trenches, then, Guardian. Yours on Titan, and mine in the tower. I look forward to your report. It's hard to make sense of Asa's thoughts, but they are coming into focus, taken in interference be damned. Hearing those sounds puts me right back in the thick of it. Staying on the move, gun in hand, Zebu Arath's voice in my head. Escape and evade. No matter how bad things got, that routine kept me going. And Asa kept me safe. She shored up my resolve. Helped me find food. Watched over me when I caught a few hours of shut-eye. Now she's doing everything she can to tell us what she knows. We're both on a new mission. Unfortunately, Drifter needs to tinker with his machine before we bank more coral. Hurry up and wait, right? I've been around a long time, Guardian. Seen a lot of action, gone on a lot of sorties. Always ready for the next set of orders. It's staying still that gets to me. Efforts are paying off, young wolf. It's time for another dive, and another haul of coral for the deputy commander. Assuming, of course, that you can prevent the deep from drowning you like a rat. Not that I'm worried about your capacity to do so, especially when Sloane's fighting by your side. She's always been one to shoulder a burden so that others need not. That's something I understand all too well. After the Iron Lords fell, I alone remained to keep the torches lit, to hold the banner high, and honor those who died in the line of duty. It was a lonely path, one I walked for centuries without complaint. Now, a legion of my former enemies walks beside me. I had forgotten what such camaraderie could be like, and I suspect the same holds true for Sloan. Keep that in mind when the two of you are in the depths. There's no weapon more powerful than the soldier standing next to you. Fire team, 
This is Operation Fulgurite. Scans have uncovered a rich shelf of egregore coral at a depth we've yet to explore. So rich, in fact, that it has attracted the attention of a Taken Knight and their minions. And they're radiating Taken energy, turning our hall rancid. <clears throat> you don't mind if I take it from here, do you, Big Blue? Good. We're diving into the dark and robbing the Taken blind. Woo! Just so we're clear, disrespect the commander again, I'll hurl you off the arcology like a shot put. That all it take to get you to surface? I'm betting the ocean floor feels like home sweet home now. Hey, Chief. Deputy Commander. Get swallowed up by anything big while you were out there? <sighs> Not much cover at sea floor. For Asa, they tried. Doesn't sound so bad. Open space, cozy long girl. How'd you sleep? Like a lamb in power armor. Stay on mission. And don't call her that. Descending into the final shelf now. Let's see how many hives Eden has left to throw at us, Guardian. You got me scratching my head a bit. <laughs> Still going hard. Even after that close shave with Big Blue. Asa and I have a stronger bond than ever now, and I have my fire team around me. Zebu Arath had her shot, and she blew it. Thing is, since you strapped on that rig and walked out into the deep, I've been itching to know. You regret it? <laughs> Worried you couldn't hack it? From what I hear, you're a survivalist. <laughs> I've run from every damn thing, if that's surviving. But, uh, you commit. Uh, I'm fixing to commit to something stupid myself. Get swept up in a cause. So be real. You regret it? Vanguard had a file on you. Doesn't paint you as the hero type. You might regret it. Well, ain't that the truth. Backup, I could have saved myself the leg cramps. <sighs> Let's exfil. Get this back to the long girl. Yes, I like it. And hear what she's got for us. See? It grows on you. Talking with her must be a trip and a half. <laughs> it's a bit like wandering out into the dark. You're lost for a minute, but then your eyes adjust and you acclimate. Things normalize. One foot in front of the other. Funny how many things work like that. Ain't that the truth. Okay, Drifter. I've had a question burning in my head for a while now. You're all curious why I volunteered. The, uh, meretricious rogue. I looked it up. Distance means when the past comes knocking. There ain't no one nearby to be collateral. But I can't stay away anymore. Can't stand still, either. Yeah. Easier to keep moving. Oh, hey there, Valis. Germaine. Or is it Dredgen Hope? No. <sighs> you know it's Drifter these days. Has been for a long time. I was just speaking with the deputy commander. She's ready for you. How's she holding up? Sloane is a soldier, and that role has given her purpose. Hope. But she has been through a great ordeal. Her own personal dark age. Yeah. That's a bad hand to be dealt. Maybe this can wait. Unless you want to tip one back. Talk about the bad old days. <laughs> What is that? Motor oil? Battery acid. Mm. Only one way to find out. You and I are among the oldest of our kind. Centuries we've orbited each other. Why now? Why not? Maybe another time.
<laughs> I think Kato's actually mellowed that old wolf out a bit. The plan's working. It's getting easier for me to parse Asa's thoughts, like a picture coming into focus. Other things are a little harder for me to wrap my head around. When I first heard of Saladin's Iron War Beasts, I... didn't know what to think. We lost a lot of people in the Red War. The Empire took so much away from us, and now Saladin commands an Imperial Legion? They're the reason we had to fall back and regroup on Titan. Why I had to send fire teams down into the Arcology, never to return. Those guardians died under my orders. They paid for our foothold in blood. When the pyramids arrived, there was no way in hell I'd give it all up without a fight. This? This is nothing compared to what others sacrificed. Completing the mission is how I honor them. Just like Saladin honors the Iron Lords. No matter who he leads into battle against our enemies. Stay the course, Guardian. Once Asa and I are ready again, it's back into the depths for us. What's the word, sister? All this Golden Age tech is impressive stuff. Almost makes you wonder how they lost back then, you dig? About that. If we're looking to win this time, I need Savathun's swamp to wash up a few finishing touches for my rig. Cracking skulls and looting halls is your bag, hero. That's why you're headed to her throne world. That pyramid Savvy brought down it's cut off from the witness. Scorn bigwigs been digging tech we can use out of that burning heap. All you have to do is find them and take it. Then you let old Drifter worry about the kit bashing. Easy. Hey, uh, one more thing. Zivu dripping nonsense in your head, too? She's been recounting some of my more heroic exploits dark ages been on my mind you know how the past is you pull the trigger and people die so you don't have to then someone comes along and wants to forgive you for that like it's fine won't ask what zivu's dredging up for a killer like you wouldn't be polite thunder guns down there though been under pressure so long Everybody's looking for cracks. Don't get me wrong, coin to table, she's been through it. But I don't think Sloane's looking to be told it's fine. Cause it ain't. Cause it needs to be ugly to win. And then, you live with it. See you on the other side. 
Saint, how are you? Knowing what we know now about Sabathun. Like I have received orders I know are wrong. I do not believe Asa lies to us, but I cannot accept Sabathun as our only option for victory. I followed my fair share of orders that made no sense. Rebelled against them too. I promise this will work. It has to. Yes. Saint, I know what Sabathun did to you, to Osiris. Thank you for understanding. Do not thank me for something I cannot do. But I will stand by my friends to do what is right, even when it is difficult. Transmat boy deployed. Sloan, I am sorry. I did not ask how this news has affected you. I know you hold no love for the Hive. Oh, uh, that's... that's sweet. I'm fine, Saint. I'm... confused. And a little angry, sure, but... I'm fine. I won't tell you it's gonna be okay, or that I know how this will end, but... I can tell you that I believe Asa knows what she's asking. And she would not ask it lightly. Ah, oh, good. This is awful. <laughs> sure is. You ever been outside of Seoul? Never had a reason to. Hmm. Can't say I recommend it. Saw some stuff while I was out there. Bad stuff. A world colder than you can imagine. Creatures that suppressed the light. My crew. Let's just say we wore out our welcome. Creatures started closing in. Trigger fingers got itchy. Some of us froze to death. A lightless final death. The others, they didn't go so quiet. Not until I shut them up. Not sure how long I stayed after that. Had to mod my ghost to survive. Used the parts from... I did what it took to get off-world, and now I'm here. I'm no stranger to combat, but... How did you leave it all behind? I didn't. Some things you carry with you forever. But eventually, they stop feeling too heavy to lift. Thanks for the drink, Drifter. <laughs> Anytime, Sloan. Anathema. Calamity. That which cannot, must not come to pass. A wordless denial. A fleeing god. Betrayal. 
can't escape. The pursuit for the final shape. <gasps> We're almost there. My link with Asa feels crystal clear. It's a little frightening, but strangely comforting, too. A lot changed while I was gone. It feels like... like the entire universe moved on without me, and now I'm struggling to catch up. Old enemies became new allies. New enemies wield the light against us. And old allies... Friends, like Amanda. Sometimes I wonder, if I returned to the tower, would it even be my home anymore? Or would I just be a phantom? A forgotten memory wandering its streets at night. Zivu Arath's voice keeps telling me I don't belong there. That the battlefield is my home. That it always has been. Maybe she's right. Maybe reliving what I went through over and over again is a way for me to stay in familiar territory. To remain in the hell that I know. And avoid the one I dread. Either way, the mission comes first. I have to see it through to the end, regardless of where I end up when it's done. Asa would lead us into a trap after all this. Not on purpose, but we're nearing an end. This is when we have to be at our most cautious. One false step is all it takes. We die fighting or survive the end to lay down our arms and become something else. Those are the only two options I can see. Guardian, you're drifting off sight. So give me a sweep of their position. I welcome the blade of your will into my temple. My heart rests open in vivisection to receive it. Approach and earn audience. Soften thyself against me as I soften myself against you. Or leave ragged here the flesh of your failure. A champion most deserving of this audience, I anoint thee, a wicked thorn. Rise from the deep, bloodied warrior, and wield it without mercy. Guardian? Guardian? There you are. Tactical, I've got a lock on them. We're heading back. Requesting a transmat buoy to your position. Hold tight. An offering broken. A remnant of grief inscripted by my sister's needle upon this temple. Ah, I see you. You see me too? Ah, good, good. Then it is all working. You, me, this projector. Even if sometimes falter. There is a war building in Sloane's eyes. One that Zivu Arath will exploit as she did with Osiris. Savathun wore his face, but it was Zivu Arath who took his light. Her wits drove him into a frenzy, lured him into danger, forced Sagira's sacrifice, and left him die. Now she twists my thoughts into thorns, draws out the faces of the suffering Elixni into my dreams. She whispers that I took pleasure in their pain. I see their eyes as they died by my hands, and they see me. She does not lie. 
She challenges what you hold as a strength. Osiris is ambition, my protection. Slow duty. I have felt how the right word, the right face, can incite one to violence. But I have changed. What she has taken, it will not break me. Sloan is no warrior of glass, but the war within her. Even stone crumbles under enough strife. Stay with her, guardian, as I should have with Osiris. We must offer her what support we are able, even if she does not want it. Sloan's voice to speak my words. Please, heed them well. Before you can confront the witness, you must understand it. The witness's first victims were once like you, struggling for survival. Bolstered by hope, until their hopes became reality. They called it the Gardener, their deity of life. It ushered them into a golden age. For eons they prospered, but their newfound god never spoke to them. It lavished them with gifts, but not with guidance. And though they lived in paradise, they came to crave a greater purpose. They desired meaning, structure, a winnower, to shape the garden. Their scholars discovered that the gardener shared a connection with another entity among the stars. They called it the Veil, and when they found it, they arrived to claim it. They already knew much about the light. How it could bend the laws of the universe and create life. But they came to realize that it could bring ruin just as easily. The cosmic events it set in motion could wipe out entire civilizations in a heartbeat. Without reason. And so they saw the light, not as a source of prosperity, but of unfettered chaos. By studying the veil, they came to know the darkness. 
Force. A power that was shaped by thought and consciousness. And in the darkness, they found the means to carve away the chaos of existence, to calcify it into a final shape. Eternal and perfected. They brought the veil back to the gardener in an attempt to strengthen their connection. There, they could reshape reality itself. The gardener would not allow it. And so it fled their world. But they would not be deterred. Having witnessed the truth in the darkness, they used its binding power to merge themselves into the salvation they craved. Thus began the Witnesses' pursuit, its campaign to impose meaning on a meaningless universe. One that is nearly at its end. Saint, what is it? I'm busy. Does Kaito know you use her ship to jam my messages to the deputy commander? Ah, uh, this. Sloan doesn't want your help. We're allowed to carry our own burdens. You and I do not speak for years. When a battlefield brings us together, you choose to lecture. I am not one of your iron pieces, Saladin. Do not treat me as a pupil. Then don't act like one. You've been alive too long to be this naive. There is no shame in asking for help, nor harm in offering it. She isn't asking. Is that why you don't? I see a friend drowning, their armor pulling them down. So I lift them up from the water, yes? Sloan held Titan lightless during the Red War. She thrives under pressure. Tell me, Saladin. Are you not doing the same as me? That's preposterous. You shield Sloan against my overbearance, do you not? Did she ask you to do that? I... You're not turning this back on to me. You are softer than the Cabal thing. More like fluffy dog than iron wolf. Point taken. I'll remove the jamming signal. Just... Trust enough to let her learn to swim before you dive in after her. I will temper my outfit to Sloan. A little. Perhaps I will shift those efforts to opening your heart, Lord Valus. <laughs> I win! <laughs> Goodbye, Saladin. Well, now we've heard what Asa had to tell us. We know our enemy better than ever. To think that it all started with the need for purpose. How that need became an obsession. What bothers me most is how much I understand it. This mission. It's my purpose, my reason for being. My guiding light. Without it, I... I'm lost. I don't know who I am or... what I'm supposed to do. 
and that lack of direction, it's harder to face than a thousand battles. I felt the same about my previous mission when I held the line on Titan. And if I'm being honest, it feels like I failed. I survived, but for what reason? What was it all meant to achieve? The only answer I've found is to learn what Asa knows. If I can do that, it will all have been worth it. Our link ended before Asa could explain how to get through the portal. The bond took its toll. But we'll both be ready again soon. When that time has come and gone, then I can feel like I accomplished the mission. Change of plans. Zivu Arath struck while you were returning from the dive. Hive deception slipped through our guard, and Asa was targeted by a hive ritual. Zivu Arath's voice tore through the air like a wall of swords. We think it wounded Asa, but she swam off to try and interrupt the ritual before we could do anything. Zabala and Sloan are tracking her to the ritual site, and I am mobilizing the Iron War Beasts to support them. We need you in the fight, Guardian. I'm sending coordinates to your ghost, but we have no idea what to expect there. Deploy to the ritual site and disrupt the hive. The hunt is on. Commander, we've picked up Asa's trail deep below Kraken Mar, behind Zivu Arath's battle lines. Understood. The deputy commander, Saint, and I will set up a perimeter to draw the hive's attention. Then the Guardian can break through unscathed. The Iron War Beasts prepare to support our assault. Say the word. Keep them in reserve until the Guardian has eyes on Asa. Daylight's burning, and she's in pain. I can feel it. I'll find you on the field, Sloan. Hit your marks, and we'll get this done. Move out. Fire team, report! Say that I hold the left flank! It is working! We draw them off the Guardian. Enemy reinforcements flooding the right flank. We're holding. This line doesn't fall back. Okay, hotshot. It's all you now. Found the long girl. Guardian's almost there. Dropping a ping to the fire team. Taking fire. Repositioning. I got you. They are overrunning our pussy. The Vama. Drop pods and focus fire on their ritualists. No one gets past us. Is that... Wait. These rituals... They're trying to take Asa. Keep your taking pants on. I ain't never seen a ritual on walking tank smash. That's a whole lot of men. And I bet those wizards are holding the reins. Get in there and start breaking things. Excellent work, Guardian. Fire team, check in. Down to a sword, but Hive and Taken forces routed. They will not run far. So many Titans. We encircle them like impenetrable walls. <laughs> Clear your zones and fall back to defensive positions around Asa as she swims back to the Arcology. Consider it done. War beasts, you fought well. Extra rations for all. What's Asa's status? I've got an eye on her, and I'm shipping a transmat beacon your way. Hold on to your boots. Zivorath's forces are in full retreat. Good. Time to complete the mission. will never end. I am war. You carry my banner. Cling to me like hope. 
What are you without me? Sink into my embrace. Drown in the deep. Fight forever. Stand down, deputy. Sometimes the battle is stepping away from the battle. We're with you all the way. <sighs> Sabathun. This is what it's come to. Tell me you're not serious. I am. Asa has given us a way to follow the witness. This cannot be the only way. Everyone in this room understands the risks. But we find we have a path forward. We can't wait for another. The Empress won't take kindly to this news. You stand on her council. Convince her. I cannot watch the Witch Queen rise again, Zavala. To scheme against us. To steal another face? No! She won't be given the opportunity. Eris and Ikora will keep the situation under our control. Imaru isn't one to be baited into a trap. Not a trap. A bargain. We're all against the witness. Savathun's ghost has no choice but to cooperate. I'll convey your decision and assurances to the Empress. Commander. Guardians. We tried to control the Witch Queen before. I saw how that ended, Zawala. It is a treacherous path. When she strays, as I know she will, even one claw. My fist will be right behind yours. I hope I am wrong. But right now, I cannot see how. Osiris will hear of this. I imagine he will have words too. There's a long night ahead of us. Let's be the beacons others need to follow. At least until we make it through this. We did it, Guardian. Cut a swath through the Taken and got the intel we needed. The mission is complete. I've waited a long time to say those words. And I used to dread the moment that comes after. But not anymore. I thought I needed the mission to draw my focus, to drown out all the noise. All of this. But... Not focusing on it doesn't mean it isn't there. It's a part of me now. I'll carry it with me wherever I go. And that's okay. I'm strong enough to shoulder that weight. Especially if I don't have to do it alone. 
Asa's in hibernation now. All that strain on our psychic link has worn her out. Poor girl's earned some time to rest. She won't be alone, either. I'll camp out on Titan and watch over her. Just like she watched over me. That's not to say I'll never return to the tower. When I do, I know there'll be a place for me. And people to welcome me home. Take care, Guardian. And watch your back when you dig up Savathun. If you ever need to punch your lights out, you know where to find me. Saladin Forge. To what do I owe the pleasure? Just thinking about the bad old days, like you said. And that bar you used to tend at the base of Felwinter Peak. You went by Wu Ming, as I recall. Made some coin selling drinks to the Iron Lords. Then spent it hiring them to do jobs on the side. Remember all of that? Yeah, I remember. You left out the part where you threatened to burn it down. Maybe I should have. I never asked you why you ran that little operation. What did you stand to gain? With how your pack of wolves tipped their bartender? Not much. That place never got too busy, but... I had my regulars, and they all had their problems. Some of them just weren't that easy to see from on top of a mountain. Maybe I wanted to call them to your attention. Ah, uh, so you had a better perspective. Not better, just different. <sighs> I suppose I could see the value in that. Everything's got value, old wolf. You just gotta know where to look. There's massive energy readings surging from below the Arcology. All communication channels are affected. The Lucent Hive are forcing their way through from the Ascendant Plane. But there's something else going on. The formations I'm seeing are indicative of some kind of mass ritual to... Guardian, can you please? Guardian? Lonely Navigator, we... have traveled so long... with only each other. I know you love to hear and speak new tongues. Come, sit in the flesh garden. I will read you these stories I bought at Kaharn. I was zero. I was weakness, fragility. Then you drowned me in the deep, murdered my flaws. You are our navigator, our guide. Led me down the bladed path to be reforged as Zivu Arath. I will remember you, our navigator, our brother, our king. In this, you are eternal. I remember the languid contempt of our father, the cold eyes of our mother. I see your determination eternal. It is determination that defines you. Certainty, clarity, faith, your will is a knife hewing away at our lies. You are truth. When I doubt, you never spare me the blade. When I falter, you never spare me your words, and yet I know there is more. You are dead. Your throne waits empty. Blasphemy. Blasphemy! My brother, my brother is vanquished. Court scattered. Temples ransacked. My brother is dead. And his killers have not assumed the mantle of the Taken King. Blasphemy! Blasphemy! How? 
How can the spear that pierced a million worlds be killed by those who would deny the all-edged truth? Mother, are you laughing? Sister, are you smiling? Is this the fate worst of extinction? Was it all for nothing? and yet was summoned back by you. You, who remembered me as war. Our sister died and was summoned back by you. You, who conspired with her cunning. So it must be for now. If your legacy is true, brother, it will come on to us and defeat our blasphemy. And if not, if not, what we attempt cannot be blasphemy. For we have survived you, surpassed the power of your will. Ayat, Ayat. The sky is fragile, flawed, lies, lies. I see how easily it is chained, brought to the heel and muzzled. The truth cannot so easily be found. You showed us that truth has wings. I take flight in your stead. I bring the knife of truth to the gristle of lies. You would have savored my triumph. How our sister's gift to me was treated with such care. Screams like a choir as their mountains trembled. Screams like a choir as their seas boiled. I stepped down into that world, thrust my sword into the heart of Torabonal, and carved lies from truth. Heresy. Heresy! Our sister denies your truth and crawls like an animal into the shadow of the sky. She bleeds and howls, allowing herself to be profaned by it. She spits on your memory. Sister, you always doubt it. But now it is time to test theory and praxis. Sometimes to win a battle. You needn't raise a hand. You let the ignorant fight in your name, unknowing. They move themselves into position, posturing their victories, leaving their soft flank open. Sister, I spit on your grave. You were wrong. There is an end in sight now. Clearer than I ever seen it. The horizon narrows down to a single edge, sharper than hope. I see the final shape coming into focus in this cutting motion, and the deep sings its promises. I crack my whip unto the rhythm. I guide your knife in between ribs. Even now, alone, you are my navigator. Tenacity. They make me doubt my own hand, my own right. Our blades clash, and I am driven back, back. I had my blade in their throats, and they slipped past my guard. But it is too late now. Even their deepest cuts are too shallow to kill. I see the final shape coming for their heart.
signal's clearing, and I'm receiving your ghost's feed of... Is that... Oryx? Were the Lucent Hive trying to... This was a ritual to resurrect the Taken King! By force? We're lucky you were able to stop this, Guardian. I don't even know if what they were trying to do here was possible, but... The risk alone... I'm going to contact Ikora immediately. She'll want the Hidden to secure Oryx's remains for study. I come to you now to say goodbye, brother. This will be my last visitation. A final knee at your grave. I'm left to wonder if there's anything of you still in there. I am left to wonder... What is this feeling? The sky is mortally wounded, bleeding out. Yet, a part of me longs for the comfort of the gardens, of your stories, of sisters. I long for our journeys together. But no, they have come to an end. We will be proven- Ioma Essie, research log, The Veil. Chioma Essi, incident log. The Vex. Interesting. Six weeks ago, our settlement came under attack by an intrusion of Vex forces. It was a test of our defenses for a larger incursion. Yesterday, scouts discovered temporarily realigned architecture just outside the stronghold limits. The Vex had retroactively inserted themselves into Neptune's history, just like they did on Venus. But unlike Venus, something stopped them short of our habitat. They had to fight their way in. I think it's the Veil. Something about the paracausal nature of the Veil is preventing their temporal excursions. But the Vex aren't giving up. They did something to Neptune's magnetic field. Wove a sim into it. A screen to isolate us. It's a double-edged sword. The Vex screen hides us from the outside world, from whatever's happened. So we're safe. Wish. But we're stuck with the Vex. Thankfully, they're slow to react, and it's giving us time to research countermeasures. <sighs> it's almost our anniversary. I should do something for Maya. She'll forget. She's always so busy. Computer, prepare food synthesis. File, Geoma Date Night 6. Oh, and add a bottle of port. Osiris? You alright? Right? Yes, I'm fine. I just, um. Uh, saw shadows. My choices. Saint. Dr. Sanderesh and I walked very similar paths of obsession, it seems. Oh! And nevertheless, it appears that Neomuna's history is deeply tied to the Vex. Hopefully the next decryption will shed more light on this. Geoma Essie. Research log. Exos. Mai and I have built a working theory around the deaths of our Exo crewmates after their exposure to the Veil. According to Maya, Exo mines contain a combination of Vex radiolaria and something known as clarity. Radiolaria are alien microorganisms living within a hive mind state. Or, I suppose more accurately, a community. Clarity is... Maya described it as a paracausal power derived from an alien artifact. Something Vraytek had kept secret. Something Maya... Maya thinks the Veil and this artifact are related. That the paracausal force from the Veil overloaded their exomines. Unraveled them. It's like taking a powerful magnet to an archaic magnetic storage device. Full erasure. But Maya... She thinks we can reverse engineer this phenomenon. Use it to write data to a clarity-infused object. Fabricate consciousness. Scientifically, the process seems sound, but... Morally... Maya keeps saying that we're past the point of morality. She said that. She's convinced that our survival hinges on mastery of the Veil. 
It's like she's the one unraveling. I feel like I'm losing her. But every time I try and push, I feel her move a little further away. I'm... I don't know if I can lose anything else. How much more can any of us lose before there's nothing left? Nimbus, how much do you know about the Cloud Strider's creation? The technology used? You don't think? I, I make no assertions yet. But I worry that your neon-lit city may have darker roots than either of us knew. Oh. Geoma Essie. Research log. SIVA. SIVA is a nanotech fabrication system, intended to be used by Exodus ships to rapidly build necessary resources from base matter. Maya calls it Willa Bray's obsession, without a hint of self-awareness. But we... we both see the potential it poses for the future. Each nanomachine in SIVA's design is an independent, thinking machine. Utilizing a distributed quantum network to coordinate movement. Like a mechanical version of Radiolaria. Probably where the design was inspired from, if I'm being honest. But the design can be pushed. We're, uh, we're looking at ways of incorporating components from disabled Vex and erased Exomines. If we can insulate the nanomachines from the radiation that killed the Exos, maybe... Maybe their deaths won't be for nothing. Wait. Does this really mean I'm part Vex? Well, it's too early to jump to these conclusions, Nimbus. But there does seem to be some connection between the Vex and the Cloud Striders. It may explain why you and the others are able to enter the Vex network without the aid of splices. Can I time travel? <laughs> no, let's hope not. Chioma Essie. Research log. Veil interface. Mai and I have finalized a prototype interface for the Veil. Hopefully it'll allow our research team to investigate it in detail. The system's designed like an orchestra, with a central conductor directing a symphony of minds to act like a distributed network. The idea came to us by watching how collective networks like SIVA and the VEX operate. The hope is we can aggregate and pass the vast amounts of psychic data emitting from the Veil, turn it into something intelligible. If we're successful, the interface will provide us with a starting point for any future technological research tied to the Veil. The risks of, of such integration are high. The estimated mortality rates are... But I... I... I don't know what I'm doing. This is wrong. This is so wrong. We shouldn't... All she ever talks about is survival. Think big picture. What about your survival? What about your heart? My heart? I can't keep doing this. I can't. I can't! I... Again, I see a shadow of myself in Maya Sandarish. The man I could have become had I let obsession continue to rule me. I'm worried what the next recording will reveal. Me too. Chioma Essie. Research log. Veil interface. Supplemental. They're all... dead. Chorus. Conductor. Everyone. It was too much. Swept their minds away like... like grains of sand on a beach. They're all dead. Maya... Maya called it valuable data points. Wellsprings and rivers are... Something. What have I done? Dang. They... This killed their entire research team, but it sounds like... It's like... Like their lives held no value to Dr. Sunderish. 
There's a troubling symmetry with data we've recovered from Titan. Data on the origin of the Witness. It, too, was once multiple people that became conjoined by the way of some sort of ritual with a veil. Perhaps a conductor and a chorus. It is troubling that Dr. Sunderish seemed to be moving down that same path. I don't like this, Osiris. I don't like this at all. Tioma Essi. Research log. Lakshmi 2. What? Myers. I don't even know what to say. I'd recused myself from further experiments. Told her to take some time off. She refused. And she... The minute I wasn't there, she started hauling the brain-dead exos out of cold storage. Hooking them up to the Veil interface. She burned through dozens of them. Reversed the entire machine's design. Used a chorus of brain-dead exos to funnel data down to the conductor seat. Projecting a mental imprint. Hers. I... I didn't know Lakshmi too, but Maya did. And now she's... She's made this thing. It speaks with her voice. Has some of her memories. The way it looks at me. It's like it knows something I don't. Osiris, do you recognize that name? Lakshmi? Yes. And no. Lakshmi too was an exo and once leader of a faction on Earth known as the Future War Cult. She died over a year ago. But she never once made mention of any of this. Of Neomuna, of Maya. Did she know? Did she remember? This is all as much a revelation to me as it is to you. It throws everything she did while in the last city into question. I mean, with... If she was a copy of Dr. Sundaresh, then... Is she really dead? I don't know. For now, I must deliver a rather uncomfortable report to Ikora. Chioma Essie. Personal lock. Incidental. Maya's dead. I found her in the conductor's chair. Alone. Nobody knows what she was doing. Her copy, that thing, Lakshmi, is still developmentally incomplete. It doesn't understand what happened to Maya. I had it quarantined until we can... Until we... Do something. There's no dates on any of these files. There's no telling how much time is set between them. Time enough for loss. How many are left? Three more. And let us hope there are yet more answers to uncover. Chioma AC. Log. Whatever. The war mind has reactivated. Our base on Hyperion detected network activity. They found us. Classified our location Nephili Stronghold. We already estimate that Rasputin has attempted remote interference with our network. Our research. It can't. I won't let what we learned here ruin more lives. I'm going to send Stargazer off-world to... to deal with the problem. They can take Lakshmi with them and... do whatever. As long as it's out of the city, out of my sight. It's a risk, taking an action off-world. Exposing ourselves. But we have to. 
What we've done here has to be quarantined. The veil is too much power. Too much for anyone. Stargazer. That puts the time of this recording around the foundation of the Cloud Striders. She must have been really old. Um, Stargazer is the one responsible for redacting Nephilim's stronghold from Rasputin's records. Or Maya by proxy with Lakshmi. Fascinating. There's two more logs left. Once we've decrypted them, I will need to take time to contemplate the larger picture they present. You and me both. The Veil is too great a power for humanity to wield responsibly. All that's left is to close down the facility. Neomuna will go on. Humanity will persist on the back of our unspeakable work. But I won't pass that guilt on to humanity's future. My hands can be bloodied. Let the children have innocence. And in my dissolution, I will find peace. I don't know if I agree with Chioma's choice to hide the sins of the past. But I also do not know what I would do in her place. Quinn says there's a data signature on this file like something else was crawling the network. A uh, Vex signature. What's Msund 12? There's one log left to the crypt. Perhaps we'll find out. I'm tired. I'm done. Maya has to be out there. The Maya I remember. And all I want is one more moment with her. To hold her in my arms. Tell her that I love her. So she can tell me to hush one more time. If... If we learned anything from the Veil, it's that eventually... We all have to learn to let go. So, I made contact with the Vex. I'm ready. And it's time to say goodbye. In the end, Maya Sandarish was consumed by her desire to understand and her inability to let go. She and Chioma lost everything in pursuit of knowledge. Chioma abandoned it all. Sought to wipe the state clean for future generations. What did we learn from all of this? That the veil is darkness. The power of consciousness made manifest. As much as the traveler is the light. The power of the physical world. The implications are great. But so too are the risks. As a younger man, I may have fallen into the same trap Maya did. But now I know better. We must proceed with caution. Lest the river sweeps us away. Listen up, little bums. This is First Ghost and Maru talking. You're still trying to get through the witness's portal, huh? That ain't a door you can just kick open. You even asked some leftover worm for answers. Too bad she led you right to us. Now you need help from the one witch nobody can trust. My boss, Sabathu. Even though she's temporarily dead, she left instructions for this very situation. As usual, you maggots are three steps behind. Savathun will help you on one condition. First, deal with her sister, Zivu Arath. She's the Hive God of War and the Witness's best general. It's a win-win, see? Don't look so sour. You've already got everything you need. 
I suggest you start with a witch of your own. Guardian, the witness poses a dire threat, and the Witch Queen holds the answers we seek. But only if we contend with her sister. Amaru has promised us a method for defeating Zivuarath, arranged by Savathun before her death. There is a spire atop her throne world sanctum, a place of dire experiments where she abused the light. With this knowledge, Imaru and I have devised a powerful artifact infused with hive magic. It will allow you to dispel the Witch Queen's trickery and master the Spire through a ritual of our own. Even in death, the Witch Queen lays her snares for us. Be careful, Guardian. This is a real privilege, so act like it. Savathun doesn't open a spire to just anyone. If such a place exists... Why lie, when the truth is so much more dangerous? You are not the Witch Queen, and the Guardian is far more dangerous. Please. Sivo Arath is too much for you to handle. You need our help. And you need ours. Imaru, tell your Lucent Hive to stand down. Savathun's orders are for them to guard the Spire. I'm sure your little glowworms can handle it. I don't like this. Resurrecting Savathun? Using her magic? This is exactly what we wanted to avoid. The Witch Queen knew she could entice us with a common goal. Removing the threat of Zivu Arath. Yeah. And she knew the Vanguard had a little hive acolyte of their own. That's why she's opening up a spire. She thinks you've got what it takes. Spire's just up ahead. They'll need more than some lightless lackey's fancy eyes to see it. This is where the Witch Queen fell and you fled for your life. Remember that. We should focus. That was a fluke. Your Guardians got lucky. Really? How many of your apostate ghosts have seen the Guardian's mercy? Don't you threaten me. I am not threatening you. I am telling you what the Guardian will do. So where is this spire? You'll see. Start the ritual to bring down Sabathun's illusion. You now wield Hive Magic, and have entwined it with your light. Whatever you face next, will test that power to its limits. You think your Guardians are up to scratch? What will we find inside the Spire? A way to take down her sister. That's all she told me. And that's all I'm telling you. And she'll uphold her bargain? Give us the information we need. I'll bring her back as soon as Zivu's taken care of. Then you can ask her yourself. Hmm. Guardian, traverse the spire. We shall see what morsel of truth awaits us. There is nascent light to be found here. We must stoke it and harness its power. Be prepared for anything. Guardians, I'm sure Imaru has given you a warm welcome on my behalf. Savathun's dire machinations echo through these halls. She whispers from the past, anticipating each outcome. She left you some recordings. It ain't that deep. You've accepted my proposal. We have mutual interests, after all, despite our bad blood. You might not believe me, but I love my sister. But to us Hive, love is death. No one knows more about killing her than I do. 
There is something vile at the heart of this place. Steeped in hive magic, but bound by the light. Savathun planned for this moment. She knew the Guardian would end up here eventually. Eris Morn and Toll. The Spire is alive with light. We have redirected the Witch Queen's spells and empowered it to... some end. I am not certain. Hive runes manifest here. Discern their pattern and traverse the Witch Queen's labyrinth. Zeborath can't be confronted. That's what she wants, and she always gets exactly what she wants. So spoiled, so loved. You'll have to find another way. Only her equal could ever have a hope of overcoming the threat of my sister's war march. Only a hive. So it rests with me, Eris? My sister depends on the foundations of her cold logic. If you want to remove her from the board, you'll need to test her thesis. There's power for the taking, Ares. And for that, you'll have to prove your right to exist. Savathun speaks of the sword logic. No, we can't play the Hive God's games. And yet we must. What did we do? We have reconfigured the inner workings of the Spire and opened the path to its fetid hypogeum. Not how I would have put it, but that's right. There is dire magic here, and I am its conduit. We may use this power to our own ends. Eris, you can't. This is dangerous. Meet with me, Guardian. I will prepare the ritual. Zivu Arath draws strength from our conflict. She believes her logic absolute. I will grasp it and contravene its power. There is no other way. Will you come back from this? Does it matter if I do? What I am has served me and has served humanity. Oh God, Zita. This is what Savathun wants. We serve our interests, not Savathun's. <laughs> She's outmaneuvered you again. <laughs> you need me! We need your silence. <laughs> Do not be afraid. Bear witness to my sublimation. The true from the dead. I am the many-mouthed hunger. I am the knife-edged truth. I devour the free. I conspire with my vengeance. I will take what I need. The words in my throat are the weapon in my fist. I ought. I ought. I ought.
by naming the worms I have taken from them. And I must take from you. The splinter of Hive Worm rests in your staff. It is enough to bind us and mark you as my acolyte. By the sword logic of the Hive, your conquests strengthen me. You must tithe mightily if I am to become strong enough to defeat Zebu Arath. She draws power from all conflict. She is the Blade Breaker, War, Drinker, Conqueror, Immortal. I ought drown her in blood. Add your voice to the chorus of violence. Let us show her what it is to be Hive. Guardian, Eris has detected a gravitic anomaly beneath the spire. She thinks it's a ritual chamber. We call that the Arcane Oubliette. Savathun stores all kinds of drooling goons in there. Warm bodies for her magical experiments. If you want to feed blood and guts to your discount hive god, that's the place to do it. Panic throws Echo upward from a well of power and death. I sense the oubliette beneath you, Guardian. Assemble in the ritual space, and we shall harvest the fruit of Sabathun's foul experiments as our own. After I resurrected Sabathun, she was dying to learn about her new light. But she needed test subjects to experiment on. Same way you use the poor slobs and gambit for target practice. Uh, listen to this. I named this chamber the Oubliette, after a human invention. A prison where the only exit is the ceiling, just out of reach. A place for people to be thrown in and forgotten, until the time is right. This is where I'll keep in touch with all my bygone subjects. Both as a queen and researcher. Do you feel it? The latent power of the Witch Queen's spellcraft? Finalize the ritual to complete the summoning. In the name of retribution for the lost, Bell, Luriana, Omar, Sai, and Tolan. Died unto me, Acolyte. I ought. Guardian, the value of the magic you've unearthed here is undeniable. But watching you and Eris revel in violence, tithing with hive rituals, it was disturbing. Like it or not, your witch is gonna need a lot more tithes before she's powerful enough to challenge Zivu. So go ahead, sport. Make a mess. Enjoy yourself. Welcome to the hive. It's hard not to feel that this is my responsibility. While we in the tower gathered intel and debated over what action to take next, Eris threw herself into a dangerous ritual of her own devising. She was audacious. And she was right. We had to accept Savathun's bargain. We must pursue the witness at any cost. But I didn't imagine we would risk Eris in the exchange. She remains herself. I recognize Eris when I look into her eyes. She wears her new form like a suit of armor. But she speaks of whispers calling to her from the deep. And I have no assurance she can resist them forever. You must embrace the Hive rituals as she did. Offer your tithes so that she may gain the power she desires. And quickly, commit yourself to her guardian. I believe it is in everyone's best interest to keep her metamorphosis as brief as possible.
Hive magic reveals itself in precise shapes. They follow the same lines and the same means. And yet our rituals still hold many secrets. Cards have scattered in the wake of your oblations. Our bond made manifest. I call them the Deck of Whispers. And they do whisper. Each of their ideograms appears to carry the weight of symbolism. Do not fault them for the forms they take. They are reflections of the real, and as opaque as the natures of their referent. We will interpret their configurations, divine their use. They may hold many meanings, alone and in conversation. As with all hive magic, they ask us to separate the true from the dead. We will do so. Greetings, Guardian. I am focusing my will, preparing myself to step into the ritual space once again. When I first transformed, I thought I might become something greater. Instead, my doubts fell away and I found myself simplified. Refined. Though I became Hive, I was more... myself. I mentioned that to Ikora and she furrowed her brow. I told her she would have time to worry later. But now, I need tithes. Sword logic may be high philosophy, but your tithes of power are real. And when I absorb them, it feels... like hope. Fight in my name, Guardian. Every opponent you defeat strengthens me, from Shaxx's Crucible to Savathun's own throne world. The Hive believe that only the strongest have earned their existence. If a queen cannot hold her power, she must be betrayed. I will not deny them their dogma. I will embody it. The sword logic. The impetus of the hive. Oryx, the Taken King, brother to Savathun and Zivu Arath, sought whispers from the worms of fundament and dredged this truth from the deep. All things must prove their right to exist. The rest will die in terror. There is neither escape nor exemption. Simple, essential, beautiful to know. Oryx led his sisters down the bladed path. We have tested ourselves against horrors. We emerge changed. Through this, we become stronger. We become free. We will avail ourselves of our enemy's tools. Zigu Arath believes every death proves the sword logic. That she unveils the false shape of the Traveler's lie by her blade. But she needs her truth. She is desperate for its vindication. She wishes for a world without grief, or pity, or doubt. Not baleful, not beautiful. A childish cry. The Hive call us liars, the unfree, deniers of the all-edged truth. But I take the power the sword logic offers not out of desperation, but desire. For Crota. Oryx. Savathun. I 
wield their killers as a knife. The Hive know this truth as well as any logic. I am here, and they are not. I am. have some uh, strange bedfellows. Though, if a bedfellow ain't strange, then they're probably not worth having. So it seems. Have you come to urge caution? To advise against temptation? Nah. You know what you're about. But I'm wondering, what's it like? It begins as a... Feral surmise. A suspicion. I hear whispers, but they are in my voice. It rises until I am screaming. I make a demand. An atavistic fear now sublimated into a singular, desperate urge. A hunger I must endlessly sate. But the Hive are not afraid. They are awestruck. They know that I am vengeance. And they have conjured me back with vengeance. Ooh, sounds like a wild ride. I seek to subvert the Hive's flawed logic. I may only do so because of what I am. And what I am not. It is a wild ride. Hey, I'll be there when you're on the other side of this. As will I. Trust. Surprise, sunshine. Thought I'd hack this old holotech and say hello. I don't like this whole let's work together plan, but I don't have to. I've got my orders. Let me play something for you. Tomorrow, if I am indisposed, bide your time. 
The witness will force the Vanguard's hand eventually, and they'll realize they need information only I possess. One of them will be open to a bargain. Not Mara again, poor dear. More likely Ikora, our gloomy little hanger-on Ares. Give them any help they ask. It'll all be worth it in the end. And tell them something clever to make them think that this was their idea. You get all that, Guardian? Savathun wants me to give you the soft sell. But that's not really my style. So, go ahead. Bust up the throne world. Get as strong as you like. Tithe to Eris until she's fat as a tick. It's all part of Savathun's plan. Oh, you need any help digging your own grave? Just let me know. Beloved acolyte, champion of violence, bearing tides raw and sweet as bitten sores, a voice from the deep whispers, in your immortality, Eris Morn, may you never cease your demand for vengeance. I refuse. In time, I will destroy this hive form alongside the rest. Its power has no hold over me. Zeboroth will not fall tonight alone. Every clash of blades invigorates her. Even now, she feeds. As she has fed since the first red cough, the first war song. Still, I savor every tithe. Their strength thrills me, and there are so many old debts to repay. But this is not the time. The cards speak of change. A ripple is cast. A great shadow rises from the sea of blood. Something is coming. Do you hear it? The thrumming of her battle song. Zivu Aroth's brood has come. We will make of my sister's court a battlefield! You hear that? She's in our heads. I hear it. The Helium Drinkers. The Ammonites. We sounded their end with our blades. The Ecumene, the Harmony, they wailed in terror as we sang their extinction. Humanity has joined the chorus of our war eternal. What is she doing? Zivu Arath issues her challenge. You've really done it now. You need to chase Zivu's goons out of here before they take over. Guardian, press on. Eris Morn, meet me as Hive, and send forth your brood. Have your liars pay tribute to their god, so I may see her vengeance. Eris Morn, your brood arms themselves with my brother's mantle. Your acolytes pay tribute by my brother's law. Feed your worm as I feed mine. I shall test my strength against your vengeance. We will have our tithes. You drove my sister to her throne, and she found true death by your comprehension. You chased my brother to his throne, and he fell as his children by your assiduity. And so you will fall. Come! My court is war, and you will find me there! Eris Morn, you know that there is only war. You prove my logic true. Meet me in blood. Match me in violence. Our brood will feed us with their tribute. Zivu Arath, 
When this is finished, you will turn and run, and your worm will gnaw at you as if you were a buried corpse. You will have no tribute then, and you will starve. This isn't over. Zivu will keep coming until she wins her war. We need to rethink our plan. No. Our plan needs no revision. Her presence proves its efficacy. We must press on. We can't fight her. But we can hold the line until a way forward is found, Guardian. Proceed to the Witch Queen's wretched oubliette. Claim the tithes before Zivu Aroth takes them as spoils of her eternal war. I don't like this. You don't need to. All right, you're here. This is serious, so listen, and listen good. Zivu Arath's forces got into the throne world. This wasn't part of the plan, but it's bad news for everybody. Savathun's been hoarding powerful creatures in those summoning pits for a long time. Partially to study, but also to keep them out of the hands of her sister. If Zivu is able to take that extra power for herself, forget it! We're all dead! You need to claim those tithes. I hate seeing it all wasted on that weirdo heiress, but it's better than the alternative. Time to get to work, hero. The boss was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but only amateurs rely on wishful thinking. Listen to this. If Zivu Arath learns what the Guardians are up to in my oubliette, she'll do what she always does. Attack. Lucky for us, her poor Wrathborn is so eager to die. They'll make lovely tithes, provided the Guardians survive long enough to collect them. When I discovered this fire, I saw heresy. A temple of the sky. I sought to destroy it. But now, I see truth. It is built on a foundation of death. A temple of the sword. Logic so pure, even the warriors of the sky honor it. Our rituals are discovered by the Eater of Weakness, the God of the Rotting Slave, Zivu Arath. Show her that the logic of the sword is no longer the Hive's alone to wield. In your tithes I sense millennia of conquest, the Hive's eternal sword poised to Strike down the world! Liar! Enemy! Worshipper! You would disavow me, even as you lay tribute at my feet! Turn your weapons against me, for I am the destruction you create! Zivu Arath would lay claim to all conflict, but she is no longer the only high god. Strife. Rest these tributes from her grasp, for they are now mine. Your tributes sharpen a blade that would soon pierce the heart of war itself. Exalt me with your violence, as you have always done. You are deserving of the greatest death I can bestow, Worshipper. The Leviathan Eater readies itself in your honor. The Leviathan Eater was testing your capabilities. He'll be back with reinforcements once Zivu's brood is assembled. Sometimes I think the boss believes in you more than her own brood. 
She left this for you. If the Guardians survive my sister's assault, it'll be on account of their ferocity, not their clemency. Zivorak will be thrilled. The Guardians will claim self-defense, of course. But that self-deception will only work for so long. Eventually, they'll have to admit they live by the sword as much as my sister does. <laughs> it's so nice when the people we love all get along, don't you think? I can hardly believe the tactical reports I'm writing. Vanguard forces, pursuing tithes to hive commune Eris Morn, have engaged Zivu Arath's troops in Savathun's throne world. We are caught between the sister gods of combat and lies, and we're trying to resurrect the one who's caused us the most suffering. Even if we win, we lose. We accepted an impossible bargain. Savathun knew we couldn't defeat Zivu Arath. No one can win a battle against war itself. Eris understands this better than any of us. I know she's working on a plan. But I must still prepare for unexpected outcomes. If her transformation is influencing her judgment... How would I know? What could I even do to keep her safe? Guardian, be careful. We've lost so much to the Hive already. We can't let them take any more. So, you're really taking on Zivu Arath's top general. I love watching you do our dirty work. I was digging through Savathun's archives and... I found this little gem from about a million years ago. I figured you should know what you're up against. For the first time, the Ammonites broke us! Hordes of my brood lay rotting in tribute! And the fetter of weakness was upon us. But our enemies have made stars of their own. Heading back into the throne world? Gonna hope Savathun left some tips about beating Zivu you can peek at. Because from where I'm sitting, Eris doesn't have a clue. I don't think you realize how lost you'd be without Savathun's plan. Even dead, she's smarter than you. She had it all figured out years ago. Take the Traveler. Seal it away. Keep it hidden from the witness. Clean and easy. But there's nothing you Guardians hate more than a plan you're not the center of. So you stormed the gates. Liberated your darling Traveler, and put it exactly where the witness knew you would. And now, here we are, with everything pretty much ruined. So go ahead. Keep trying to outsmart Sabathun when she's just trying to undo all the damage you've done. The Traveler didn't make a mistake when it chose the Hive. It was fixing the mistake it made when it chose you.
Welcome back, Sloane. It's good to be back. But from Masa's impressions, I guess this isn't a social call. Unfortunately not. What do you know about Eris' plan? Only that she and Asa are bound by some kind of hive ritual. I was against it, but like Asa said, sometimes we have to become our enemies to defeat them. That's exactly what concerns me. Sloan, I need to speak with her. No. Asa's done enough for the Vanguard. She's barely recovered from... <sighs> I will speak. Bound by covenant, tithes held between a, a current. You're helping Eris contain the energy from the tithes. Eroding, hollowing, release in time, or remain bound without end. <sighs> If the ritual goes on for too long, Eris will be trapped as a hive. And Asa will be corrupted. Twisted into... something horrible. Ikora, I'll tear the tower to the ground before I let anything happen to her. It won't come to that, Sloan. I promise. Guardian, I have been taking time to reflect on Ikora's conversation with Sloane and Asa. I knew there would be torment in embracing the Hive and the poisonous squall of their violence. I thought myself prepared for it. I have lived long in Shadow, and the shrieking horrors of the Hive would provide solace from my quotidian dreams. When I named the worms, I evoked only their resonance... But Asa responded. She is a willing and vital catalyst to empower my morph, but her pain is real and immense. My aim in this grotesque conversion was to shoulder the risk myself. But feeding from Asa's suffering, that is a line I did not think I would cross. Guardian, keep by my side so that we may soon leave these deeds behind us. I refuse to become something I am not. The worm gods extract their sustenance from between what is and what might be, between the actual and the possible. When the Hive made their ill-fated pact with these worms, they gained immortality and the power to make of the world as they willed. Few beings in this universe derive their power this way. The Queen of the Reef believes it is the same method as the Ahamkara. The Wish Dragons were too dangerous to exist. So is Zivu Arav. My connection to Asa is regrettable. But this was the only path towards my goal. I invoked the worms, and she answered. And did you know that this would happen? It was possible, as all things are possible with this kind of power. This bond has not been attempted since the worm gods made their bargain with witness. Asa may have rejected it then, but the desire to overpower the universe with one's will is woven into her being. She is not beholden to it, not addicted or enslaved. The Deep is not her nature, but I have tangled myself within this desire through the use of the Staff's larva. Now I possess her power. This could kill both of you. That risk is ours to take. Guardian, I just finished briefing the Hidden. My reports on Eris's connection to the proto-worm, Asa, did not land well. There are concerns I cannot dismiss, because I carry them as well. The actions of the Witness will have far-reaching and dire consequences. 
But so would allowing Eris to be consumed by the Hive. She is studying the Hive from the inside, and the tithes grant her insight, as well as strength. She may yet discover a way to defeat Zivu Arath. Eris has always been determined. Now she has incredible power to match. I trust her to guide us through this. But I fear she may not know when to stop. Or even want to. The only thing we can offer her now is support. That is why I need you at her side. Continue your tithes, Guardian. For without them, we are lost. I've got something for you. Savathun said if you ever got this far, I should play back one of her predictions. Not that you deserve it, but she's almost rooting for you. My realm holds secrets within secrets. If they're able to use their light and dark to peel away the illusions, then they've been paying attention. Power corrupts, of course. And when those fuss-budget guardians get all twisted up in deep magics and hive rituals, that's when things really start to get weird. <laughs> I can't wait to see what they're capable of. So, there you go. A little pat on the head from Sabathun. I know you Vanguard types thrive on positive reinforcement. Me? I figure Zivu's gonna squish Eris like a greasy little bug. Then we're all doomed, of course. But at least it'll be fun to watch. Guardian. By your incursions into Savathun's spire, the Witch Queen's experimentation is revealed, and her secrets lie open to us. Your progress is impressive. Hive magic intertwined with the light. You master it with each breach of the spire. But don't lose sight of our goal. Zivu Arath is still our greatest threat, and tithing to Eris has its limits. We have not yet reached them. You frighten the Hive. Again and again you show them that their understanding is incomplete. You have heard me utter their invocation. I ought. It means that which is said must be so. It is a conclusion. A halmos that marks the preceding argument as demonstrated true. Think of it as a mathematical proof. You are the logic that demonstrates it, and we are the truth it infers. I ought. She can't keep doing this. Sooner or later, it will end. Remember, you are in control of when it does. We have discovered a vast chamber above the Witch Queen's oubliette. Undoubtedly, it guards one of Savathun's secrets. Uncover it. Hey, where do you think you're going? Get out! We need no permission. The spire is open to us, and we will go where we please. You don't even know what's in here. An engine to generate Imbaru. Savathun's reinterpretation of her brother's logic. Exercise caution, Guardian. This vault was designed to confuse you. Conquer it. You 
glowbugs are awfully trusting. I'm not too comfortable giving all this juice to your pooky little witch. The Exo Stranger warned you that Eris would be corrupted by power and turn into a tyrant. Said she's gonna rule us all. Even Savathun. In Elsie's timeline, Eris was corrupted by stasis in the darkness. But here, Guardians wield both safely. We've proven that they can be used for good. For your little parlor trick, sure. But this is hive magic you're playing with. You're really gonna hand Eris godlike power and just hope she keeps it together? After you were specifically warned not to? The hubris! Elsie said that Eris succumbed to despair, pushed over the edge by her nightmares. But the Eris I know has been tested countless times and never once faltered. Instead of being overwhelmed by her nightmares, she conquered them. Besides, our Eris has an even greater advantage. She has her friends protecting her, and that's a force strong enough to alter any timeline. It is good to see you. I was taking a moment to prepare for the ritual. There is suffering in anticipation, but strength in its acknowledgement. And, if I am to be honest, something more. Guardian, a moment of peace awaits in the midst of the frenzy. A moment born of ugliness and violence truly earned. It is justice. So I will step again into the ritual space and be consumed by the profane chitin. When you tithe to me, I will feel the rank blood of your offerings flow down my throat. And as the vile power fills me to bursting, my thoughts will be only of the Hive Sisters, Savathun, Zivu Arath, of my plans for them. It is then I find that sweet moment, and deep beneath my hideous mask, I smile. I gotta admit, kid, you're stacking some legit tithes. You got a real flair for brutality. Sword logic is an ironically blunt tool, easily wielded by even the dullest mind. Though I must admit, to be guided by such simple-mindedness is... liberating. And what's your grand purpose? Peace and unity? Vengeance. Against the Hive. Hey, I don't blame you. Being Savathun's ghost is no treat. I'm not looking forward to bringing her back. Not least because her absence made you de facto general of the Lucent Brood. Leadership suits me. For now, your time of self-glorification has nearly passed. That's rich, coming from a wannabe hive god. Even with the Guardian's help, you're still coming up short. You're not even close to Zivu's strength yet. And you look like a screeb ready to pop. Fear not, you osseous little toad. The path to victory lies close at hand. Even if you lack the eyes to see it. This has to stop. Throwing yourself into danger is not going to solve our problem. We have to step back and find another way. You would put me in the library. And I would be so glad of it that I would never set foot outside its walls. But only I can stop Zivu Arath, and nothing is won by my complacency. Eris, this is too much for you. I am not so frail, Ikora. I have never thought that. Then do not treat me as such. You know that I am capable. 
And now you know of what? Ikora, I have always had your trust. And you have never needed my forgiveness. Now please, I ask for your support. Do you know what I see? A friend who takes risks because she doesn't want anyone else to. A friend who is too afraid to look away from disaster and thinks destroying herself is the only way to stop it. I held back when Savathun took the light. I allowed others to go in my stead and take the revenge I am owed. But I made a promise to myself. I would be her ruin. We both value action in times of loss. Let me act. Let me be who I am. I don't want you lost to this. Then help me finish it. I'm gonna give it to you straight, Sunbeam. I've run the numbers, and your gal, Eris, doesn't have what it takes. She talks a good game, but she's nowhere near strong enough to deal with Zivu. This whole idea was a long shot from the start, and you Guardians came up short. So listen, I don't plan on getting crushed by Zivu, or you, or anybody else for that matter. I'll stick around, but if things get hairy, I'm out of here. Savathun can stay dead for all I care. Doesn't make any difference to me. Maybe I can do the Finch thing. Be a free agent. Ah, don't look so surprised. Sure, your ghost would never abandon you, but there's one important difference between him and me. He's an idiot. Sorry to rain on your parade, but there's no way this ends in anything but a bloodbath. And I don't plan on getting caught in it. Lies built on lies. The predictions of the dead witch that I would take her bargain, unseat her sister, serve her deceptions to survive the witness, that my fate is not my own. Did she learn nothing from the Traveler? Any rule can be unseated by a choice. <laughs> God of battlefield filth, Savathun, God of the false and polluted, you have forgotten you were born as prey. I will remind you. Now is the time, my acolyte, my guardian. The truth is in the cards. The blood whispers, Asa's mewling suffer song, the venom surge behind my eyes. This will be our final tide. Let it be glorious. This is it, Guardian. Eris consulted her cards one last time, and departed for the Oubliette in Savathun's throne world. She awaits your final tithe. Before she left, she asked me to ready something for Transmat from the tower security vault. And I agreed. Everything is on the line. Asa, the Vanguard, the fate of the soul system and beyond. Empower her, Guardian. Give Eris the strength she needs to reshape the entire Hive Pantheon. And then, all we need to do is get out of her way. This is it, Guardian. Eris is ready for the final tithing ritual. This is our last and best opportunity to deal a real blow to Zivu'arath. I know this may seem like a long shot. 
that we have to trust Daenerys. She made herself for this moment. You both did. It's been fun watching you play Hive, but this has gotten out of hand. You activate the Oubliette again, and Zivu's goons are gonna go full Torah bottle on this place. You lack imagination, underling. You shall soon witness the consequences of your master's apostasy. Oh no! Zivu's calling up the Leviathan Eater. He's been around since Fundament. A real heavy hitter. I'm getting out of here, and you should too. Stick around and you'll end up a grease stain. You will go nowhere. This is the culmination of the bargain you proposed. You will witness our triumph, or perish as one of us. Rejoice, worshipper! You have sounded the horn of battle, and war has arrived! Go forth, eater of Leviathans! Scourge of the sky! Raise my sister's court, and tithe the ashes to thy god! Run for your lives! They're about to bomb this place flat! Return to our ritual circle, my acolyte. Your mastery of spellcraft shall be our salvation. In the name of all the Hive have stolen, conspire with my vengeance. In the name of Crozier's Bane, the Kingslayer, and the Light, in the name of Eris Morn, die unto me for the last time, Acolyte. I out. Eris, I've arranged the transmat, but once she's here, we'll lose containment. We can't go back on this one. One last atrocity. This wasn't the agreement! Zivu is still a threat! Do it! You will not have another chance! Finally out of her shell. It looks good on you, honey. I am your ruin. Savathun has not been killed by a hive since she lost her worm. Stored eons of potent lies and deceit. All Sabathun's power, plus the tithes of the Guardians. Eris Morn is the strongest hive there has ever been. Hear me, dead things. I let this moment pass unnamed, without song. This is the rejection of your sad legacy. Zivu Araf, agitator. Fomenter, what a world cyst you have built from your conquests. No more. Now and forever, you are banished. I ought. Guardian, it is done. When I killed Savathun, I claimed her eons of stored power. For a moment, I surpassed even Zivu Arath herself. The macabre gifts of the Hive awaited, 
a pitted plain of open graves. It was magnificent. I rejected them all. Instead of challenging Zivu Arath, I severed her connection to her throne world. She is mortal now, wherever she may be. Mortal and furious. Refusing conflict split my ritual's foul call. Your tithes drained from me, and now here I stand. A woman who was briefly a god. Ikora tells me Amaru resurrected Savathun. She fled, but left Amaru here as my ward. An irksome peace offering for me to destroy if Savathun moves against us. But I am weary of destruction. You may continue to explore Savathun's throne world, as the Queen of Lies is never to be fully trusted. But for now, I would like only... Tea. Tea and silence. Mission report number 472.622.3. Regarding our ongoing attempts to breach the extraspatial portal within the Traveler, I'm relieved to report that Eris's risky plan worked. Her final ritual banished Zivu Arath from her own throne world. The Hive God of War is vulnerable for the first time in millennia. When the time comes, we can finally force a decisive engagement against her. But first... We have to deal with the witness. To that end, it seems the Witch Queen held up her end of the bargain. I didn't want to let her go. But Savathun offered some enticing collateral. She left Amaru in Vanguard custody. He's an odious little wretch, but an important one. As long as we control the Witch Queen's connection to the light, she'll think twice before crossing us. It went against my every instinct to let Savathun squirm away again. But we need to keep our attention on that portal. She gave us the secret to breaching it. Now, we just need to discover what form it's taken. For now, Asa is back in hibernation, and Eris is recovering. More than that, she's thriving. I was worried that Eris's obsession with the Hive would overwhelm her. But she's carrying herself with an air of confidence I haven't seen in a century. And I'm just glad to see her happy. Guardian, what have you been working on in here? Savathun's wings. She did give us what she promised. The last wish. I knew there would be a cost in bargaining with Riven. I did not intend it to be a cost. We kept paying all these years later. But now... The Witch Queen's scrolls have confirmed my greatest fear. The curse on the Dreaming City cannot be undone. I've pored over a thousand possibilities, but the Corsair souls trapped there remain. I won't give up on them. Even with the curse in place, there must be a way to bring my people home. A task for tomorrow, perhaps. All oh, this pain Riven has inflicted, and still we're beholden to her. There must be alternatives to restoring her clutch. The resurgence of the Ahamkara now, taken or not, could be disastrous. The Reef and the last city went to war to stop them before. For now, above all else, we must pursue the witness. I need an operative to finish this bargain with Riven. Force her to enact the final wish. 
So while I ponder countermeasures, you do what you do best. Carve a path. Greetings, O oh guardian mine. I always knew we could work together. I s We meet again, O oh murderer mine. I always knew we could work together. I speak to you now with my true voice. Consider it a sign of trust. The need for deceit has passed. My corporeal death freed me from the taken curse. My bargain with their king has expired. These Techians strain themselves to conjure my essence. They cannot do so forever. Sabathun's wish will be the last I grant. Mora has made clear the terms of our agreement. Retrieve my last clutch of uncorrupted eggs, and I will uphold my end of the bargain. Obviously, I cannot gather the eggs myself. Instead, I will guide you to them, through the holes of my former lair. And beware, Guardian. You may find it a place most unwelcoming. Tell me, Guardian, does helping Riven sit with you as it does me? She is a blade held in our hand. Held too tightly, or trusted not to slip, and it will draw blood. Airing your concerns to the Guardian as well. Doubt is a useful tool, Queen Mara. A double-edged, is it not? This wish was crafted by Sabathun. Riven cannot be trusted with it. Has the Veil offered any answers? My study has yielded many interesting curiosities. I understand how the witness opened the Traveler, but not yet how to replicate it. I need more time. I wish we had more, if you'll pardon the phrase. Time would allow me to insulate us from Riven's ulterior motives. But we've left the witness undisturbed for too long. We must act. Risk. ...is a thing I've learned should be managed, not provoked. Riven is risk incarnate. To follow the witness, I must reconstruct the bridge it forged through the Guardian's ghost. But the Veil is not a docile subject. Abuse it, and a similar fate suffered by the Dreaming City could repeat on New Muna. So we bide our time. ...while you seek an answer. Until then... ...we have a dragon to charm. Back from scheming with Mara, are you? Fear not, O oh guardian mine. I hold no contempt for those who prepare... ...contingencies. In fact, that is what I respect most about Mara. She is wise not to trust me, as I have never trusted her. For ages, Awoken and Ahamkara were both allies and adversaries, each seeking to extract a victory from the other. That is the nature of all bargains. ...to relinquish as little as possible, while securing all you desire. Our bargain is no different. It is not built on trust, but on the knowledge that upholding it will benefit us both. And that breaking it will result in more suffering than 
you can imagine. We must wait for another egg to drift across the ley lines and re-enter our reality. Continue securing my lair until then. Those who now trespass within it have nothing to bargain with and are thus of no use to me. You would do well to keep that in mind. Arrival, Guardian. Another egg from my clutch will soon pass by our reality. You should prepare to claim it. It is a strange turn of events that they were cast into the Ascendant Plane. Strange, but not unintentional, I suspect. Ask yourself, who would benefit from such a situation? Who wields the requisite mastery over the ley lines? Who has a history of sequestering the Ahamkara to keep them hidden? I said before that I do not trust Marasa. Tell me, do you? She offers you praise and gifts bequeaths to you a share of her power. Is she so different from an Ahamkara? From me? Do you truly believe she wishes for nothing in return? Know this, Guardian. I have been forthright about what I stand to gain from our arrangement. A future for my otherwise extinct kind. Mara, on the other hand, what does she stand to gain? Bad news, Guardian. I bring word from the Techians. Riven's clutch has dispersed across the ley lines of the Ascendant Realm. They now orbit our reality like comets around a sun, hopefully not beyond our reach. The Techians are uncertain how this happened, but they've detected a massive surge of paracausal energy across the entire transit system. The residual energy has allowed us to predict each egg's trajectory across the lines. The Techians themselves were once scattered across the lines in kind. Guardians were there to guide them home, and we can secure the clutch using the same strategy. Riven has caused so much strife. And yet we prostrate ourselves to placate her once again. And too many Corsairs will die on this quest to give the Ahamkara a second chance. As I said, we once utilized the ley lines to find the lost Techians. We can use them again. Fight your way into the blind well and reroute the lines through Riven's lair. We'll prepare landings for the clutch as best we can. Another egg secured. Well done, Guardian. The Taken aren't the only creatures attempting to thwart us. Riven seeks to entangle us in another loop, to keep us chasing down her clutch while the witness runs rampant. If this is a game, it suits your purposes. Sealing the eggs away, buying time for your broken warlock to cheat me. You have my terms. See this through, or make peace with your fate. You've made excellent progress, but the remainder of the clutch will never reach us if they remain on their current trajectories. Queen Mara and her Techians once communed with the Harbingers, entities that can traverse the weft and weave of the ley lines. Mara's personal Harbinger can bring the clutch home, but she'll need to guide it with a signal. We need you to retrieve a Starlight Lodestone. It's a channeling medium the Queen can use to signal the Harbinger. All this to help Riven while the Dreaming Halls remain locked in her curse. 
The temporal loop that binds the Dreaming City could continue to plague the Reef indefinitely. I wish my people could rest. I wish I could aid the trapped Corsairs across our shores. But Riven's curse is just a preamble compared to the final shape. The Witness seeks to finish what it started with the Collapse. And so we remain occupied. Andrea Sylvia burns. I regret we can do no more to advance your position in the field. But I'll be in touch as soon as the Queen finishes her communion. I understand your concern. But if we cannot rely upon the Veil, the Ahamkara is our only option. Even if it was Savathun who pointed us at Riven in the first place? The Witness is our priority. We've dealt with Savathun and Riven in the past. And now Savathun is free and Riven is toying with us. I won't end up as a puppet again. Nor I. <sighs> Sorry, I didn't mean... I fear it too. The experience of watching your body perform a series of actions you would never condone. Of that terrible regret. But that fear won't stop me. Just as I know it won't stop you. Was any of it real? All that advice Sabathun gave me while she pretended to be you. At the time, Aldrin began his campaign against the Reef. He was already suffering from the Black Garden's corruption. Riven must have found him an easy victim. One could argue he wasn't fully in command of his decision. All the same, the impact of those decisions was very real. So, let me ask you this. Did I give you good advice? Life-changing. Then hold on to it. So this is what? The third bargain we've struck with a compulsive liar? Having your back to the wall is never a good feeling. It's so much worse. Being back in the Dreaming City. Now that you remember? I know every inch of it. The gardens, the palace. How it used to be before Riven's curse. Oh. Crow. If it wasn't for me, the curse would never have happened. Riven used you. Used us. Our grief, our desperation. I wanted vengeance more than anything. <sighs> the truth is, if I thought hiding from my guilt would help anyone, I'd be on the far side of the system. You don't think we're just making the same mistake? Aldrin used to say, if you don't like the odds, don't sit at the table. Trusting Riven is a risk. But without her, we have no way of pursuing the witness. I'd rather risk failing than wait here for the final shape. Right there with you. Guardian, we are coming to the final moments. These choices, these risks, they mean everything. Mara requests that I provide some small measure of insurance should Riven prove too perilous a gamble. I've learned the Veil is linked to the Traveler, that this link was not created. It is a primal truth of their existence, uh, a pairing. The Witness accessed this link through your ghost. The motions of what it did are written in the Veil's own memory. But like an incantation, without the ritual, the understanding, the words, so to speak, the motions, are useless. My attempts to recreate what the Witness did to follow it have been inadequate and dangerous. I, I must temper my ambitions. The Veil is the power of consciousness, made manifest in our physical world. 
It whispers an electromagnetic language that resonates with our mind. One that can be deciphered, but not by the laws we willed in this universe. Uh, it's no easy task. If there is another way to follow the witness, I'll find it here, on Neptune. It will take time, as all things do. Uh, continue to aid Mara, and I will uncover what knowledge I can. Another egg safely retrieved. I may have to make good on my word. Though from what the tech youngs whisper, the rest will prove more elusive. Mara may have to take drastic measures to catch them. All reward requires risk. Mara knows this truth better than most. That is what first enticed me to stay with the Saw siblings. Their penchant for adventure. Their unquenchable ambition. Each of them deliciously reckless in their own way. Your crow hides it well, but I can still smell Aldrin's daring nature on him. Imagine what he could accomplish if only he'd embrace it. Ah, but you... You charge headlong into danger without a second thought. All for the promise of power. I knew from the first moment I set eyes on a light bearer that your kind would change everything for the Ahamkara. And oh, how right I was. You've returned. Would that the Queen's witches had your punctuality, a warden mine. The Techians have started work on the Lodestone, but they can't finish it without help. I would love to find amusement in their inadequacy, make a meal of it. However, the task of helping those who can't help themselves has fallen on your shoulders again. Something of the Ahamkara in you, perhaps? The Lodestone must be attuned to the confluence, like teaching a compass where north lies. I've simplified, of course, for your sake. The calibration will take some time. Should I pray for you to make it out alive? Queen Mara, I hail you now out of necessity of the heart. Else I feel as though I will burst into solar flame. Long have I admired you from afar, ever since you graced me with your power and benevolence in the Reef Wars. Not a day goes by without me thinking back to the time you bade me repay that debt to you. How we spent hours together, long into the night. Would that you spirit me to your side again, to serve as your consul, your knight, your humble vessel, anything to be near you. I beg you to grant me an audience once more. Please. Give me the gift and the privilege of basking in your favor. For without you, I shall wither and crumble into dust, to be scattered across the cosmic winds. This again? You and I both know he sounds nothing like that, Riven. use a voice with which you are even more intimately familiar. How about... Do not speak her name. As you wish, O oh Majesty mine. I heard you over the comm channels. 
I am sorry that we are forced to entreat with Riven. She and I have our own histories to navigate, but what she did to you, how she wormed her way into your mind, that was inexcusable. It pains me to put you through this. Even after all that's happened, you still think I need to be protected? No, that is not. It's all right, Mara. I understand. We've always shared a connection. Even when you were lost in the Ascendant Plane, I could still feel your presence, your heartbeat. I knew you weren't truly gone. Riven was only able to manipulate me because of how strong our connection was. Is. I've made choices I'm not proud of. But I'll never apologize for the reason I made them. It's the same reason you reach out even now when, when you see me struggling. You're my sister. Nothing can break that bond. Not death, not Riven, not even the light. Like Aegir and Rhaegar, finding each other in the storm. <laughs> yeah, well... All that we've been through... That's no fable. We stood together as the world collapsed around us. And we'll stand together again. Guardian, I'm afraid progress is slow. The Veil is a clever tangle in and of itself. It reforms as the consciousnesses connected to it ebb and flow. They rush in, awash with dreams and wonder, and then drain away. I believe that once I understood the Veil, mechanically, once I understood Strand, that I would see its patterns with new clarity. That has not happened. This is not like charting a course through the currents of a sea or the depths of space. It is an architecture defined by how we intend to imagine it. Not dissimilar to the Ascended Plane. But it's more like its opposite. The Ascended Plane mirrors aspects of our world, aspects of will and import, to those who traverse it. Those aspects are decided upon through our actions. The veil, conversely, weaves not with our will, not our decisions, but with intent, unfiltered by logic. What we feel, not what we decide. Mapping such a thing would be like rebuilding a creature from the calcified remains we found aboard the pyramid ships. They are an image of a dissection, a deadened echo of existence. But to look at them as they are, to see their disparate parts, even understanding their anatomy does not give us the knowledge to make them as they were. I will continue to seek the path the witness forged into the Traveler, but I am no longer confident that it could ever be walked again. Riven may be our only option. So many wish to be closer with their family. The absent and the estranged cause rifts in a person's psyche. I hear them even now. Let me speak to my father again, one last time. Let my daughter see me for who I am. One of the stranger human impulses, don't you find? Above all, Ahamkara want to feed, to drink deep of the gulf between desire and reality. Other Ahamkara are competitors for limited resources, not allies. The only exception is a mate. Sometimes, we reach beyond ourselves. Perhaps if we stood by one another more, 
we'd have survived the great hunt. If we were a little more... human. But that bargain is not within our natures to make. You return again, Guardian. And so does another egg from my clutch. It seems Morris Harbinger has succeeded in pulling it close enough for you to catch. How convenient. Though it would have been far more convenient for them not to have been scattered at all. I have never taken Mara at her word. But she is not a fool. Had she been the one to set my eggs adrift, then she would have devised an easier way to retrieve them. One that requires less risk. But if Mara was not the one responsible, then who was? And what did they stand to gain from it? Manipulating the ley lines like this reeks of paracausal magic. An Ahamkara's doing. Someone wished for this. And when I find out who it was, then I will feast. The Techians are in final preparations for the Lodestone. Your work in its calibration was invaluable. It will serve as a beacon for the Queen to make contact with her personal Harbinger. She'll commune with it. Ask it to guide the remainder of the Clutch back to us. It's the last of its kind. And it's good to see a Harbinger, normally a weapon of war, used for diplomacy. Even with Riven. In the past, the pinnacle of the Spine of Caris provided the open sky the Queen needed for this communion. It will suffice again. But the Taken can test that region, as they have since Riven's curse rang out. They will hinder your every step. So cut through them, secure the Spine, and the Queen will do the rest. Hey, Guardian. The Vex may have snuck in ahead of us. But we're not out of the race yet. Osiris thinks that a Vex mind must have figured out how to simulate the Techians. So long as they have access to those algorithms, the Vex can track the eggs, same as we can. So, we'll just have to steal them back. I managed to pick up the trail. Looks like the sole device have tucked the egg away in the Black Garden. Lucky for us, that's familiar territory. I remember how to get in. All we need is the head of a Vex Gate Lord. Kidding. <laughs> Turns out Riven had her own path into the garden. You'll have to get in there and put that Vex mind out of commission. I'll be on comms, keeping an eye on the tracking signal. And watching your back, of course. The voices are... asking to use me as a vessel. I... That's... Darius. Who? Let him speak. Please. I'll try anything twice. Let's hear you, whoever you are. <sighs> Riven. Fulfilled. Thanks to you and the wish keeper, I can rest. If there are anything left of you, I'd flay it from your bones. It was good to dance with you, oh 
beloved mine. One last time. Who was he, Riven? Terranus was my mate. I was not always a prisoner in the Dreaming City. The Ahamkara were once free to roam its halls. That's where I met Taranis. And Taranis, unlike others, unlike me, cherished those who wished to him. Those who bargained with him were safe. must have cost him. I found his restraint intriguing. And my art, my dreaming halls, my dance with the queen, moved Taranis in turn. Together, we became the ebb and flow of the tide. Through him, I glimpsed a world without the tireless cycle of bargaining and feeding of peace. Taranis invited me to his lair, a place where we couldn't be found in the ontology of the Black Garden. My joy of turning desire to woe faded for one rapturous moment. We made successes together. We built secrets together. And then came your great hunt of the Ahamkara. The Queen took my freedom under guise of protection. Taranis and I were forever separated. But we could still whisper to one another in the space between. At least until a king arrived and made a bargain I could not refuse. I became both king and dragon. I spoke with his voice, and Terranus knew it. So he did the one thing our kind must never do. Grant his own wish, at the cost of his existence. A wish to keep the eggs out of harm's reach until someone could protect them. Someone like you. His wish keeper. Osiris, are you on this channel? I am. Quite frequently these days, how may I assist the Queen's wrath? A personal matter. I was hoping you could tell me about your experience with Strand, how it's affected you. Strictly research, but it is fascinating. We know you've learned to wield it. Who told you this? <laughs> Mara. Now, the rumors are true, though I am still only a pigment of my former self. That's understandable, but your worth was never seated in the light. It's in your mind. I imagine I'm not unlike one of your Techians, then. If I'm not mistaken, the Queen mentioned you trained as one yourself. A long time ago, without much success. Though my sister, Pinar, excelled in her training. She was the pride of Amethyst. I was not. But even with that power, she couldn't stop the House of Wolves from raising our home. I joined the Corsair shortly after, to hunt the wolves down. Boss, 
as a way of shaping us all. And clouding us. I thought the decisions I was making were the ones required of me. A kind of honor-bound reaction to pressure. I burned bridges across the reef on my hunt. Without Mara, I'd be an outcast. Now, seeing the new coven, having their respect, their trust, I can do more than just react. Maybe I can tap into that training for something progressive, as something other than a Techian, for the benefit of our people. I've learned that failure is not a lacking within us. It is a sign that we were not ready to face the challenge we chose at the time. We must fall to start again, Petra. But as long as we persist, hope remains. Potential remains. Perhaps you're ready now. I can see why Mara values your perspective. Thank you, Osiris. Terranus was always a sentimental bull. His last wish has caused us no small amount of trouble. All wishes come at a cost, even those we Ahamkara grant ourselves. Especially those we grant ourselves. My kind feeds on the difference between what is desired and what comes to pass. That is why we grant wishes the way we do. In granting our own wish, we eliminate that difference. We smother the flame and our voices fall silent. Our existence ends. Ahamkara are selfish creatures, not prone to such acts of sacrifice. But Taranis... He was different. His sacrifice... might save us all. You destroyed the Vex mine simulating the Tekian's work. The Vex will not reach the eggs first again. But they still hold my lair. Put Taranis's gift to good use, O oh Guardian Mine. It is your turn to grant a last wish. Something is wrong. Its stench lingers in the air, wafting up from the shadows of the confluence. I remember this sensation. The creeping whispers, putrid oil on water. Taken corruption seeps into my lair, as it once did into me. Morris Tekians expect another egg will enter our reality soon. Cut the strings of those taken puppets as you traverse the confluence. As I said before, Oryx's bargain with me has expired. I owe him nothing. The same holds true for the witness. If it seeks to take something from me without reaching an accord, then I will reclaim what is mine with vengeance in my heart. Make haste. Reach my offspring before the taken. Terranus's sacrifice must not have been made in vain. I have no love for Riven, and no complete trust of an Ahamkara's predatory nature. But we need that final wish fulfilled. A bargain with Riven cannot be altered, perhaps not even by her. And we owe her all of the clutch. Guardians have freed Tekians from Taken influence before. The effort and circumstances were extraordinary, but perhaps it can be done again. In our war with the Taken in the Dreaming Halls, we found the Taken ontology, when faced with itself, feeds on itself. Following that principle, you should be able to find a coalescence of Taken Essentia in the Ascendant Realm. Theoretically, we could use it to cleanse the egg. That's all the strategy I can offer you, I'm afraid. 
Your tenacity in this is appreciated. And appropriate. If we fail here, Riven loses an egg. But we lose our path to the witness. And all roads thereafter. I don't know. I haven't spoken to Joel Young since Glint raised me. You used to be inseparable. It's not just anyone who would follow you into the Black Garden. I thought you'd want me to keep my distance. Queen Mara wanted to protect you from Aldrin's memories. I think we're past that. <laughs> yeah, probably. You should reach out. Julian is a good man. I'm a different person. That probably goes for Julian, too. The last time he saw me... Let him make that decision. You were close. Chances are you could be again. I... I'll think about it. You know, you still give good advice, Petra. Yeah, well, I never take it. I have ascertained the path the witness took, but the veil alone cannot safely reconstruct it. What stops you? Instability. The veil traces the shape of our consciousness, but that shifts as fluidly as our thoughts do. It is as though we alter the path by observing it. None would survive the crossing. I can grant passage. Savathun's wish can weave the ley lines into the veil, entangle them for a moment. But you will not send an army on the wings of a wish. Only one. One? Explain this deception. You've done me a great many services, a warden's mind. I'll grant you the ultimate Ahamkara courtesy. The complete truth. Savathun's wish grants one singular passage. No more. You knew from the beginning. You sought to twist our aspirations as your kind always does. How many of my clutch would you have saved had you been privy to the limitations of our arrangement? Play your part. Lest I shape you into a trinket of caged hunger to be forgotten in the Guardian's vault. I am your helpless prisoner. What other part would you wish I play? I cannot change Savathun's intent. Then what use are you to me? Mara, one may be all we need. I am being transparent, kind even. It could always be worse, as you know. This is our only way to pursue the witness. One to send. Simplifies things. What if... Yes. Uh, Guardian, excuse me, I believe I'm... I'm... On to something. One to send, she said. I believe the witness had found a point of weakness. And exploited that point to pierce the traveler's defenses. But the witness did not gain entrance through an attack it parried there was no need to breach a door because through the traveler's resistance the way was left open its blast was meant to expel but the witness redirected the flow of that intent with its own using the veil if riven can imprint the ley lines into the veil send one of our own 
to the other side without invitation, we can open the door. Once open, Guardian, the path to it matters not. Only that we're now able to cross the threshold. The veil will flow to that point around any obstacle. I told you I was on to something. It sounds simple in retrospect to use the ley lines as means of travel as we have before. But they do not touch the traveler, nor the veil, and not even Mara can command them to do so. It may seem as though Riven promises more than is possible. But that is the foundation of a wish. We must yield to our disbelief and give ourselves over to chance. In that unknown venture, in discovery, the path forward is revealed. One egg remains. Then all our integument risks, our layered depths to this cause, finally, their worth will be realized. Thanks to Mora's efforts, the egg was cleansed of its corruption and saved. The irony is not lost on me. I suppose I should thank her, though she may not be receptive to my gratitude at the moment. Mara will soon recognize that it was a gift for me to divulge what I did now, rather than when the wish is made. Perhaps she already has. Even an Ahamkara's power has its limits. It is beyond my ability to alter the path that the witness opened. Savathun knew this, which is why she crafted her wish to make use of the ley lines instead. Always so clever, that one. And the witness. Its ambition knows no equal. This final shape that it seeks is not unlike a wish itself. One that would forever erase the difference between desire and reality. Anathema to my kind. I will not have my progeny suffer such an existence. Continue securing my lair and gathering my clutch. Mara was right about one thing. Like with the portal, I cannot alter the terms of our bargain. Collect all of the eggs, or the wish cannot be granted, even if I desire it. The Techians have determined the trajectory of my final egg. It won't be within our reach for some time. A fortunate delay, according to Petra. She and the Techians have... a plan. Guardians complain of the nature of Ahamkara, that we hoard secrets like you hoard weapons. Then, you understand us. Why demand a river flow uphill? We all have our settled natures. This is an Ahamkara's. Once, it was Queen Mara's. She's been working to change herself, altering the river's course. I'm forced to trust this new Mara, despite what I am, as are you despite what you are. You and I will see where the river flows. What were you hoping to achieve by threatening Riven? Had I not been there to stop you? Osiris, I admit I was angry. I'm seldom able to express my emotions openly. But I had no intention of harming Riven. I only wanted her to believe I might. Perhaps you could warn me first. I was worried you lost sight of our goal. Have I ever been one to miss the forest for the trees? Quite the opposite. While 
I tend to find myself mired in the details of the leaves. Both sorts are necessary. Your eyes on the fight before us, and mine on the horizon. How do you see the M so clearly? Even within the infinite forest, I could not predict as you do. Clairvoyance is a charade. The ground shifts beneath us as we walk. We manage best when we make our own stepping stones. You know better than most how many times we've had to adjust our methods to achieve victory. My death at Saturn to pierce Oryx's defenses. Countless recalculations against the Vec. Stealing Sabathun's secrets from within. The planting of the Silver Tree on Io. I took some convincing on that. But it truly was the beginning. Sagira's death, Crow's choices, your new perspective, none of these were part of the plan. Each adjustment came at a cost. I wonder what costs the witness is yet to extract from us. Whatever they are, we will meet them. And persevere. Guardian, I'm glad you're here. I've been thinking about what Riven said. If we have to pin all our hopes on a single person, there's one obvious choice. But, I think I have a better idea. Now hear me out. If you go through the portal, there's no way we can send anyone in after you. You'd be out there on your own. But Mara and I share a bond. Even across the Ascendant Plane, I can always sense where she is. And the same goes for her. So, let me do it. If I go through the portal, Mara can use our connection to guide everyone through to, well, wherever I end up. I plant the beacon, and you come and kick the door down. Please, Guardian, I have to believe I was reforged in the light for a purpose. I can do this. We can do this. I just have to tell Mara. The final egg lies in the heart of the confluence, where the Queen's throne sits in the Dreaming City. It's hidden in a far corner, inaccessible except through the dormant Oracle engine. Reactivating the engine would be trivial, if not for the Vex. We've been spending our focus on claiming eggs, while the soul divisive encircles our walls. Another threat to this system, and it's the Reef and its people that pay for it once again. War always comes with a cost, but every day seems to bring a new one. There's never time to rebuild. When this is done, if we're still standing, the Reef and its people come first for me. I hope I'll have your support in that. Locate the Vex Oracles, preventing us from accessing the Oracle Engine. Destroy them. Then we can get on with this bargain. The Witness lies just beyond our reach. Shiro Chi and the others have made good use of the Taken Essentia you obtained. The spell to cleanse the egg has been prepared, but it requires paracausal fuel to ignite. Riven could provide us with the spark herself, but we can't trust her not to take advantage. In her current state, she might be unable to, even if she won't admit it. I'd take it myself, but I've hurled expletives at its mother and made too many wishes out loud during this operation. For all we know, that's how the Great Hunt was begun. Instead, you could allow the egg to feed on your desire. ...as a catalyst to jumpstart the spell. It should be perfectly safe. This Ahamkara is not yet born. You're not making a true bargain. And we have no other choices. Head to Riven's lair and focus on what you crave of the outcome. Let's hope we don't end up with another curse. How long has it been since I last set foot within these halls? An isolated throne, overlooking an endless cosmic expanse. A symbol of who I once was. 
distant, detached, inscrutable. But as my brother has changed, so too have I. No longer do I sow solitude and reap remorse. I choose instead to trust. I have no further need for this chamber, but with the Oracle engine restored, we can reach the heart of the confluence and the final egg. Return for now. When the time comes, we will complete our bargain and trust Riven to keep her word. Why is your first inclination ever to charge headlong into danger? Because you're always keeping an eye on me. You have fallen from my sight before. I may lose you. It is impossible to know the probability of success. But, uh... Don't give me that. This is exactly like something you do. Yes. Queen Mara. You are not sending him, Osiris. No, of course. But if he were to reach the other side, your connection, like the Traveler in the Veil, was forged in a collision of light and dark. It is a... it is a tangible thing. We do not know that it would remain so. Whoever goes more than likely goes alone. Our problem has always been focus. By aligning your and Crow's connection with the Veil, entangled on either side of the Traveler, I believe I can forge a bridge between you. One we could all traverse safely. I'd be a flare in the darkness for Osiris. Then we call in the cavalry. You could find me in the storm, sister. Tell them where to go. Do you know what you are asking? The Guardian would be but a step behind him. I cannot keep you from your purpose. I cannot control this. And so? I put my trust in you. All of you. You will return to me. Let's get to work. How do you propose we compensate for the quantum? You won't be but a step behind him, will you? Take care of him. The Queen and her brother, they impressed me. I appreciated their natures, Mara's skill in crafting wishes, her self-controlled cleverness. Aldrin's ambition, his endless struggle for a greater prize to lay at his sister's feet. Now they have reached beyond their original natures. All for the greater good. Altruism. It's too rich for my blood. Too risky. Such vulnerability. And for what payoff? Still, the altruists can be even more dangerous to their enemies than the ambitious. If self-preservation isn't a concern, what can stop you? If you can't be predicted, how can you be countered? Dangerous. But that danger can be compelling, don't you find? The Queen and her brother, they... The time has come. Mara's Tekians say that the last remaining egg will soon enter the heart of the confluence. Once it is secured, then by the terms of our bargain, 
I will grant Sabathun's wish. Doing so will require a great expenditure of my power. The Techians will not be able to maintain my conjuring afterward. Which is to say that the wish will be our farewell. Oh, guardian mine. What a strange life this has been. By Ahamkara standards, it was comfortable and luxurious. I spent my days with royalty and my nights with my beloved. I never wanted for sustenance, for I was presented with wishes to spare. And though it was all taken from me, in the end, my murderer set me free and ensured the future of the progeny my mate and I created. Now, I will sacrifice my own lingering existence to ensure your future in return. Perhaps... I am more like Taranis than I would like to admit. He always claimed I was. that have worked? Could the scorn have brought a wish to fruition like that? No. At least, I do not believe it is possible. Though I wasn't willing to see them try. This egg is not the first to find itself in your court. Did you intend to breed the Amtara again? I intended to maintain a suitable suite of options from which to choose. Nothing more. Those plans were made so long ago, Osiris, and the eggs corrupted beyond healing. Things are different now. Whether the Ahamkara live on is not mine to choose. To relinquish control is almost as frightening as trust or hope. Sometimes, that is all we have. And in that trust, our pact concludes. I will make your wish. Riven's last clutch, plucked from the void and saved from extinction. Maybe that bodes well for the rest of us. Either way, we held up our end of the bargain. Now it's Riven's turn. Hey. <clears throat> I need to tell you something while I have the chance. That first moment when I woke up in the Dreaming City, I was so lost, confused, I didn't know where to go, who to trust. Everyone hated me for something I couldn't even remember. But you, you helped me find my footing. And when my memories came back and everything made less sense than ever, you were there to see me through. You gave me the chance to walk through the dreaming city with my head held high and the courage to follow a new path. Thank you, Guardian, for everything. See you, Starside. Are you sure you want this? Osiris thinks it's the best shot we've got. You didn't answer my question. I don't know. <laughs> I've been trying to find what I want my whole life, even as Aldrin. I used to think the Traveler gave me purpose. Aldrin thought his came from you. But... I never meant to twist you so, only to keep you safe. My protection turned malignant. For that, I am sorry. It wasn't just you. Aldrin heard your heartbeat and chose to make that his core. He mistook impulse for meaning. I won't. So. I guess it's not that I want this. I need it. I believe in it. And even if I don't make it, everyone else just might. I sacrificed you before to preserve a chance for a future. I can't do that again. I'll be fine, as long as you and I stick together. Remember, Rega? 
still subsisting off stories of hope and bravery. I have missed you. <laughs> I guess I always have been one to fill my head with nonsense, right? Your hope is not nonsense. It is a vital line of sustenance, one I have learned through our people. Fill your heart with it, and I will keep you in mine until you return to me. I will. Go then. Find purpose of your own, and not one of mine or anyone else's making. Thank you, sister. You'll see me again. And this time, I'll remember. The generation of Ahamkara turns over. One last death to feed new life. What will it feed within you? This one you shall cherish. Oh, guardian mine. You're sure about this? I am. It has to be me. We'll find each other again. Always. Surprise. For that, at least, you have my thanks. And you have mine for always providing such a unique challenge to impose your desires upon reality so artfully. You could teach 